Hello everybody. Last year, dreams were made in the place dreams are made of. That's right. The BSC 2022 finished up in Disneyland Paris. And what a story that was. It's my pleasure to announce that the story continues here in 2023. Welcome back, everybody, to the Brawl Stars Championship. I'm Mitch Leslie here, joined by Ready Set. And of course, your boy, Kenny. Ready, man, I haven't seen you since Paris, bro. You, you haven't aged today. I'll be honest, mate. You still look like you still look very youthful. So great to see you, man. How are you feeling being now back in the hot seat with some more Brawl? It feels like it's been longer than it really has, though, because without Brawl Stars on the screen, the days pass really, really slowly. But it's good to be back for the brand new season, and I couldn't think of a more fitting place to start it than literally the birthplace of all three years' worth of Brawl Stars World Champions. Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. The Asia-Pacific region has just produced some incredible Brawl Stars talent, and we get to look at it in a different way, through a different lens this time around. Kenny, great to be back with you, man. You sort of just said you were really just passing the time in between BSC seasons. Uh, it's slow to be back, and obviously great to have you in the booth, man. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Been itching to cast some Brawl, and it's good to be back up in the regular season of things. You know, it ended here last season. It's beginning in a perfect place, too. Excited to see what these new teams can do and show off this year. Nothing quite like picking up where you left off, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump into the format and talk about how the BSC this year is going to work. Actually, quite familiar to last year if you joined us for that. If you didn't, well, we're going to be playing in the power match format with an eight-team single elimination bracket. Now, many of those regions, we've, we've progressed through that single elimination bracket, but the quarterfinals and grand finals all the way through our best of five one of the biggest changes from last year where our quarterfinals were best of three so more brawl stars for your viewing pleasure this time around ready set let's talk about this bracket here because we, we jump into sea at the grand final exactly we've split into sub regions now so now we get to focus down on sea and the two grand finalists that's where we start off rising sun sea and team wood are going to go head to head in the final showdown of this entire region and keep in mind what everyone's competing for here in sea a last chance qualifier spot is what's at the end of this road all right no doubt about it and of course during the monthly qualifier weekend our quarterfinals and semi-finals were already played out but this is a region of course with familiar faces and also names i mean we're familiar with the the organization rising sun sea but there's some really story players uh kenny that are going to be featuring in this particular matchup this grand final uh, I mean, any names that sort of stand out to you or anything you want to tease us with before we jump back and talk a bit more about the structure of the tournament? Yeah, absolutely. I think this grand final is going to be a really special way to kick off the year. I think it's a couple teams that people really expected to be here. Of course, with Rising Sun, you've got some familiar veterans. You've got that flair with Team Wood, too. I know they're hungry to come back this year after doing really, really well last year. Up until that sixth month, they were second place, and once Stalwart kind of clinched it, they disbanded, tested things out, but now they're back. Love Coach Wiggly Spoo. I think they have a really good chance here for both sides. Yeah, this is uh, going to be an exciting matchup, to be sure. Again, there's so many ways to be involved in the Brawl Stars Championship. You can head over to event.brawlstars.com. You can interact and earn yourself your rewards. Get your predictions in, because we've already made ours. There's going to be some interesting ones through the show, but this might give you a bit of an idea about where you should be putting your eggs. Uh, spoilers, don't take anything I predict for uh, granted. I'm really just doing it for the spice here. But let's have a look and see what all of us uh, collectively have predicted here. Of course, we're going to be talking... First up about SEA, uh, and I think that, you know, this matchup here features, uh, you know, well-known names on sort of both sides of the coin here, Rising Sun, SEA. A team would, uh, particularly exciting. As soon as I see the name Response on this lineup, I feel like I'm going to be predicting them. Uh, Ready, are you in the same boat here? Are you feeling good about Team Wood in this grand final? Pretty much, and, and I think a lot of people are uh, with me on this one. Response, just a world-class player. Uh, at his side, X9J as well, fairly consistent player throughout the last year, and Wiggly Spoo at the helm. I think that that's just recipe for success. Looks like we're all on the Team Wood hype train, and I think a lot of folks in chat are as well, but once we get everyone's predictions in here as well, we'll get to break that down and sort of see what everyone thinks. Not to say that Rising Sun doesn't have some fierce competition awaiting them across the way. Kenny, any th final thoughts for you before we say goodbye to you again? You're definitely on the Team Wood train with the rest of us. Yeah, I think so too. Jay and Response have a lot of chemistry together from last year. I love Wiggly Spoo coming in and coaching this team. He's very driven. He's made a very big passionate point this offseason to get good at this game with one goal of going to Worlds. I wouldn't blame anybody for going Rising Sun. Of course, CZK and crew are going to be fantastic players, but I'm rolling with Team Wood on this one. 
Yeah, I mean, I remember that Team Flash team back in 2021, CZK sort of putting himself on the map in a big way there, but he's got quite a challenge ahead of him. Thanks for joining us so far, Kenny. We're going to catch up with you for our next match. But for now, let's dial ourselves in here. It's going to be Rising Sun SEA featuring CZK, Bear Bear, and Troy up against Team Wood. It's X9J, Hiroshi, and Response Ready Set. And this is not a chalked matchup by any means, despite, you know, vastly leaning in one team's favor here up at the casting desk. It's going to be a fierce showdown between these two. When we break down Rising Sun, S-E-A, they have CZK at the helm, Bear Bear and Troye at each of his sides. And Bear Bear and Troye, they've been playing together for quite some time now, especially if we roll back the clock and look at 2022. But when we talk about CZK in particular, he's the real star of this team, and he's really the MVP, the team captain here. 2021, he uh, was in the World Finals with Team Flash, and then 2022, competed in every single uh, monthly final in the region. So just seriously, world-class player here leading the team. And again, I mean, CZK, no stranger to his opponents today because he competed in a couple of monthly finals on this Team Wood roster. A uh, different look at the time, of course, alongside X9J and Response. So maybe a score to settle here uh, in this matchup. Let's talk about this Team Wood team, the one that everyone is getting so excited about. I mean, crucially, uh, you know, Prime, uh, the fourth player on this roster, is playing in their first ever monthly final. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait and see if we even sort of seen them. But I mean, we have a two-time world finalist uh, with Response here. Well, obviously, Team Flash, and we saw him with Stalwart Esports, right? The team that weren't quite able to get the full roster over but response still really uh i think uh you know making a statement here uh and again like like we were talking about a little bit of rivalry there with czk yeah exactly i mean this is a former teammate as well and of course that is what we're all about we're all about the storylines here and sort of the rivalry but i don't know if it's going to be so much as rivalry as it is going to be fierce competition between the two because we have such great players on either side of this competition and we are kind of focusing down on the minutia and really the facts the history of everything because going into this new season this 2023 season we haven't seen anything of these teams just yet so we'll have to rely on some historical data and maybe instincts in some departments on how we think this one's going to turn out. Of course, we want to hear y'all's uh, opinions as well. Yeah, event.brawlstars.com. That's where you can get your votes in. And uh, I think you make a great point there in terms of how this is really a clean slate in, in terms of how we approach the Brawl Stars Championship and especially these teams from this region. For those that maybe, you know, tuned in while we were in Paris, they really enjoyed the 2022 World Championships. How much has changed now? Because, of course, Chester and Mandy now in the mix here. Let's talk a little bit about how maybe sort of the metagame has evolved. Yeah, something that we've seriously seen evolve just over the course of the last few months is especially sort of the death of the anti-tank meta. It's all about tanks now, and as an NA guy myself, we see a lot of Sam and we see a lot of Ash. And if we talk SEA in particular, this is also the birthplace of new metas if we roll back the clock and take a look, uh, turn the pages in the history book. This is where we started to see Carl emerge before he became popular the world round. And I would, you know, not totally not expect to see some kind of wacky picks out here that might look unexpected just at that first glance, but turn out to be in a few months, some of the greatest things that we've seen in the new meta. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I mean again, we hype this up a lot, a region where, which is the Genesis, really the cradle of a lot of metas that tend to take over, uh, you know, globally, at least until there's sort of any balanced approach to that one here. We're going to be jumping now into the pick and ban, of course, and we have uh, Max, it looks like things are going to be locked away pretty much early here. And I want to point out as well, the predictions there, there are a lot of people on the side of Team Wood here as well. So this is interesting. We already sort of talked up, uh, you know, a little bit of what to expect in the metagame, but we're bridged too far. We've got some really long lanes, some long sight lines. So no surprise to see Nani. Brock also picked up here. Yeah, I definitely like the Brock pick here. Uh, especially since you're able to break open some of those walls at mid. One of the usual paradigms is this map is that you're forced into 1v1 situations. Of course, you see three lanes, walls dividing them. So if you ban out the wall breakers, you're pretty much guaranteed 1v1s. And also because of those walls and just how wide or how long those lanes are with water separating them, it's hard to switch lanes as well. So I think Brock has a lot of versatility here, though the max definitely worries me a little bit for Rising Sun SEA because they're going to have to think of something to deal with the max speed. When you get a good comp revolving around the max speed they can pretty much walk all over you any kind of movement ability is very very useful in this game love to see the 8-bit coming out from rising sun sea i think that's a great pick but the ultimate counter to that is going to be colette and i think team wood might be thinking of that 
Okay, yeah. I mean, we know just how sturdy that 8-bit is in many cases. Colette also just generally so good on, on heist, right? Being able to you know, throw that super in, get free damage on the enemy safe. Especially, look, if the rest of your, your team is not super long range outside of the Brock, right? Max is definitely going to be outranged in, in many of these matchups. So you might have to play around that a little bit differently. Maybe even sort of a 2v1 lane. But okay, we're going to see the Sprout brought in here by response. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty much what I'm talking about. You see stuff that on the surface, it looks like a real wacky pick, but we trust the players, especially in this region, to show us what it's all about. Sprout, in my opinion, not really one of the best brawlers to be picking on a mode like Heist, but if those walls are going to be staying up, then it can probably end up being one of the better brawlers, especially because you can block off an entire lane with just a single super, and if you have that super gear equipped, make sure that you get the super back in just four hits and gradually work up the battlefield. I anticipate that's going to be the strategy from Team Wood. We'll see Response, uh, sort of the MVP of this roster as well, working his way up mid, but being very careful not to feed any supers to CZK along the way. Early left lane victory by X9J. And good stuff all around for Team Wood as they rush down the battlefield. At arm's length for as, as much as possible. Hiroshi gets a brief advantage on that right hand side, tries to collapse on CZK, but it could be dangerous. Bear Bear going down in the meantime. Face shift to use by Hiroshi, but it doesn't get him out of dodge. Big damage as well from response as he throws down the hedge. Completely protected here at mid. Bear Bear also on the left lane, doing his best at defending. Troy on the right side also, not face versus anyone in that lane. Seems to think that there's someone there, and gradually he'll be, he'll be making his way up there. <laughs> Looks like Hiroshi also thought someone might be in the bush, but they've scouted each other out now. Hiroshi has a super, however. And a good left lane victory as well for Bear Bear is going to let him move up here. Response still trying to keep Bear Bear at bay. He's pretty much yeah, I mean, fortified inside of this compound in mid. The hedge is big for response, right? It means that they can really just avoid that long-range damage from CZK, virtually forcing CZK into that right-hand side lane. Now response is in a great position to pressure this 8-bit down, and look at that, he's not going to get away from the space car. It's there. Response again erects a defensive hedge in the middle part of the map, and he just keeps cycling those. Bear Bear flattened on the left-hand side here with a minute left. This is looking very good for Team Wood. No doubt they're trying their best to keep anything from slipping through. CZK especially... Trying to get some damage in here, take down response, but he's simply so far out of reach. There's not really much anything that Rising Sun SEA can do unless Bear Bear gets a super and can sneak around CZK blocked off on the lane, but not entirely so. If he gets a super and can get some damage locked in on the enemy safe, it could lock in their fate. Team Wood taking huge, huge damage, 85% remaining, 33 seconds on the clock. They're trickling in damage on Rising Sun safe, but one more escape like CZK did just a moment ago could seal their fate. 25 seconds left, Team Wood now having to retreat as Troye and Bear Bear continue to pummel the enemy safe and now take the lead. Yep, that left-hand side collapsing is not good at all. Troy is going to go down here, but it's a lead down for Rising Sun SCA. It has to be an all-in towards the safe here, ready, set, and so far, so good. Rising Sun SCA just collapsed in the last moments of this round here. They let Team Wood come forward. But you can see how much of this match was balanced on a knife edge there. Great start here for Team Wood, but a very competitive round. And as soon as CZK actually starts to get to move up that lane, you can see how scary it is. Throw the super down. One salvo of shots is almost it's more than 10% of safe damage. It's one of the things that makes Apex just so, so good on this map is that he can lock in a lot of damage on the enemy safe, but otherwise you're pretty much acting as a super battery for enemies, especially if we take a look at the mid matchup response. He only needs four <laughs> shots connected in order to farm up his super and then throw down the hedge. Then from there on out, there's nothing that really anyone can do unless Bear Bear gets a super in. And luckily for him, he has gotten one quite early on, but response responds very quickly. Has that super down, Bear Bear not even really worried about dealing with response, more so about getting some damage locked in on the safe could even teleport in work blast active big damage on the safe czk also able to shoot down that safe good stuff so far a great start for Ooh. rising sun sea and it looks like they've sort of identified the weakness of team woods comp and now are circumventing it entirely i mean rising sun sea i actually realized they read the lane swap immediately so team would have forced to spend the first 10 seconds of the round putting brock over on the left hand side lane love the read there and bear bear's now starting to really kick off that's two gadget uses there so multiple times he's been able to uh, you know blink forward and start to pressure that safe down but look at that 80 percent what a great star for rising sun 
Team Wood can still fire back, though. It's just going to be slow and steady the entire way. Response has another hedge up, ready to go. But Bear Bear now is ready for a warp blast to the enemy safe. It's time to defend for Team Wood. They circle back, hedge active for Response. Could be pummeled down by the Ego. Manches to cycle at the super once again. Now he's protected, but the safe is not thousand health left down, and Troye gets the Elim. Good reaction. I love the stuff so far. This was, uh, I think, a appropriate reaction game over game, just the development between games, I believe. Uh, when we talk Sprout here, I think it was a good idea, especially if we are only looking at game one in a vacuum. But once Rising Sun and SEA were able to identify that strength, they pretty much decided to ignore Sprout entirely. And X9J is trying to get a matchup against Troye in this lane, right? That's why we saw the swap beforehand. Bear Bear, there was a, it, it's clearly been a problem for X9J so far. That pressure on the left-hand side from Nani is pretty scary. Hiroshi here has to use that speed to avoid as many of these shots as possible. And you can see why Brock wants the matchup on the left there. Now, there goes Banyol Override. Bear Bear going to go in and actually goes all in to try and get rid of the Sprout. It's going to be a trade in the end there. X9J, X9 rather, Rocket Laces to get himself up in the air. 12 HP left, and he's starting to pressure the safe down here. Decent spot to do it, but he's firing these shots, which means he's not healing, so he can't hang around for too long. Whereas CZK looks far more comfortable here on the right. Yeah, and he's getting real, real cozy. Even though Response and Roshi are rushing him down, he's doing his best to dodge Bob and Weave and still manages to get some shots on that safe before being taken down. Hiroshi now accelerating up the right side. Troy doing his best to prevent him freeze frame down, but quickly eliminated by Response and Hiroshi, that duo. CZK now with the lane swap and completely shut down by the hedge being placed. And Response can still recycle it. He has another gadget. Here it is, and an Elim on the Troy as well. Team Wood holding their own, but they're still at a deficit. They have plenty of time to do so. They can't get too much DPS unless Jay gets some good positioning on that safe. You can see how crucial the super is for response, and if response can't generate that often enough, it's going to be very vulnerable a lot of the time to Troy or whoever he's laning against. There's been a lane reassignment here as well from Rising Sun ICA. They put Bear Bear back against X9J. They want to put pressure on this Brock. They can't afford to let him come forward and rocket rain here, but that was dangerous. Troyo got caught out there, and now X9J can pop that super, can let it go. Love the rocket laces as well to jump over that peep. But it looks like it's going to be the gadget use there to try and all in on the side of Rising Sun ACA. Beautiful teamwork from Rising Sun. They could finish this one off. Bear Bear's going to have to get good dodges. Troy also trying to dodge. Not going to get taken down by Response just yet. There is the final shot. Great aim for Response, and Bear Bear shoots it down. Team Wood almost had this one. I loved the choice of the Sprout if we only look at game number one. It sure. seemed like after that, the sort of other lanes got ignored and started to crumble from there on out. It was a great reaction from Rising Sun to SEA that led to them taking the victory. Yeah, the amount of pressure that Response could start putting down when there was multiple hedges coming up, right? Like recycling them as well, but just, you know, throwing one down in front, allowing him to move up. And then when the lane gets vacated, as we saw it happen a couple of times, throw the hedge on the other lane, set it up for your other, other teammate there and allow yourself to pressure it down and also just start getting damage of your own. It seems like some of those matchups here, yeah, a little bit lopsided, right? Like Max having to lane into, whether it was Lola or 8-bit or whoever it was, it was, seemed very, very difficult to sort of try and win out in, in cases like that here. And you can see just this kind of, this play from CZK, he's able to go all the way up here, set up that super, pressure the safe down, a lot of free damage here. And, and, and on the other side of Rising Sun, they've taken hardly any at this point here. Brutal stuff to try and come back from. And I think really this is just CZK with a skill diff. There's a reason he has such uh, such a decorated history because to make it from one side to the other of this very, very long map in super straight lanes is remarkably difficult, especially with 8-bit, but he's still able to make it work and Response and Roshi at some point seem helpless to do so. Once they combine forces, they're able to get a lot more damage locked onto him and uh, progress from there. But I think really the idea from Team Wood here of let's camp the enemy in their base, it really works well for Sprout. It doesn't work well for the other members of the team, especially because once they take down an enemy, they're respawning with the shield. They'll be able to get lots of free position and get some damage um, on those lanes. And I think it's one of those that just needs to be taken back to the drawing board, but I definitely commend the creativity. Yeah, again, you're locked into the draft to some degree there as well. Before we talk about some of these stats, I just want to point out, if you've noticed anything uh, about the production that, that seems a little bit off or there's a couple technical errors here, uh, we've had to make a pretty big pivot in, in how we sort of do the production due to some brutal weather out here in Los Angeles. So yeah, things just seem a little bit wonky, maybe sound not there at times. That's sort of why. But thanks uh, for bearing with us so far because it's well worth being here to see some fantastic Brawl Stars in action. And hey, we all predicted Team Wood to come away with this first map and 
you know, I think ready for you, you're definitely talking about how maybe some of the issues popped up in the draft for this team, but that's still a huge set that they've conceded over to Rising Sun SCA. And that's even with X9J on the Brock doing so much work alongside response. The damage numbers are really flattering for Team Wood, but they don't come away with the result. No doubt. I mean, this is, I think, one of those situations where Team Wood, they, you know, really believe that they have the upper hand and go for a draft that uh, on paper and in practice are untraditional, right? And once again, I like commend the creativity. They pick up a wall breaker and sort of start to lean into the idea and sort of maybe confuse Rising Sun SEA into thinking, yeah, we're going to break down some walls. So, you know, your nanny is probably going to be quite a bit better. You don't need to pick a wall breaker of your own, that sort of thing. But no, instead, they decide to build those walls up instead of break them down and at times get good control and lane diffs. But in the end, CZK, I think, especially clutched up. Now, when we move into Ring of Fire, though, I think we can uh, anticipate to still see some of those same themes, especially long range brawlers like we did on the last map at mid. But on the side lanes, you know, big, big bushes on this map. And if you can get into the enemy's bushes and start to camp out there, it definitely takes a pinch to get rid of you from that position. So I definitely love the B first pick from Team Wood. I think it's definitely a good decision on this map. Now, just to be clear, of course, it is going to be Ring of Fire and Hot Zone here. And uh, Gus getting picked up here, of course. Incredibly powerful brawler. And again, you know, being able to just use the gadget there just to, to pop a balloon and get that extra sort of burst damage is extremely potent. Shield, of course, is definitely not something to sneer at here. So very, very strong mid-range brawler with good support capability. And it's going to be the Crow locked in here for Bear Bear. So a bit of all-in potential when push comes to shove and they're fighting for the zone. Yeah, and if we break down the Crow pick a little bit, Crow just a good all-around brawler. If we talk Ring of Fire in particular, I don't think necessarily a super standout brawler. But I think this could also be a prediction that Team Wood are leaning into the idea of Poco here. They picked up the B. B is the number one counter to Poco pretty much everywhere. And especially on this map, if you are able to get a Poco without facing any counters, it's a great asset to have. Janet is a pick that I love. Like I was talking about some of those bushes on the enemy side and on your side. If you're able to use your super as Janet, fly into those bushes and set up shop there, you are eating well. That's a great position to be in. And like I said, once again, it takes two brawlers minimum to get you out of that position. Yeah, it also means you can play aggressively in those bushes and get back to safety with your super. You know, just tying up a couple of enemy brawlers, maybe giving your teammates some extra time on the zone. Those extra points really make a big difference here. Penny coming down, of course, she's really shot back up, you know, into Vogue when, when, when Salty Barrel was involved, right? Gave her an option at close range here. And again, really making a very, uh, a very strong all-rounder in many ways. Of course, she has that, like you said, close range with Salty Barrel set up the turret, especially if we look at the geography of this map. You have a big corner that is on either side in those big bushes. It's a great position to place it. You also have other nooks and crannies that you can place it in, like the uh, little L-shaped three blocks on either side of the hot zone. Spike last pick, I like it from Rising Sun SEA uh, in the sense that I think it will probably work well in the sense that it is a strong and directed pick not so much. Typically when we see Spike, like Spike's not a bad brawler. Spike's not the greatest brawler in the game right now. It's just very consistent and it's a very safe brawler to go with. I think that this could be an opportunity for Rising Sun SEA to go for a brawler that is pointed and counters what Team Wood has. Typically that's what you do with the last pick. It's really, really advantageous to be able to counter an enemy without them being able to pick after you and then counter you back. I think that this makes me uh, feel like Rising Sun SEA are not so confident with that final pick. So we'll see how well they play in the team world. A lot of, yeah, a lot of these sort of mid-range brawlers being brought into action here. Of course, life plan gonna be good if you wanna spend a couple of extra seconds on the point. And of course, the way that uh, your your sort of pins here tend to spread means that CZK can scout these bushes fairly effectively as well. Pretty slow stuff here. Both teams with just the 6% here, of course, Troy gonna be uh, commandeering the middle part of the map here on the Gus. And again, the threat of Kooky Popper is gonna keep Team Wood on their toes. Yeah, he's got to be pretty close to having it by now. Hiroshi camping on that powered up B, also running Honeycomb to have a bit of extra Ooh. resistance for that shield active. Great stuff from response. The amazing dodges versus CZK. That is brilliant stuff right there, dodging out every single one of the curveballs. And also the ghost thrown down, not in a great position uh, for Rising Sun SEA. They won't be able to get the Kooky Popper popped off and get damage from there. A little trade off on the left side, but Team Wood still reign supreme in terms of the percentage. Big jump in from Bear Bear, shut down. Rising Sun, SEA now threatened to take back the lead. Can't let Prime 3 on the right side. 
This is scary. Response here, actually going for the super, getting a bit aggressive here. We're going to drop down, try and pressure CCK. He's able to scout him out, but great super from Troy to keep CCK up. Unfortunately, the Gus himself is going to fall. The trade is there, though. Bear Bear's able to get rid of the Janet now, but has to make their way back towards the point. No swoop up right now, so no all-in potential on this B. He'll have to contend himself with dodging as many of these shots as he can, but as it stands, Team Wood still have a healthy lead certainly do but they're being very very careful trying not to get one of their members wiped out and therefore losing control rising sun sea much of the same but they're not having as much resistance when it comes to stepping on that point especially towards the edge now that prime has this turret up though on the left side it's going to be a lot easier for them to get some area control hiroshi also threw down a gadget just then he has one more left to avoid some damage bear bear ready with a jump in at any moment he knows that response could fly away and could also deal some serious damage to him in close range so hiroshi looks like the ideal target for that one elim on the left side as prime rushes through now trying to pinch the back lines with troya and bear bear at that right side team would now take control amid a jump in from bear bear but no cigar on that one troy also shot down and this could be the win for team wood rising sun sea have just one more push left in them very much a solo play there uh from bear bear trying to take matters into their own hands but i mean they were missing a brawler cck was still on their way back from sport and that is a comfortable comfortable win here for team wood again you kind of said the spike getting picked here at the end of the draft was kind of dubious you weren't sure what it was supposed to do you felt like maybe rising sun weren't that confident it's really hard to see any moments here where the spike was able to make a difference right whether a cck was laning against the janet or against a penny it, he's getting absolutely flattened yeah and this is just one of those things where when you're playing into a spike if you're a player at this level you know how to follow the pattern of purball you know how to follow the pattern of fertilize instead and it makes Spike a lot less viable as a pick at this rate. And I think CZK might just be thinking that he'll be able to outskill this lane on the right side versus Prime. Ooh. It doesn't appear to be so so far, but Hiroshi gets a great takedown. And Prime gets to rush in to fill that space where he once was. Troy also taken down. And Prime's in a prime position on the right side to ambush CZK from the position of bushes. Hiroshi also trying to get the pinch on the left side. Bear Bear forced out of this position in response, hot on his heels. It's a great start for Team Wood. And Prime, he's staying alive on the right side. Another takedown of CZK and Team Wood are looking fantastic right now. Uh, this isn't even close, right? The safe mid of B here for Hiroshi means that Response and Prime can play much more aggressively, right? Push down these side lanes. Look at Response just sitting up here. and uh, uh, This is obviously pretty frustrating now as Bear Bear knows he has to go and get rid of that as there's no chance of healing from the poke from Hiroshi in the meantime. Swoop in towards the middle of the map and Hiroshi is none, uh, he's none too fluffed there. He's quite happy to just keep holding that position and pressure down. And there's no way Rising Sun SCA are going to have any way of looking in here on this round. This is going much more like we predicted at the start of the series, Ready Set. It certainly is. I mean, I think that set number one, could it have been a fluke? I'm not totally sure. I think we saw um, a good draft from Team Wood up until the Sprout pick, right? I think they got a little bit ahead of themselves. Maybe wanted to pick their team mascot like they have the Sprout on their icon. And it just ended up them out drafting themselves. In this situation though, I want to point out the draft from Rising Sun SEA. They went for the spike and it just didn't really work. CZK, he's certainly their star player. And to pick a brawler like Spike and try and make it work from there, uh, I think might have been selling himself short just a little bit. We got to see that confidence out here in the following sets. But in terms of this one, this was all team would the entire set. And especially if we look at the end of the last game, they were not letting anyone through 100% to 3%. It's not a good outlook for Rising Sun. It's worth pointing out that, you know, Janet really is quite freakishly long ranged when she's able to charge that attack up, right? In general, she's able to pressure the side lane down very effectively. Look at response here. Moving out through the base booster down, Troy gets revealed inside the bushes. Hiroshi, it's just easy shots to line up here. Down to the gadget use, it felt like Team Wood are getting absolutely everything out of their brawlers here. You see Prime as well, just pushing up. And this is what happens if you lose CCK, if you lose one of your brawlers, any of them. In many cases, it was the it was the spike here. You start to get folded back, uh, you know, onto your own side of the map. And you know, credit to Team Wood for realizing when they had a power play, an opportunity to really start to pressure things down. And they just sat to be on the hot zone for the entire round. This felt clinical. But what's so interesting about these last two sets, Ready, is that. Both teams have made their la these last pick brawlers, right? First it was the Sprout, then it was the Spike, and neither of those have really worked out. The core of their compositions have looked fine. It's just that last brawler pick that's let them down, uh, respectively. Yeah, it is an interesting thing to point out, and it's definitely worth looking into in the next set is 
what sort of position is being taken with those last brawlers. I think also this is just a symptom of uh, perhaps tanks being really, really strong right now and at some points being banned out. We've seen the Sam ban already. Just these super good brawlers that thrive on the last picks being taken out just during the ban phase. And I think we can definitely look into that going forward. With that said, though, once again, I think this is sort of a let's try and outdraft the enemy with something that is pretty off meta in most situations like Sket Creative. This region absolutely loves to do this. It's what makes it one of my favorite regions to watch. It's just the birthplace of so many new metas. But of course, among those, you also have like the failed attempts. And I think that's where we see the sprout um, left to be buried. And then later on, who knows what could pop up. But I think also with both teams sort of finding sort of their comfort zone, we see Rising Sun SEA. They've gotten a set under their belt. Team Wood, much of the same, playing some more traditional stuff rather than things like the sprout. Set number three, I think it's going to showcase kind of the best of both of these teams. Yeah, no doubt about it. I love that you point out that the more flamboyant drafting style of this region can lead to some minor mishaps and i feel like yeah we've seen them we've gotten them out of the way here for both teams so let's assume that the jitters now have been put aside and both teams are ready to put their best foot forward here in set number three of course it's going to be the classic canal grande again i mean i guess the kind of a kind of game type that you know stipulates a very specific way of, of drafting here seeing carl come up here is no surprise having that all-in potential with tailspin is so huge Certainly so, and I love the also uh, versatility that you can get with that gadget. Immediately get the blue star at the beginning of the match and dictate the pace of the match from there. Team Wood are going to have to think about how they're going to play defensively versus Penny and versus Max. Of course, versus Penny, you don't want to continue to back up because that turret is gradually going to move up the field, and especially on a map like Canal Grand, there are only two lanes getting you out of spawn, and it's incredibly easy to get spawn camped in that situation. With Max also on the opposing side, they can very quickly lose position if they're not careful. Here comes a Poco from Team Wood. A little unexpected, but you have a tank on your team and Poco's always going to be a good accessory. They're going to have to think of a final pick, though. Keep in mind, they've gotten rid of Ash and Sam. They've also gotten rid of Otis. If they pick up a tank now, it could be a great asset to have. When you're on I mean, Canal Grand and you get that early game positioning with the Blue Star, it is pretty much enemies running into you all of the time. Let's not forget just how ridiculously tanky Poco gets. Uh, sorry, uh, Carl gets as well. Uh, you know, considered to many to be like a mid-range brawl. The guy is very durable, and when you're able to sort of uh, jump in there with Tailspin and actually have that shielding, it is very, very hard to deal with. So they don't round out the composition the way you maybe expect. Instead, it's a stew here. What do you what do you think Tim would have going for with his last pick? I'm anticipating Stu is going to be here for wall break and probably trying to outrun any sort of tank that's on Rising Sun side. Keep in mind, I've said time and time again that we are deeply into a tank meta and tanks as a last pick are going to be a huge, huge upper hand. M's the last selection from Rising Sun SEA. Gotta say, not exactly my favorite since there are not really tanks on Team Wood that are going to be super vulnerable to that. Response can always just use that flying hook in, tailspin afterwards. Sure, you can get stunned by CZK, but as long as you're in close range, and especially since Carl's a lot of health, I don't think it'll be an issue, especially with Hiroshi at the side. However, if you look at the synergy between Max and M's, I think now we start to get a better idea of what Rising Sun SEA have in store. Right, I mean, you're, you're talking about friend zone, all right, of course, M's's ability you know, to pop the gadget and just sort of push away whoever's trying to sort of get there because you know that that's what team what are looking for here there's a lot of all in going on plus an extra healing from poco means that uh you know the effective hp of these ballers is much higher than is actually indicated response almost gets caught out there a little bit but tck and bear bear are very low and they're very susceptible here Ouch. to response making the charge in that's very quickly five stars handed over blue included and team wood now can set up here in the middle of the map it's a free blue star. It's the massive movement ability by Response that lead Team Wood to take this early game advantage. Response also on the right side. Far away from Bear Bear, he can keep his distance from these enemies at all times. Bear Bear finally gets a super and now clears out that left side on Hiroshi. He will be able to circle around this right side. CZK and Troya desperately need his help though and they need that speed to make big plays. Response gets caught up in it, but he does get healed. Here comes the tail spin Hiroshi now with the elimination. Troya and CZK remain alive. Response down the left side still. Team Wood in the lead. Great elimination as well with the screeching solo. Bear Bear charges forward with a phase shifter and Rising Sun SEA. They take control of the right side and they take control of this game's pacing i mean neither of these teams are playing sharpshooters long-range brawlers so at some point they both have to engage ems really needs to try and you know get up like, a little bit closer at least to her opponents to get value of course out of her abilities here we know what carl wants to do 
So both teams really wanted to fight over the blue star. They really wanted to start at an advantage and actually you know, not have to be the aggressor. But that turret, that, that penny turret is doing a ton of work. Because even though somehow response got out at the end of that last fight, especially with the Poco heal, it wasn't enough. He eventually falls again to the incendiary feel from that. Look at the footwork here, though. CCK falls as response stays alive again. Super flashy plays on the right side. Response, he knew exactly what he was going into. A 1v2 and still managed to get a kill. CZK and Troya, though, now they got back up. CZK marching forward right into the clutches of the Screeching. Solo Troya tries to get him healing on the Prime. It's his really last lifeline to get this one back. But Team Wood, they pick up two kills on the left side. Now a final one on the Troye, And it's looking good for Team Wood. Yeah, that was a fantastic start, I think, to this set. And now you got a good idea of what both these teams are trying to do. Turns out the game plan is actually pretty darn similar. It's get the engagement, try and at least isolate an individual brawler. Many times we saw Rising Sun trying to focus down on response and you know, get the stew out of the picture early on here. This is exciting stuff. Very skill-based matchup here. Certainly so, and it seems like both teams are willingly putting themselves in this position, especially response on the right side. He knows he's getting up close and personal in a 1v3, but he does finally have to pay the price. Prime also in very close quarters will be able to get a kill, especially with Hiroshi at his side. Another Elim from Hiroshi too, and Team Wood are looking fantastic, even though they've made incredibly risky plays so far. Hiroshi ready to go on in with that super there. Flying hook could uh, be pretty scary. There's big engage potential. And of course, protective pirouette means even with the, with the healing of the poker on your side, it's very, very hard to blow you up while you're busy trying to do what you do best. Screeching Solo picks off another one. Nasty stuff from Prime. Seriously aggressive play from Rising Sun SEN. It's just feeding those Poco Supers. They know that this is coming, but they're willing to take the risk because they got to get in close quarters to engage. Response on the left side, dashing forward. One, two, three. Ooh. Supers charged up. CZK looks for the kill, and he keeps on healing with a use of hype. Great use of the star power. Allows him to get that kill in response. Now speed on the right side. Hiroshi and Prime, they got to run for the hills, but they're staying around. They're going down with the ship, especially Prime as he falls. And Hiroshi in response left to pick pieces. So now sort of re-engage on the left side, response falls in the aftermath. Team Wood, they still have the advantage, but this has been one win after the next by Rising Sun SEA. It's pushed Team Wood all the way back into their spawn. Yeah, scary stuff against the Penny. You talked about it earlier on here. The turret is going to continue, continually get put further and further up the map here. Hiroshi has to try and go and make the play. CCK, there's able to friend zone him back, and the Carl is down. Now it's a comfortable lead for Rising Sun SEA. Still can be taken back by Team Wood. Response charging into the mayhem on the left side. Ends up having to pay the price. Here comes the gadget in Hiroshi. Big damage, but he's no match for the combo of Bear Bear and CZK. Team Wood, there's just no recourse from at this point. No combination of kills or sort of assortment of positioning can bring that one back. It has been a super, super even match so far. Just one game apiece on this matchup. And I'm loving it. Though, one thing I want to point out is just how aggressive these teams have been playing so far. It's not like anything that I've ever seen before. Typically, you see this kind of stuff when you have tanks on your team. But no, Stu still charging right into the enemy team, trying to pick up some kills despite only having 4k health. I love watching it, but it's definitely different from what I've seen in the past. Response has been punished a couple of times by that hype friend zone combo there from CCK. So this time he's playing a little bit more safe and it pays off. It pays off in a big way. Five stars already handed over here to Team Wood to start things off. Now they'll send response a little bit more aggressively forward here. But again, you try and take too much space and you're going to get caught up inside the choking gases from the M. So response now really respecting CCK a little more after those last couple of rounds. Certainly so, keeping the distance. Here comes Hiroshi on the left side, though. Tailspin, Ooh. but Troy is still able to get the takedown response now with the wall break as well. They'll be able to spawn Camp Rising Sun a bit better with some of the walls broken down. Prime's still going to have a good time as soon as he gets that super fired up. Screeching Solo gets you that damage through walls and can be enough for the takedown. He's done it once, and he'll huh. try and do it against CZK and Bear Bear, both on very low health. They're keeping their distance. A lot more footsies this time with players keeping their distance from each other, trying not to feed those supers, and especially Team Wood, keeping their distance from that turret. Hiroshi's going to work on it. But Bear Bear and Troye pushing him back gradually. Prime now coming in for the assist, trying his best to hunker down in this position as they're five stars in the lead, and the clock continues to tick down below 40. Yeah, this is much more measured play from Team Wood, right? I think that's sort of what you were going for here, because they, it looks like they want to force an overextension here from Rising Sun SCA. No supers right now on Rising Sun. Uh, so no ability to really make use of those response. Okay, 
Tries to charge through the barrier there with that gadget use. CCK is wise to it. Those going to back away. Super now is up for that M's over there. So dangerous for a response to try and take the one versus one. Troy wants to try and push it in a bit aggressively as well. Hiroshi, though, is going to get cut down. So much damage. And Bear Bear comes in for the finish off here. Still a lead for Team Wood, though, because Response is able to do work on this left-hand side. It's seven stars for Team Wood. They're in front for now. Prime, though, needs to be careful. Dodges a turret shot, and there's three seconds left. It looks like Rising Sun are not going to be able to close the gap. A very tight finish here, but it is, of course, going to be Team Wood to take away the set. That final interaction, in fact, it was like a series of at least a dozen interactions, had me on the edge of my seat, 20 seconds and all the action packed into that time. We saw very, very close, uh, very close interactions between Rising Sun and Team Wood, especially Rising Sun, just really a single bullet away from bringing back the pace of the game into their own hands and running it back with the victory, taking a set for themselves. It has been so many times, in my opinion, that we've seen these players take really big risks and really big chances just in the end team where they come out on top yeah it feels like as well i mean you you've you mentioned it multiple times right but playing against the penny means you can't give up too much space it's, if you have a star lead you're almost baited into sort of remaining aggressive lest you sort of get you know pushed back into a corner of the map even with a star lead, which is kind of what happened there of course towards the end of the round but having the poker there as well being able to heal with that super pretty critical especially in lieu of the capo uh being brought on board but we saw screeching solo is really able to give you the fact that it penetrates through those walls means you can secure key stars when your opponents otherwise think they might be safe in some cases there the interactions between some of the brawlers specifically were great. I think CCK and Response, obviously teammates in, in, in another life, but also going head to head a lot of the time with a really interesting matchup, the Stu versus the M's, right? Where either one, if they make a misstep, a misplay, they can get completely caught out there. And, you know, I think that initially Response was caught out by uh, that hype star power and realizing that he didn't actually have the damage to take CZK down in that second round here. Really close game, really tight stuff. It's, it's clear to see that these two teams are, are on a pretty similar level here, which is great because we've got a whole best of five to put them through their paces, ready. Certainly so. I mean, it has been incredibly even so far, and I almost anticipate that this one will go to a set five, given how back and forth the matchup has been so far, especially if we are looking at just, you know, in, in a vacuum, the matchup between CZK and Response repeatedly, time after time. If we're looking at just the Stu and the M's matchup, it's not one that you really see all that often, and it's, it's difficult to say who comes out on top. Typically, I'd hedge my bets on Stu to take the upper hand there, but we saw hype can work wonders in a pinch. And it's just, could it be having that game sense that you know you're going to be getting that super and you'll be able to defend and maybe the enemy doesn't know? Or are both players just really, really eager to you know, kind of take out some of their um, skill on each other and have a matchup from their former teammates? Definitely a little bit of rivalry and definitely a bit of friendly competition there. But this is also the grand finals and there is a lot at stake at this stage of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, normally when we first start a show, we're still dealing with quarterfinals, right? Teams still trying to find their feet amongst the top eight to see where they're at. But we jump in here to, to SEA at the last match, the final. So, and, and these teams have had some time as well. They played, you know, uh, the rest of this bracket on the monthly qualifier weekend. So they've had time to sort of collect themselves, go, go okay, hey, we've got one more big game coming up. We can, we can spend time actually preparing specifically for this matchup. So you may just see these teams coming in with a lot more scouting done on their opponents, maybe a little bit more of a feel for their tendencies. Well, if you have them, they're going to come in handy as we head to Brawl Ball here for set number four. And again, an opportunity for Team Wood to take the match away here. Let's check out the picks. Rising Sun, SEA, once again, going with the max. We've seen this pick by them numerous times before, and I believe, in fact, every single set, we've seen them pick up the max. And max is just a good all-round brawler. Is it first pick worthy? I'd say that's up for debate within the professional Brawl Stars community. But for now, they've definitely gotten some good value with the brawler. Team Wood, eager to pick up that M's. They don't want to have to face versus that once again. Also, um, to continue, that M's is just a great all-around pick on this map. Gotta acknowledge, though, that it's particularly vulnerable versus brawlers, particularly tanks, that are able to get in close range with the use of a super or something like that. Gray has been banned out since he's just that good and also would have been pretty, uh, fairly good versus him. Team Wood, they also pick up the Penny, I think, uh, as far as draft, usually see this one picked up in the later stages. Both teams just sort of waiting for their opportunity, in my opinion, to go for some tanks here as none of the really significant tanks have been banned out yet. 
yeah, crucially, uh, you know, we don't really see any of them, right? I mean, both teams opted to ban the Otis because the, the dual potential of Otis is insane. And Gray, obviously, as you mentioned earlier on, is very hotly contested. We get the Nita here. Now, this is, uh, I guess, a rare opportunity. Uh, we, we at times saw Nita on, like, heist game modes because, of course, uh, you know, just, she can go absolutely nuts and the bear can just do a lot of damage to that safe here. Well, how do you feel about it on Sneaky Fields as we have another spike pick here for Rising Sun SEA? It just doesn't seem like other team really want to be picking up the tanks here, despite them being so strong in the game at the moment. But Bear Bear now on the Bear summoning Bear is quite fitting, but also is, I think, a good all-around pick on this map. It's going to be great versus tanks. And once again, that's what the current meta pivots around. CZK also going with the spike here, just going to be good for blocking off some lanes, is a fantastic defender on Brawl Ball just wholesale. And finally, is uh, going to be great versus those tanks. Here's a squeak as well. It's going to be great for getting that mid control. Throw down the residue immediately off the beginning of the game. Get that mid lane completely locked down for yourself, especially when you're facing the comp that Rising Sun SEA has gone with. No one's going to have the range to still fight for mid while also staying behind the line that that residue establishes once Hiroshi throws it down. It's hard to say who really has the advantage here, but I will hedge my bets with Team Wood in this situation. I feel like it's a much more directed draft, and I think in a lot of situations, it's going to be able to diff what Rising Sun has. So much AOE coverage and a lot of scouting of the bushes, actually. Caustic Charisma obviously gives you a ton of information, and Squeak can quite easily tell if someone stood in the bushes there. So Prime, of course, going to play through the middle part of the map, but gets caught by Bear Bear to start the round. Not the auspicious beginning you were looking for for Team Wood. And not quite. Typically, you see the squeak played at mid, but Team Wood have opted to play it up the left side. They do finally throw down that residue, but Rising Sun's reaction is simply to not play that lane. And it doesn't even matter for them because they're all grouped up around Max's super. They're getting shut down and zoned out by all of that area control from Prime and Hiroshi. Response still chiming in for some chip shots on the right side. CZK and Bear Bear staying out of range. Here's the turret down on the right and the takedown with the use of the Salty Bear on the right side. Elimination on a Troye as well. It only takes a pass up to Hiroshi to slot this one into the goal, but not quite yet. They're also focusing on getting rid of the Bear and continuing to push this sort of line of control, their back line up towards Rising Sun SEA's goal. Feels like a matter of time now. It gets even more dangerous where Rising Sun SEA are playing. Bear Bear gets caught there by the Caustic Charisma. Hiroshi is able to get out alive. So much free damage right now for Team Wood as Rising Sun are forced to play well within their own half of the map. Despite that though, the banana mount some sort of defense here. CCK takes a face full of damage to try and get some map control here. And it will be denied as Hiroshi really has a range advantage plus the help from Ems. Seriously so, and he's continuing to use that to his advantage. Big connections on a CZK and getting that ball in a safe position. But it's still going to be difficult for Team Wood to reach. They're pretty much going to have to get a full team wipe if they want to get in there. And otherwise, they're just facing versus continuously staggered enemies. CZK will manage to break the mold. They still get stopped by the constant charisma from Prime. Trying to push through on the left side, but getting seriously outranged. Response also trying to get some damage, but he hasn't connected shots in quite a while. And Bear Bear, as a result, is alive and healthy. Now tries to pinch him from the right as CZK falls on the left. This could be the opportunity for Team Wood to lock this one into the goal. Bear Bear is trying his best faves shifter forward. Destruction on a Prime, a pass over response, and a walk in. Team Wood, with 25 seconds on the clock, are in the lead. To see the team would definitely felt like getting two kills was enough for them to be going forward with. I like the phase shift to forward from Bear Bear, maybe hoping to like intercept a pass between the two team wood players there for a walk in, but the timing wasn't quite there, and unfortunately, just not nearly enough backup for Bear Bear to get the job done. This is a good start though. CCK good, putting good pressure down and response, but the caustic charisma is there. The life plan wasn't enough to keep him alive, and no chance of Rising Sun SCA to equalize here in our first round. And that means that Team Wood, they also go to match point as well. I think comp-wise, this looked just a lot better for Team Wood. I think Rising Sun SEA, they were playing into the possibility of tanks being picked here, going with that Spike, going with that Nita. And especially if we are hammering down on that Nita pick, it's outranged by every single thing on the Team Wood's side. And as a result, it just loses lane on paper versus every single one of those. Sure, we've seen CZK do some good things already, but we need to see more for them to bring things back as they are at the mercy of just one game separating them and the Grand Finals victory. Big shout out to Prime, who's uh, been in for much of this series in their first monthly finals appearance really holding their own so far. The M's play has been sublime so far in this set, but up until now as well, they've made a real uh, great account of themselves. Another elimination here for the newcomer, and Hiroshi wants to try and pressure into the goals. This one's going to be an utter walk-in. Stick around, going to be used there, but Hiroshi is completely unperturbed. 
It's a pass and score for Team Wood. Just doesn't really seem like that Max Speed is doing so much for Rising Sun SEA despite their best efforts. If CCK manages to pop off a super here, he'll be able to get some good value versus Hiroshi in particular. He doesn't have a whole lot that he can do in close range, but he's probably not going to get that opportunity. So Hiroshi continues pretty much putting him in jail on the left side. Sure, he's not taking much damage, but Hiroshi's keeping him there. Meanwhile, on the right side, Bear Bear's doing his best to defend. Face shifter forward, it's not going to do much, but buy them some time. Troye is still trying his best to defend and avoiding a whole lot of damage, but he will finally meet his maker thanks to that final shot from Hiroshi, but it does keep Team Wood back in the bushes. They won't be able to score another goal just yet, but really Rising Sun SEA need to be thinking about how they put a goal into the enemy goal because Team Wood, with just a minute on the clock, can just wait this one out. CZK is struggling in this left-hand side. He cannot approach Hiroshi. Prime as well, throwing the cost of Charisma down, only makes it harder for this needed to close the gap, and Hiroshi now can smell the blood. Gonna go in for the elimination, and CCK falls with Troyer down, and Bear Bear, this is the last stand for Rising Sun SEA, and there's nothing left in the tank. A walk-in for Hiroshi will secure the set and the series for Team Wood. Congratulations, Team Wood. Phenomenal play throughout the day, even if it started off with them sort of outdrafting themselves, but you can never really shy away from an opportunity to get your mascot, your sprout on the field and make some magic happen. They did get a game with it. I will point that out. Much uh, appreciation also for Rising Sun SEA, I think very well played, especially in the set that they won, where they managed to get an 8-bit all the way to the enemy side. That's just lane diff right there the entire game as well just two games in a row beautiful stuff from both sides but there's always got to be a victor in the end and much congratulations to team wood yeah look i've got to say i thought that uh cck and troya were both uh you know really competent over the course of this series especially standouts for rising sun uh sea and again with a veteran at their home i mean this team is only going to go up right you've got a lot of experience uh running this roster uh, this is only the first monthly finals you come very close like i think a 3-1 series is really competitive and that is such a good sign for this particular sub-region, this, this SEA region going forward. Let's again cast our mind over uh, some of these last few plays here on Sneaky Fields here. I think that the M's in the middle part of the map and, uh, you know, the, the neater matchup was so hard for Rising Sun SEA to overcome. It seriously was. And I think that CZK said, you know, wow, this is going to be a really tough matchup. Let me try and take care of it. And even for CZK, it proved to be an immense challenge to make it work. We saw maybe one or two bears use the entire set uh, so far. And that speaks volumes about simply how difficult it can be to use this particular brawler when you don't have any counters on the enemy side. What you also kind of don't see on the screen is what brawlers it prevented Team Wood from playing, which I think was also immensely valuable. We just have to speculate about exactly what that was. I mean, this this really tells the whole story, right? CCK just not on a brawler, not put in a position to find success, all right? Again, it's not about, you know, DPS when you're playing Nita. It is about your ability to, to use map control, force people away with the bear, start to really uh, scale upwards uh, on the map here. But really for CZK, very, very difficult to get anything done. The squeak is felt like the perfect answer. Uh, every time CZK pops his head out of a corner, it's like three sticky bombs on him. And, uh, and then it was pretty much over from there on out. So again, we, we talked about the draft and... Uh, how both teams showed some very interesting approaches here, but eventually, you know, we, we really had, uh, you know, Team Wood settle on, on a really solid draft approach. They took the M's that they had to go up against in the previous map. Of course, that bounty game was really exciting. I think that was definitely my favorite set from this series because both teams were mid-ranging. Both teams knew they had to fight. They're fighting of the Blue Star. They were fighting in the middle of the map. They were fighting over nothing in particular, uh, and that was really entertaining. And that's where, like you said, Guys like Response, guys like CZK were able to take the advantage to show uh, their mechanics, I think, to the world there. So great showing from both sides. I, I got to say, I think Bounty was probably my favorite set as well, especially, you know, we can talk about analytical perspective, but also, you know, pull out some popcorn and just watch them go because I've never seen Brawl Stars play like that at this level. Just such scrappy matchups, continuously rushing in on each other and trying to dip the matchup from there. I'm sure they've run the numbers and decided that if I rush in as a stew on an M's, as long as she's only hit two shots so far in the match, then I win it 100% of the time. Hiroshi, the MVP as well. Just, I think, all around fantastic stuff from Team Wood. Clearly, Response knows how to surround himself with some good teammates. Yeah, Hiroshi not having played in a monthly final since 2021 on that Kicks team, of course, if you can throw your mind back so far. So this is a player essentially returning from what we think has been quite a break. But he's hit the ground running here in this February monthly final. Great start for Team Wood. Congratulations, of course, to SEA's 
monthly champion here, Team Wood, looking very, very good. Looks like they're picking up where they left off last year. We're going to go to a break, ladies and gentlemen, and then we're going to head over to India to check out their monthly final, their grand final, It'll be a best of five as well. So stick around for that one. More action coming at you here from this first monthly final here. Of course, Asia's heating up, and we're here to bring you all the action. Don't go anywhere. Are you tired of not winning? Fed up of dying? Want to make it to the championship finals just this once? Fear not. Byron Snazzy Snake Oil can help. Carefully crafted by Mr. Byron himself from nature's finest ingredients, including essence of real snake. 50% of the time, it works every time. Byron Snazzy Snake Oil can cause twitching, excessive hollering, flatulence, and in 50% of cases, death. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the BSC 2023. That's right. We're kicking things off here in the APAC region. I'm Uber joined now by Kenny. Great to have you with me, man. It's time. It's the moment you've been waiting for to jump into some damn good brawl. We've just seen uh, our Southeast Asia monthly finals culminate in a victory for Team Wood. And I asked uh, Ready Set, I said, hey, you know, let's let's look at this from the perspective of people that maybe watch the World Finals in Paris and how much has changed. And it feels like, again, we've just picked up where we left off. A lot of similar compositions, a lot of the same brawlers coming out here. We're going to say Team Woodman, they're looking like they're, uh, they're going to be high flyers this season in their home region. Yeah, a 3-1 victory was somewhat convincing for me too. You know, you saw that set one and I thought they played it really well. It was almost to me like they got the kill factor, the more damage. They just didn't play the objective much, but they corrected that all the way down for another three sets. 1-0 for the caster's desk. Perfect start to our year, Uber. Not my, my extensive analysis has <laughs> yielded this result. I actually foresaw it and manifested it through uh, yeah, hours and hours of research. I don't know how you come up with it. To be fair, you probably just copy me. That's fine. No worries. Let's talk about India now. Let's head across the ocean, sort of, somewhat, maybe by land, if that's the route you want to take here, and have a look at the monthly finals for this region, right? Uh, some big names here. We'll get to those here. It's Revenant Esports have been able to advance to the grand final. Getting that win over uh, Akatsuki and Saj to get there. Love the names out of India. Big thumbs up to you guys. And Grindizers on the bottom side of the ladder here going 3-0, 3-0 to get here. So we have Revenant versus Grindizers. Neither team dropping a set on their way here. And I saw one name uh, in this Revenant Esports lineup that got me really excited. It was one name that I was really hoping to get to see in Paris at the World Finals last year. That name, of course, Sergeant Clash. in 2022 with stalwart i mean this guy is an absolute stud he's gonna be the core of this team kind of leading the way and i expect really big things from revenant as a whole but grand is gonna also be insane too i think these guys are gonna have a really good opportunity to prove themselves here so this is an interesting team right this uh this, this revenant esports team before we get there of course event.brawlstars.com get your predictions in before you hear our pre-game talk and get to you know use kenny's analysis to influence the result okay do it now we're gonna wait Okay, Kenny, is it a bit weird though? I mean, this is, you know, a player like Sergeant is teaming up with, you know, a group of players that may be less proven, right? It definitely feels like there's a theme so far tonight with like veteran leadership and relatively untested rosters. What do we know about the rest of this Revenant team? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic point. I mean, you're going to see it with SEA, you're going to see it with India, and even East Asia, there's going to be a new mix of players as well kind of playing together here. Sergeant, one of the most accomplished player in tag team with a few guys that definitely still have to prove themselves, at least at that very tippy top grand finals, world caliber type players. Trashian, of course, Hero, Shafin, all going to have a little bit of experience here. Hero, of course, having his first monthly of final appearance to our knowledge, but I think these are guys that are learning their way. They've gotten a little bit of experience and hopefully with the leadership of Sergeant and his insane to crack out skills they can come away with the victory here today yeah exciting to see how this team comes together around that veteran presence let's talk predictions here kenny and again we're pretty much aligned despite the fact that both these teams advance to the grand final with lossless records 3-0 3-0 all the way for these two rosters we tend to feel like revenant esports are a cut above and we've not spent a lot of time talking about grind ices and we will get there of course we'll have a chance to welcome that team here uh uh, but again, I mean, this Revenant Esports team has like a little bit of synergy, right? I think Trashan and, and Shafin actually sort of played together in the past. So there's definitely some some action here. And for those that, you know, remember, 
Sajan was supposed to be, uh, you know, in Paris and obviously encountered some visa issues, which is sort of really common. It's one of the, the saddest parts about esports sometimes, that, that level of competition. So you've got to feel like you you didn't have, you, you earned your spot at the World Finals. You didn't have a chance to prove yourself. Now, I feel like you're going to leave it all out there and make 2023 your year. Here's your Revenant Esports roster. Sergeant, of course, Trash Out and Chef in here are your three to start us off. Yeah, like you said, they've got a little bit of chemistry going back to Sergeant joining these guys. Of course, Trishant and Shafin both played with each other for a little bit. Three of those monthly finals of Shafin's four last year with Trishant. I think this is a proven set of players. I think, you know, they've got some proving to do, like you said. Sergeant absolutely earned that spot and due to some unfortunate circumstances, couldn't quite make it. But I, I think he will try and prove and leave his legacy here in this new sub region here today. Oh, that's it. That's what I like to hear, Kenny. Way to get us pumped up for this match. Let's talk about their opponents. Grindizers here is a team that you're probably familiar with some of these names that were known as FA Sky or, or just Sky. Uh, and they've been around since like the beginning of 2021. So this team really, I mean, I, I, I now I understand why they've selected this name. And this team was really excited because when they first made a monthly final appearance back in 2021, now I know I'm a boomer, I'm, I'm throwing it back a lot here. They took <laughs> Team Flash, right? The strongest team from that region at the time, at World Finals representative to a match point in the September monthly finals uh, and, and was very, very close. They ended up losing there as well. But this is a team that consistently looked to take it to the very best here. They've got a pedigree for doing so. It's no surprise to see them number two in this region. But how do they handle this new project, this ambitious pursuit here from Revenant Esports? That's the question we're all waiting to see answered. I agree, and I think there's one really interesting dynamic here in the other team. You know, we have Sergeant coming in with two players that haven't quite hit that peak yet, but these guys have stuck together for a very long time. It's been multiple years playing together with almost an identical roster that entire time. I imagine with these sub-regions, this could be their time to shine, previously known as FA Sky, of course. They made a splash last year a little bit, 2021, like you mentioned, had a great matchup there. I think there's a lot of unproven talent, and I think we may see them tap into that today. And again, I think, you know, these two teams are the, the result of a different direction being taken this year and that we actually are breaking down our regions even more. Now there is just an India region for players from India and, and SCA and the same thing. So it means you kind of get these rosters that are a little bit more nationalized and that's a ton of fun because it means that the, the, these local scenes are producing teams, sending them out into these uh, monthly finals and eventually into the world finals here. So great. I'm really excited to have a chance to have a look at India as a region in and of itself. We're going to be starting on Bridge Too Far for Heist. Bridge Too Far, a very fun map. I'm very excited that this is kicking off our grand finals throughout the weekend. It's such an interesting map because it's Heist, but it's three individual lanes that are very focused on one-on-one -on -one matchups. As a pro player, you really can't afford to give up your lane if you want to do well. All about positioning, and of course, one issue we saw earlier is even if you get the majority of kills, it's all about the objective of the game, which of course... Now, we saw this uh, particular map come up in the previous series, of course, over in SEA, and Nani was absolutely a big pick there. Hotly contested, extremely effective at those longer ranges, has the ability to all in the enemy safe, of course, by teleporting to that peep. Eve gets through the ban phase here. What a huge pickup for Revenant. They're going to follow it up immediately with the Bonnie. <laughs> this as a tanky and sneaky pick many may see this and not love it but daryl does show up a good bit here can roll into that high safe of course with his spin shot with that gadget dishes out up to six thousand damage and can deal with those spawners fairly well needs to be careful ideally not landing against that colette now that's going to be a tricky one as colette can do quite well into the very beefy eight bit and the tanky daryl so this is going to be an interesting one here to kind of see how these matchups go up but there are definitely pluses for both sides now, Ready Set said in the previous match, he said the anti-tank meta doesn't really work out. It's kind of dead. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you think this Colette will be enough to deal with these very bulky bodies of 8-bit and Daryl here? I think it's very possible. I actually played a map similarly to this a while back with uh, NA Pro Cute Sands, and it can work out where Eve can deal really well into this. One of the perks is that she's going to be able to charge that super very well. Of course, Colette going to hard counter the Daryl here, going to do well into the 8-bit. I agree with Ready Ooh. for the most part, but in this situation, Revenant definitely going to be able to shine, and they're doing so far here. No, that's a brutal start to the match, but see how easily Shaffin can just transition between these lanes and turn all these fights into 2v1s. Time to collect for Sergeant, and he's laughing all the way to the bank here. Huge pick up there, and now pressure down on the safe. Grindizers are going to have to wake up here. They're behind the eight ball in a big way to start off, and look at that. 
Love that from Sergeant, obviously, with the knockback on that super, sending Grind Eyes back to Lumbridge. Yeah, and Trishan playing this Bonnie too, gonna be able to dive in for that assassin feature. Has a lot of HP to where Nani's gonna take a couple shots. Nice cleanup on this left-hand side. Now Shafin walking forward too, dishing out a good amount of damage, and the lead continues. They're nearing a 50% here. I mean, the whole map belongs to Shafin right now. And have a look at this. Just sitting inside that water area right now. Really hard to pressure down Trishan, and is of course able to jump in with that super and get a lot of damage up close here. For Revenant now, they've been playing with their food, but it's time to finish that main course here. 26% left on the safe for Grindizers. And they're finally able to put a scratch on Revenant's base, but it's going to take a lot more than that. Yeah, they're going to have to hold the line here for a pretty long time, but Shafin getting a pick up here. Sergeant going down to Naruto. Now it's a race up to the top. There's Eve getting some chip damage, a chip to the jump away. Going to be able to do so and avoids those shots. Picks up the kill as well. KH going down there. Shafin with a major play and only a few percentage points left to take home this first game. Yeah, absolutely brutal stuff here. Revenant really laying down the law early on in this round. I mean, why, we're surprised, why right? We see not only Eve gets through the bands, but also Grind Eyes has picked two tanks. You know, tanks at the end of the draft without having last pick. So they really leave that one open, Revenant. I know you're not banning Colette right now. I understand that. But that one was left open and it was just a slam dunk. Revenant goes, yep, I'm going to absolutely uh, snap pick this uh, Colette and cause a lot of problems for Grind Eyes. Yeah, Colette's an easy one to forget right now. It's really dangerous. You know, I know we talk about tanks being so good, but even as a fifth pick, it's oftentimes tough because if they go for a hard counter, you know, there's B out there, there's Colette out there, still solid brawlers that can do well. Trashant now diving in as well. KH trying to play a little defense here. Going to let it go as Lue going to be taking down this right-hand side sergeant now leaning up against this Naruto with the roll in, a jump away from Shafin, and it's enough. Attack team from the teammates going to help him out here. The pushback from sergeant. They're trying to hold on from this offensive finally coming in from Gradizis. A little bit more aggressive here from Grindizers. That's what we want to see. The, the Daryl roll, of course, coming forward, putting pressure down on Shafini, who's able to get away with the gadget. And still, I mean, you see Revenant take a ton of safe damage in that exchange. So Naruto realizing, wait a minute, I can keep sort of playing aggressively here. The way just trying to stand still. Uh, you're not playing Mandy, uh, so I'm not sure what that was about. But Naruto here, of course, on towards to save a lot of pressure. We know exactly what Daryl can do when he gets a moment alone with the enemy safe. It is absolutely brutal. But hey, time to collect. That's a thing. Normal and based is a uh, <laughs> sergeant just runs on in there, gets a bunch of free damage and keeps it close. Yeah, Trashan going to be in trouble here too. Naruto should be able to clean this up. Gets a little close here. Has that super in hand, too, and they're going to be looking for any offensive. But a minute left in this one, too. It could all come down to who the final push is. They're just going to abort this left-hand side. Everybody rushing oh. right. They managed to get a pickup, though. Naruto going to go down, but definitely a trade they're willing to make there. A takedown to Shafin off screen. And it's going to be a tough one here. Revenant, once again, going to be tasked with playing defense. Shafin able to use that invulnerability there to block that first shot from Luai. It's quite close, right? You really don't want to take any free damage here. Naruto, of course, has that super available. Looking to line it up here and down roll his way to victory. He's going to come straight across the lake here. But I love that from Sergeant, of course. Again, able to force Naruto away from the safe, but they're in their own half of the map. 30 seconds left. It's even on safe percent. Yeah, and every time that Colette rushes in, it's at least 10%, even more with the damage gear on. A dive in from Bonnie as well. This is where it's really going to start to add up here, but they need to be careful. Naruto can rush in at any moment. We could release that tar barrel, go for the roll in as well. And with 12 seconds to go, it's going to come down to the final moments here. Damage booster thrown up here. Naruto now is going to try and get it on the safe. It's 32% and counting. Luai trying to wrap around. Shafin just body blocking this damage. Perfect answer. Pete goes off. Sergeant stays alive. It gets a little dicey towards the end of that round, but Revenant are able to hold up under that heat and they're able to take this first set. Yeah, that was a really interesting one. For the most part, in game one, it was all Revenant, but we definitely saw some signs of life there in game two from Godaisas. I think it's really impressive stuff. Everybody kind of finding their footing right now, getting a setting for how this is going to be. After all, we're jumping into a grand finals. This is two of the best teams in this region competing super early on, but just the amount of pressure that I feel like Revenant was able to apply was really the difference maker here. Here, of course, are some of those moments from that first set now. And you can see, again, a lot of pressure with Colette, able to get free damage on this safe via the Sufa. Shafin effortlessly transitioning between these lanes, turning every one versus one into a two versus one for a time. And then Revenant snowballed that advantage across the rest of the map. It was definitely a slower start for Grind Eyes there. You saw the score, but this is a much better look for them now. And a lot of it comes from Naruto getting aggressive, Daryl rolling in, getting at least a trade, but often more than that, especially with a little bit of extra safe damage there. So could have gone either way towards the end, but it took Grindizers a little bit too long to wake up and <laughs> Sergeant Clash with the uh, 
Upwards of 300 DPS is pretty uh, impeccable Oof. here in Brawl Stars. And he's playing Colette, by the way, whose damage scales and gets weaker based on how low the enemy is. So that is uh, that is filthy. Yeah, one takeaway for me from that that very first set we saw earlier was that, you know, the kills favored the losing team. This time, though, it's very, very clear that the left-hand side was able to pick him up. Shafin with 12 kills, almost as much as the entire other team combined. That is a very impressive feat. Everybody clearly doing their part on this left-hand side, and you love to see it. Sometimes in drafts, especially on Heist, you're in an interesting spot, right? You can go for high DPS on that high safe, or you can go for a counterplay. A lot of times, teams are tasked with that very difficult decision, and in that instance, instance, Colette did a little bit of both. Really love that decision making from them. We'll see what they can do here and get creative on Ring of Fire. Nothing more interesting than seeing that last pocket pick come out and have a huge impact, right? Seeing uh, the, I guess, the maturing of a team's game plan from all the way from draft to the end of the set. That's a great way to set a tempo for the rest of this series. Let's jump straight into bands here. Meg, no surprise to see a band away here at the start of a hot zone game. They got abused heavily, of course, back in 2020 at the grand finals. And it's going to be a B locked in straight away. Another very safe, very powerful mid pick here, maybe dissuading any sort of tank strategy from Revenant. Yeah, this is a very similar approach to what we saw earlier today, and I think B is one of the safest first picks you can make right now. A very solid overall brawler, has great range, high damage, and of course can deal with the very tanky meta that we've got going on. You're going to see a lot of Grey Band tonight, but also a lot of Sam, a very strong brawler that's tanky right now. Otis is somebody I absolutely love in this meta, and this region I have noticed has a way higher play rate of Lola on this map in particular compared to other regions. No surprises for me so far. Again, Otis, really scary. You know, I mean, it's hard to think of a better duelist in this game than Otis, especially, of course, with Stencil Glue making that silence even longer. Uh, it's, it was banned heavily uh, over in Southeast Asia, or rather, uh, yeah, in the Southeast Asia region. So that's pretty big, of course. Now, Janet being picked up here, we've seen what you can do. You can get in, you can get out with that super pretty comfortably. When you want to go aggressive, you can. I, I love to see her picked up here midway through the draft. She's a solid all-rounder. It doesn't give away too much about what your, your strategy is going to be. This seems like really solid, really consistent brawler picks here from Grind Eyes. It's a great way to start up against an opponent who looks pretty, pretty scary after that first set. Yeah, and they're going for a sneaky Sprout pick here. I know it was something that didn't work out earlier today, but, you know, this is a long time kind of throwback pick. We didn't see this a ton in the draft stage. It really only works as a sixth pick because it's just so easy to counter it. But a lot of times, Thrower are going to do so well into single shot brawlers. I'm assuming this is going to be a matchup into the B. They're going to be looking to get these cheeky angles with the Sprout walls. They're going to deploy it, take, pick it back up, and really craft this map to what they want it to be. I'm really excited to see if this can work out in modern Brawl Stars. It's something that was an occasional pick way back back in late 2021 stage we'll see what they can do here yeah again the extra tankiness from photosynthesis means you can play defensively on a side lane pretty comfortably or just pressure uh down on the point and find some free damage and then obviously being able to shut down a side lane is is huge because it means you can just turn around and start focusing on the the uh, hot zone itself here so uh, yeah we've seen sprout tonight like you mentioned very different map very different sort of uh purpose i think and the Kota Ruffs getting picked here, I think, is really strong, right? Uh, being able to bounce shots off those side walls makes him a really, you know, solid side lady here. And we'll see Sergeant, yeah, playing on this right-hand side. But that early pickoff is so big. Sergeant really silencing the doubters with a lot of these clutch picks at the end of the draft so far. Yeah, and Sprout's doing a great job of just creating a little space for Trishant, a little cover being played there too, and I think this pick's also going to apply some pressure on that Colonel Ruffs, who's basically going to be forced to use the Rocket Rain. They may have been going for that anyways, but those sandbags would have been nice to prevent some shots coming in from Otis and Lola. Another wall going up there. Trishant can just dip his pinky toes into this. Now we get the freeze frame coming out too. B's going to have a tough time at dealing with all of that, shielding up and now extending the lead here. They've crossed the 40% threshold. You see the best use of that Janet Super in that case apparently was to try and all in the Sprout, which is fair enough here, but it's such a big lead for Revenant early in the round. And the Otis is deep behind enemy lines. Shafin is waiting for their opportunity just to pounce and uh, eliminate an opponent very quickly. I like Naruto spending some time trying to force this Otis away. Now KH is doing just the same thing, right? Maybe less scary in the 1v1 than Otis, but still a real nuisance there. Naruto again going for another flyby. I'm not loving this right now for Revenant. Getting spawn trapped on this map can be a lethal. It's very hard to make a comeback, especially when somebody like B is applying that pressure. Colonel Ruffs now powered up on that right-hand side over time. is only going to help his teammates, and all three members of that red roster are certainly powered up. And now Trishant applying a little more pressure here. A good couple shots, but he's going to be ushered away very quickly. A trade going down here. 2v2 situation. Still a lead now for Grind Eyes. It's after that brief sort of spawn camp scenario. 
Shafin versus Naruto has been quite the matchup so far, but the Janet's been getting the better of the Otis thus far. Naruto wants to try and pressure here, maybe a bit of information. Trishan, again, struggling to try and match Lai's range here. Instead, looking to try and put some damage down on the Colonel Ruffs. Finally, the bees out of the picture. Finally, a chance here for Revenant to stabilize. And they have to hold on for dear life. Only 12%. The gap between these two teams right now as KH going to be approaching a quick takedown on to B there. This is the opportunity they need, though. A sprout wall would certainly help them out to try and get a cutoff. They want to create this map and shape it the way that they want. Three brawlers now scanning for GD. And it's going to be a toughie here as Janet takes to the skies. Yeah, it's a mute on the B. That's so huge. The fight goes down. Janet's in the air. The B is muted. So there's nothing <laughs> Grindizers can really do to get pressure, to get position. What a huge exchange at the end of that round. And Rev and recover from a slow start. I mean, my God, much more competitive round there, I've got to say, from Revan, but uh, it looked dicey at a few points for them. Absolutely. I mean, it goes without saying, this is a risky draft from them, a very interesting strategy and something that when doing scouting reports and scrims and watching past competitions, you don't see Sprout a lot here, but they're making it work really well. I love this concept of dropping the Sprout wall, not even to cut off the enemy, just to drop it on the hot zone when you're standing on it. They're able to get those tiny little gaps in there to put their toe on it. After all, kills are great in this mode, but it's all about owning that hot zone. And right now it's going to be easy though for them as they've got two deaths already. It's just KH standing as he can try to hold positioning for his teammates and even if the bee uses the wall to set up a honey molasses like there's no all in really unless janet is actually able to push up here love that from shafin able to stay alive there and crucially for trishan able to find that pick off on the bee naruto overextends their sergeant does a great job of fighting a pretty rough matchup yeah and sergeant is just doing an expert job oh. here on the sprout <laughs> Once again, cutting off the walls too, but a little bunny hop over here. Naruto trying to do something about it. Now going to be in the air, doing a little bit of pressure applying for this team. It's a huge deficit that they're facing, but again, we saw it in the last game as well. Once you get spawn trapped here, if you can stand there, hold the line long enough, anything is possible to make a comeback on this map. And you have to think that's why Shafin there just tried to, you know, instead of going for a trade, they just backed the way into the grass. They didn't want to give up. Uh, you know, control of their side of the map here. So here's that interaction I was talking about, right? Wall goes down, Hunter Molasses gets used, but it just gets picked off instantly by Sergeant, who of course can circumvent his own hedge uh, with his shots able to go over the top there. So nice little interaction there. Sergeant obviously looking for uh, another hedge pretty soon because the way looking a little bit scary now. Another Honey Molasses thrown down just to block some of those shots coming in. Trishan's got a great opportunity to pressure the B down and Luay just stays alive. Yeah, barely staying up, and it's going to make a difference, too. It's going to allow them to keep staying on this. Here comes the freeze frame as well. It's going to back B and Colonel Ruffs up. Sergeant low HP going to be able to recover as a result, and Shafin right back in action where he left off. Here comes Naruto. Lift off, trying to pressure Sergeant down yet again, circling him like a buzzard to pressure him down. Great use, though, of the hedge at just the right time. Sergeant puts a wall between himself and, of course, that Janet who was looking to descend. And now we're in the danger zone for Revenant. No chance to come and touch here. Trishant will finish the job for Revenant. And that'll be two sets to zero like that. Blink and you miss it. Competitive second round, or at least uh, the first map there was. But again, uh, it was Revenant really settling into the tempo there and never gave up their lead in round two. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Revenant. One, they're playing fantastic. And, you know, the draft is one thing. Sometimes you get a little high risk, high reward type plays, but they're executing these pretty interesting ideas really well. Again, I thought the Sprout gameplay was on point. It was something that was a huge difference maker, a clear get for them. And I love that as a sixth pick. It's something I definitely would not have expected or predicted in that spot. I think they did an excellent job and I'm really excited what they can do here. You know, now we're in a 2-0 situation. It's getting a little out of hand here, but still it's a grand finals caliber team. I expect that they they have the capabilities of trying to make a comeback. So much of our storyline has been about how teams build around a veteran player, someone who's experienced the highest levels of competition. And what I love about Revenant's drafting strategy is that the identity of their team is defined by that last pick that Sergeant Clash makes. You take really consistent, solid middle mid-range or sharpshooter brawlers here. Of course, you've got the Otis, you've got the LOL, just great in any situation. And then you throw a little bit of spice in there, right? Sergeant gets to play something that has a lot of skill expression, maybe it's unexpected, but has an opportunity to take his opponents by surprise. And man, Grindizers were definitely caught off guard by this Sprout play. Sergeant really clutching quite a few moments there, deploying that super, deploying the hedge to, you know, keep the Janet off him. And as we know, that's like not a that's not a favorable matchup for the Sprout in many cases. But look at this, Sergeant. 
259 DPS. Trishan, of course, really crucial at like finishing off a lot of those kills. 15 eliminations is huge. Very nice showing for Revenant here. They really are setting the pace in this series. Again, this is a perfect instance of Revenant, just each of them doing it their own roles here. You know, Shafin's number is not as flashy as somebody like Trishance, but this is multiple sets now where Sergeant looks like on paper he only has five kills. But without a doubt, he made a major impact. Trishant there to clean up high DPS, able to do so much work for his teammates. And he almost had as many kills as the other team. Again, that's two sets in a row we've seen that happen. Super impressive stuff here from Revenant. We'll have to see if they can make a comeback here in Canal Grande. This is a crazy match map so many different brawler options and like ready said earlier it's gonna be a storyline i expect this whole weekend it's a tank world and we are all living in it i'm curious to see if they bring any here right i mean yeah last time around we saw like ems and carl thrown in the mix here both teams looking to we're all fairly close they do bring a poco in at some point there the screeching solo pretty hard to avoid on this kind of map and it's like a huge swing right the healing plus the damage uh it's quite scary yeah straight away revenant like hey listen uh we, I, I don't know what you guys are expecting, but we're going to lock this Poco down. Who gets through the bands crazily enough here. So Brock the Sharpshooter picked up already. Grindizers is giving us an idea of what they're going to go for with this composition. And Penny only reinforces this longer range kind of approach. Yeah, you zig, I zag. I mean, this is complete opposites here. We go with Poco, who's a very stable, tanky brawler. Once again, we're going to get to see that paired with the Carl. The only thing missing here is the stew from last time, and we'll have a mirror matchup pick on this left side at least. But Brock, Penny, going to try and extend the range here. I imagine this Brock's going to be looking to possibly break down walls. If not, he can, of course, jump across this canal too. There's a few ways that you can play this, especially against an aggressive brawler like Carl. I wouldn't really blame them for running the alternate gadget. Eve, of course, going to be another method to travel across this map. It's unique in the sense that there's this canal in the middle, of course, where the name stems from. But Eve and Carl, of course, two of the only brawlers that can actually manage to get across that at a moment's notice. It's something that Brock might be able to do, but Penny, of course, and many other brawlers aren't going to have that option. They're going to be trapped on one side or the other. But again, if, if Trishan gets like a solo lane, maybe they play the left hand side of the map and it's like two, you know, two, it's like a one, two setup, right? If Trishan's opponent doesn't come out and fight them, he can just go to the right side of the map and make it a three versus two. Like, this is why Eva's been so strong in this series so far, right? Bridge Too Far, great example of that. Is if, it, if you don't demand the Eve's attention, just leave. Just go somewhere else. And, and again, create a numbers advantage for your team over there, which is already going to be scary because the Poco and the Carl are so durable here. And we see the Colette picked up here. Now, I am curious about this because, yeah, there's a lot of healing here, right? But, uh, you know, Carl is tanky, protective hero as well. Like, make no mistake, but... How do you feel about the Colette now coming out here in a situation where you don't have a super that gives you free safe damage in like a heist game mode and your opponents aren't that tanky, right? Yeah, it's it's not that frequent that you see Colette, but it is a hard counter into the Carl. Traditionally, this is going to be one of the better ways to deal with him. Surge, another one that historically shows up with this map, also does that. But Colette doesn't show up a lot here. It's going to work so far, though. There's the wall break Oof. gadget, too, that we were waiting to see. Naruto popping off there for his teammates, and now they establish this penny turret. They are going to be able to do a lot of work here. Picking up another kill on this right-hand side. There's that Colette-Carl matchup we were looking for. There's going to be a huge comeback here for Revan if they want a chance. And this is a da disastrous start here right now for Revenant. It's gone all wrong. The rocket fuel blowing open the left-hand side of the map just lends itself, I think, to the long-range play style that Grindizers want to go for. Revenant cannot match them in that regard. And now having the Eve that can, yeah, again, can traverse these bodies of water is great, but she is outranged in this middle part of the map, and there's not really any cover for her here. <sighs> Yeah, and additionally, it's just going to take a lot here for Poco. I mean, he does have the screeching here, maybe. And it's going to be a takedown there. 6 to 13, still a lot to come back from in the meantime. It looks like he is actually running the heals. Very interesting choice here is Eve, of course, not being somebody with a lot of HP. Carl on the a bulkier side, like you mentioned earlier, too. I don't know. This is just such an interesting dynamic that we've got going. A nice connection there from KH, though. The lead continues. Sergeant trying to make something of it. Now a super going in as well. There's one pickup. This lead only five stars now, but Sergeant going to be trapped on this side. Is he willing to go down here? Somehow he's staying up, tries to get out, but a nice pick up there. Four stars being the difference now. I mean, the fact that Sergeant gets a trade on that final elimination is absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, you know, an effective value of plus one elimination there and all the stars that come with that is big. Four stars now separate these teams and now the net starts to close. Trishan has to use that super to keep Sergeant standing, but it works out. Revenant want to put some pressure down, but they still have to cross these wide sight lines that favors KH and Co. And there it is again. Time to collect comes in and Sergeant is at arm's length. Push it going to be used to get him out of the way. And grind dices have a pretty nasty composition. Revenant are going to have to do a little bit more than just uh, running it back to get the better of them here.
Yeah, definitely got to have a better star here. One of the advantages, especially with having Carl, is you should be able to just dive for that blue star instantly, throw out that flying hook gadget. And that's a big appeal for why Carl shows up so much here. And, you know, another thing is, too, when he's got all these walls to maneuver around, get those quick shots in and out. Of course, it, it treats it like a boomerang, right? Comes forward, then it comes immediately back. And when Sergeant doesn't have as many walls, well, it's it's a little bit harder to do that. He's going to have to find situations where he can get up close and personal with that Brock, a very squishy brawler. That's where Carl shines the most. Naruto there getting a bit of a licking from Sergeant, and there it is. Great shots here from Sergeant Clash. Now able to really stamp his authority on this middle part of the map. And Shafin, I mean, getting that kill on KH is absolutely huge, really. Mostly intended more to be a nuisance than anything else. Now Shafin able to just deploy the super at the back part of the map and start to take some more space. Naruto is in trouble again. Oof. This is that collapse that we talked about. Revenant, I, I guess it was enough to just run it back. Yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit of a reroll here. Complete opposite of what we saw in game number one. There's the first pickup for him, though. Naruto taking down Trishant here. Sergeant Shafin, each with four stars as well. A couple pickups. This could turn around, but they're going to need to really start moving up this map. Try and get into a spawn trap situation, especially on Canal Grande. That's where things get really difficult. Of course, Eve and Carl, like we mentioned in the draft, have options to kind of deal with this. This is a map where there's really no traditional mid. It's kind of either left or right-hand side, but in this case, they can be a little more unique. Okay, nice gadget use there from Shafin. He has the blue star, and it would just make things a little bit closer if they'd uh, gone down there. So nice turnaround here, Trishant. Yes, able to go towards the way. A bit of an overextension by Grindeyes. It's sort of chance to get back into the game. That door's been shut on them now. 34 seconds left in the round. Sergeant wants to try and push up, but he's holding six valuable stars here. But it doesn't matter. Shafin and Sergeant, they collapse the pincer onto Naruto. Luai takes a ton of damage as well from the Poco. Deceptively nasty when those shots start connecting. And Sergeant's ready for another dive in. Here it comes. The tailspin, but it's going to be counted. 21 to 8, 15 seconds to go, and I don't even know if mathematically they can make the comeback here. Naruto with a super, Trashant moving it back, Shafin with plenty of stars to work with, and I don't think it's going to matter too much. We're going to have a match point incoming here, Revenant Esports, with an opportunity to take this one home. So what's the biggest difference there uh, for Revenant, of course, in the way they, obviously the round starts better for them, but can you tell us like a, what adaptation they make to get such a different result here in that second round? Look, Canal Grande, as much as it is about getting all these kills, the start is what really matters. Sergeant, interestingly enough, going to dive to this right-hand side. Once you give up control, it's all about positioning on this map. And if they go up early in terms of numbers, it's really nice for them because they can just kind of hold the line. But in this case, they're actually forced back a little bit. 2-1, first pickup of a kill going to that red side. And again, map control is a huge factor here. You want to get the kills, but it's sometimes all about that timing too. Salty Barrel coming down a little bit too late for the wide there. The collapse from Sergeant was maybe a little telegraph, but there was not enough time for the Penny to get away. They pushed her right into the end of the map, and this is scary now for Grindizers. They've been corralled into this right-hand corner. Naruto barely hanging on here. Super from Trishant. Luai, yep, going to go down. Turret deployed, and that's going to get picked off instantly. Revenant with a six-star lead here. Yeah, and it's going to be a toughie as well. There's the rocket rain coming down from the skies from Brock. All three brawlers sitting on this right-hand lane right now. Sergeant needs to be careful. Colette's not an easy matchup oh, for him. He does have the super, and there's the shield to help him out too, but a pushback. Sergeant clutches up the kill, and now Trishant coming into the rescue, trying to get Sergeant out of this situation. A gadget through from both Trishant and Sergeant. Going to keep him plenty healthy here. A super being rotated in as well. Beautiful stuff coming in here from Revenant, but a nice connection as well. Trades on both sides. 12-5 with less than a minute to go. Yeah, enough of a lead here for Revenant, though, to sit back. Maybe give up a little bit of map control. Trishan cut off for the rest of their teammates for the time being here. And Sergeant's going deep. Five stars on this. Uh, oh, I love that from Carl. He's almost preemptive. The tailspin there knew that at some point Collect would come and try to collect. And he's able to pick her off as she does. Yeah, I mean, Trishan goes down there, but only holding two stars. Not a big deal. It is a huge lead right now. Sergeant, of course, with seven to his name. She's in with a blue star here. And almost no options for Grind Eyes. Yeah, it's 16 to 10, though. There's still a little hope, but they have to get to Sergeant. Final moments here. It's going to be tested. Four stars being the difference maker. A kill onto Sergeant will do the trick. He's going to be weak here. Close call, but going to end up staying alive. Trishant clutching the kill. And of course, this team claiming the first grand finals of this new sub region. Congratulations to Revenant. Three to zero. They didn't drop a single set this entire bracket. 
again, a uh, series that definitely had its moments of competition, right? Grind Eyes just get, got off the starters block a little bit too slow. The first set wasn't great. The second set, they're starting to adapt. They're starting to wake up. Before they realize it, they're looking down the wrong end of match point here. Revenant started strong and they finished in the same way. And again, these compositions, these picks are, are a lot of fun here. Uh, you know, Sergeant again, once more being the centerpiece, being the initiator, being the one who sets the tempo for the rest of his teams and they follow him really effectively. The real clutch moments there, the interaction, of course, between the Colette and the Carl in many occasions can feel a little volatile, right? Like who's going to actually get the kill? She's using super, he's using super at the same time. They both have some degree of shielding from that as well. Uh, always exciting to watch it. But again, Sergeant with a, another fantastic map, a great showing, a very well-deserved victory here for this Revenant side. Yeah, and this time it's Sergeant leading the way in kills too, but I think all three of these guys have their shining moment. I know Sergeant was kind of the veteran leader that we expected to emerge here and be such a strong player. Again, I think he's arguably a top five, maybe the best player in this region based on what we saw last year in the competitions. He's so good, and Trishant and Shafin clearly fit right in. I think this is a region that they could do really well in. Clearly today with a 3-0 victory, they are making a statement. I'm excited to see how they can progress throughout the year. I mean, it feels like Revenant already uh, got a pretty significant lead over the rest of this region, right? Both of these squads go 3-0 and zero all the way through until this grand final, and Revenant goes with a unbeaten streak. Not one set dropped over the course of their run here to the monthly final. It's a strong statement to make. You also set the bar very high for the rest of your region, but now India has their own region, right? A chance for there to be talent uh, fostered, you know, locally here. And that's a big deal. Let's talk MVP here as well. Uh, no, no prizes, I think, for guessing here. We'll, uh, we'll see Sergeant Clash, of course, being awarded MVP. And why not? I mean, the whole team, it feels like it, it, it rests on him in a big way. Trishan has been an excellent player over the course of this series. Really enjoyed watching his Lola play uh, on Hot Zone. I think there's just tons of talent on this Revenant team. Yeah, I'm super impressed. They made a great show for us today. It's good to be back. And I mean, that was such a fun one to watch. And I think, you know, MVP votes very deservingly so for any of the three. But Sergeant comes to mind playing that Carl, a very important role, has to be picking up kills for his team or else the combo is just not going to work. Playing that Sprout to perfection on Ring of Fire, a very tough one to do, I might add. And he looked awesome doing it. I think really impressive stuff. And this could be an MVP caliber player for the region this year based on what we saw here today. Southeast Asia is already shaping up to be an impressive region on virtue of some of these teams coming out of the sub-regions in Southeast Asia. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the road ahead, I think, for, for this region and, of course, in general, because, you know, Revenant are eyeing off the real prize, the big prize for them here. Of course, in India, uh, they, uh, you know, they're competing with the rest of these teams for these circuit points on the leaderboard. Now, of course, a win here in the monthly finals, that actually puts them in first place. So, yeah, swap it there. It is love to see that. 106 points there for Revenant. Uh, it's worth pointing out that this sub-region, India, doesn't have a guaranteed slot at the World Final. So this region, uh, you know, will, they will filter into a last chance qualifier. So it's a long road for this region to prove themselves. And of course, for Sargent to give himself another chance to represent on the world stage. But hey, can't argue with this start. This is exactly what Revenant wanted when they set off on their campaign this year in the BSC. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a journey to watch. I'm really excited to who emerges from India. It's one of the most fun regions to watch. And of course, the fans at home are very passionate about the games and the players representing them as they should. They put on a great show here today, and I think they could do some good stuff this year. And I can't wait to see who comes out for LCQ. I think that's such a fun feature and a really cool, interesting way to introduce some new talent here this year. Absolutely. The amount of teams, the hunger, of course, in that tournament is going to be fun to watch. It's time now to head to the Mount Olympus of Brawl Esports. That's right. It's going to be East Asia where the Titans still reign. Stick around for that one after the break. We're going to get both semis and the grand final in that region. It's going to be a banger. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first monthly final of the Brawl Stars Championship for the Southeast Asia region. You don't want to miss a second. time.
it has all been coming down to this. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with action. Oh, oh my word! What an incredible moment! We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with passion. Time short, no time for relaxing. Be the first and last out, make it happen. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with passion. Time short, no time for Without further ado, let's get rolling! Welcome back, Brawl Stars Nation. It's time to kick off where the monarchy of last year began. East Asia, a force to be reckoned with. Our world champions reside here, and I expect big things from them, Ready? I absolutely do as well. I mean, look, this has been the past two years, the home of the World Finals champions. And coming into today, we've seen some roster swaps, some mix-ups and things, and honestly, could be for the better, but I still anticipate we see this year's World Finals champions come from this region. So study up, everyone. Pay attention. Sit back and enjoy the class. Yeah, it's been a super interesting one to watch as well. This is going to be a very fun region. I think a big year for a lot of these as world champions have kind of disseminated. They're all a part of different teams. I think it's going to be a real opportunity for them to prove themselves and show exactly what they're made of. East Asia, of course, going to be a world champion winner, like you mentioned last year. A lot of insanely talented player. And, you know, in the NBA, we debate MJ and LeBron. In this region, it's Ten Science at Tampo Talk. And right here, we're going to get a look at our bracket. Some very interesting stuff coming into today. This is true. Crazy Raccoon features, well, the two players you mentioned joining forces. So how will this affect Shtetampo's legacy is, I'm sure, the question everyone's asking as they scratch their heads. They will be facing OK in the first semifinal of the day. Next up, it's Guts versus Chazmat Gaming EA. And the winners of those two matches will go head to head in the grand finals. Keep in mind, everyone, we're starting off the semifinals here. All the score finals, they were played on the same day as the monthly qualifiers. So we're hopping into really the paramount matches of this region. Yeah, we get in straight to the action with semifinals. I think they're going to be very heated ones as well. All of these world champions, like we mentioned, disseminated, all going about their separate ways, trying to prove themselves, maybe with some new teammates as well. And of course, many may be wondering, where the heck is Zeta Division? Last year, we had two teams. This year, we have none. Well, of course, those players are going to be scattered across all of these semifinals teams, as a matter of fact. I'm very excited to see what they can do with some different combinations. Absolutely. Same perspective here. I'm... All my eyes are, well, both, all two of them are on Crazy Raccoon. And I think this is really the super team, of course. That's my prediction headed into this year of BSC. I'll make my call early. I'll make it now. And we'll see how that matures over the course of the year. And it looks like both of you guys, Uber and Kenny, are on the same train as me, all supporting Crazy Raccoon for that very first matchup. The second semifinal, Uber and I were signed with CMG. But you, Kenny, you're going with guts here. Yeah, I feel pretty confident in this first one. I will say, I think Crazy Raccoon, for a lot of people out there, should be the heavy favorites to come out of this region and also be a world's contender. And I know it's very early on. Anything can happen, but these guys have such a legacy that they've left in Brawl Stars. That semifinal two, though, I'm not feeling as confident. I'm a little shaky on that. I think CMG EA, of course, have some insane talent as well. I know this is the first time where we kind of divvy as a caster desk, but really with semifinal two, I think the audience at home can go either way. I completely agree here. I mean, for a large majority of the audience, you kind of have all of the Tensai supporters, all the Shitampo supporters concentrated on one team that's Crazy Raccoon. But if we talk Guts and Chazmak, I mean, Chazmak in particular has two uh, different members from two different teams last year now joining forces, of course. That's Kenji and Kuru joining up there. Guts, that's a choppy, and the two players at his side that did pretty well last year, but didn't quite make it to the World Finals. Of course, we'll put a pin in that one for now because, of course, we're probably getting ready for our very first semifinal. Gotta think. It's going to be a super fun one to watch, too, to see these new teammates play together. And of course, if you want to cast your vote at home, participate in this awesome stream that they put together for us, event.brawlstars.com. I know Reddy is a very, very, very much loving collecting all these pins, all these sprays. He's a collector at heart. It's who he is. And of course, myself, Uber, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We've already put our predictions. Copy us if you want or don't. I don't blame you either way. I've definitely been wrong before. But this semifinal number one, going to be a fun one. I think it's safe to say Crazy Raccoon are going to be the favorites but look okay has some great talent here ready absolutely i mean if we talk okay right here that's milk rio and dimsy that's the dynamic duo of this team and then we also have 
Suzuku, right? This is formerly Blaze, if you're familiar with that name instead. And Suzuku has had a good number of monthly finals appearances in 2022. Four, in fact, which is a great record. But besides that, uh, not a world finals appearance like Dimsy or Milk Rio. So this is now sort of the X Factor joining up forces with Dimsy and Milk Rio. Dimsy and Milk Rio, uh, I've said their names three times respectively already. They need no introduction. World finalists uh, on Queen Nye in the case of Dimsy. In the case of Milk Rio, that's Animal Chan Peru and Jupiter back in 2019 and 2020. Definitely a while ago, but I'm all here for the return arc. Absolutely. I mean, some good chemistry coming in from these guys, of course, with the Tara Chan Club. They had a lot of success last year. And look, it's hard for any team to have as much success as some of their opponents have had from last year. Crazy Raccoon has some amazing talent. Again, like I said, they have some of what could be argued as the GOATs of Brawl Stars, Tensai, Satampo. Their legacy on this game is insane. Two of the best mechanical, if not the best in the world. It's one of the reasons I love watching this region so much. But somebody that doesn't get talked about enough, Moya Goku. There are tons of players out there. I've had multiple conversations different regions as well that absolutely love this player they think this team is going to be insane this year and i totally understand why hey for me focal point of zeta division zero had to be tensai and then of course at his side you have uh, shetampo and moya goku two teammates on zeta division one last year forming a great duo themselves now you put these two together what do you get i can't quite say with certainty because for a time we'd seen these players play together on a free agents roster called barcelona and just a few days ago it was announced that they were playing for crazy raccoon so we've seen a bit of them playing in third party tournaments now it's time to bring it in for the big stage the bsc at their debut right here and now in the very first semi-final for the east asia region yeah, Tensai, of course, proving a lot of people wrong last year, including myself. I picked Zeta 1 to win that world final. I think after taking the edge 4-3 to three in monthly finals, we just kind of expected the safe pick to be Zeta 1, but Zeta 0 and Tensai really proved them otherwise. I think it's an awesome thing to see. Of course, Satampo, an insane mechanical player, a, a world finalist champion, and also a semi-final, or excuse me, runner-up last year as well. Moya Goku, the same. I mean, this is a nasty combination. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how they do here, and I will say from the scrim scouting report that I've done on all of these teams, they've been pretty darn dominant. It's hard to beat these guys on any given day, but of course, they're a professional team after all. They have some good experience and you never know what's going to happen in the monthly finals. No doubt. And part of me also wonders, you know, you have kind of two main characters on the same team. You have Shetampo, you have uh, Tensai as well. Do they butt heads at all? Do we ever see any kind of uh, disjointed teamwork between them? Because no doubt everyone's eyes are going to be on this team as they're coming in as a supreme front runner in this region. So we'll just have to wait and see if they're not the absolute dream team that everyone has been hoping for. Of course, their team across or their enemies across the way. OK, they also comprise a pretty nasty combination themselves. Will they be an appropriate match for Crazy Raccoon is a question of the day, but it seems like a lot of you have answered Crazy Raccoon 80% as a vast majority going with Crazy Raccoon for the victory in this one. Yeah, I think that's a great point you bring up is OK is still a very talented roster. It's a new year, a new slate as great as these guys have been in the past. It's not 2022. It's not 2021 anymore. It's a brand new year, which means we get to crown a brand new champion in this sub region as well. You look, anything can happen. 80 to 20 percent. I get it. They should be the favorites on paper. They look great. They've had insane accolades in the past, but I definitely don't want to rule everything out here. OK, locking that pick in instantly. It's going to be max and this region is very known for this brawler absolutely and if i were to point fingers at one uh player in particular it would have to be tensai with that brawler and okay sniping up that brawler already sure characteristic of this region as a whole but also of yeah let's not give tensai the max lightning fast draft here by the way but it seems like okay are going to take their time with the final one spike now their selection let's talk about some of these picks so far we've seen ms a little bit so far today just a good brawler overall especially on lanes on this map colonel refs also Gonna be able to break open some of those lanes, some of those walls, and also give supply drops to his teammates. Final pick now coming in from Crazy Raccoon. It really could be anything, but it's all about counters. Poco, not necessarily sure what he's going to be countering out here, but he's still a good brawler overall. 
yeah this may be their mid to be honest with you they had to look for something here if you go with the more of that sharpshooter route max of course gonna be able to dodge that if you go tank you've got spike for high dps otis as well so i think this is more of just a safe pick and again this is a region that's really known for playing the m's a lot more as well it's something i noticed when doing the scouting report on all these teams compared to our home of na m's gets played way more over here as well a lot more of a diverse brawler pool and it's so fun to kind of watch how all these different regions bring their own flair to it i know apex certainly brings that especially east asia has some really interesting brawlers throughout all of these maps that i've seen I completely agree. I mean, we've seen a lot more spike than we do in other regions so far, and we'll see just how well it works for Milkry on the right side. Already some decent damage in here. Shetampo getting taken down the right lane. Tensai also getting pinched in a three-man, one versus three. Crazy Raccoon now really on the back foot. They're all the way back in their spawn. Suzuku especially now lit up here with four, counting on five gems. With the speed ready to go as well at a moment's notice, he's going to have to be cautious. If he pushes in a Tensai too hard, he can end up feeding a Super Moy Goku and Tensai now combining forces on the left side, trying to pinch in Suzuku. No luck so far. Milkrio also finding some good value on the right side. He's having to retreat into these bushes, according to Shetampo now pushing in. Almost a kill on Shetampo on the right side. A good Elin, but now Tensai is picking up the pieces on the back lines. Yeah, I just love this composition and matchup for OK. Crazy Raccoon may have all the mechanics, but Draft's important too. They're going to be vastly outranged here. Spike, a fantastic lane option against Ims as long as Mokreo keeps his distance. Suzuku already with eight gems in his hand as well. Tensai finally claiming a piece of this mid-ground, but Dempsey, Suzuku moving up this map. One more gem, and they'll have a countdown. Crazy Raccoon really has no room for error, and it looks like OK are making a lot of room for themselves. Suzuku especially now looking for that 10th gem. He's on very low health, even forced to use a phase shifter to get away. Milkrio now going get the free right lane and getting some good success so far. Use of the gadget as well from Tensai to get himself out of that super. Suzuku really just needs this 10th gym. Shetampo's not going to let him have it, though. Moya silenced on the left side, and Dempsey manages to get away scot-free. Never mind, Tensai with the elimination, but it's a full team wipe by OK, and they're running it back with the countdown. Now they're just going to hold for a little bit longer, 13 seconds to go, and it's going to be left to CR to push up all the way the length of this map. Satampo doesn't have the range to contend, though, and now the max speed coming through, a little pop of that energy drink, a phase shift away for fun, and at this point, it's okay looking more than just okay. They played phenomenally in that first game. They absolutely did, and I think we need to give a lot of credit to OK here. It's not just Crazy Raccoon maybe not having the greatest start. It's not Crazy Raccoon uh, having a sluggish start. This is OK playing really, really well on every single matchup. But will we see Crazy Raccoon take a different approach this time? Looks like the lane swap is coming in. Shetampo now taking the right lane. Dempsey also taking the right lane instead. A good prediction on the side of OK managing to get some ideal matchups, but Shetampo is able to move through on the right side. Milk Rio and Suzuku focusing down on the left. Moya trying to keep them at a distance. Great kill from long range by Moya Goku and Crazy Raccoon had that beginning control over mid. This is the start that Crazy Raccoon needed too. I mean, you have to be able to stand your footing here and hold this mid area. Otherwise, with all the range that this other ha team has, it's not like they have some sharp shooters, but of course, Otis Spike gonna have more range than somebody say like Poco or M's. The bounce shot from Moya Goku, sure, but sometimes it's not enough. Now a little aggression coming in as well. Tensai staying plenty healthy though. He's got the heels from his guitar and right now he's do the beat of his own drum. Plenty to work with here. Back up to that 6K health and plenty of gems in his hand. It's like night and day between game one and game number two. Crazy Raccoon are leading with a vast majority. Shetampo, especially on the right side with a takedown onto Dimzi. And on the left side, Moya Goku trying to offer a supply drop to Tensai. Good destruction on the back lines. And Tensai gets to pick up that final gem to run it back. Two supply drops. In fact, three supply drops down as Shetampo has one as well. He looks to slow things down on the right. Dimzi doing his best, but he can't land a super if he doesn't have line of sight. Just five seconds left and simply not enough mobility. Suzuku certainly doesn't have a super. And Crazy Raccoon are going to be running away with a victory here. Only one gem on the other side in the end of the game. Yeah, they really did just walk away with that one. A complete reflection from what we saw in game number one. I think it's really all about this start here. If you lose your footing early, it's going to be very difficult to make a comeback here. Spawn Trap is a very real situation here. I talked about it earlier in Canal Grande, but also applies on a lot of maps, especially at a pro level. If they're in a good stance, they can really apply some pressure, get those kills, and it's very difficult to climb out of that situation. Winning the lane early, especially for Satampo's side, I believe was the first one in that last game. A huge deal, especially considering that Dempsey has that extra range.
Well, you want to talk early game. Looks like Suzuku's gotten the most profit. Dimzy also, he landed the fat splatter immediately upon rotating over that right lane. It's already looking quite successful. Speed for Suzuku. Shetampo keeping him at bay, but Dimzy manages to grab the upper hand. Another fat splatter down and Tensai's forced away, but with Milkrio down, it's really just an even matchup. But not anymore. Shetampo once again approaches the right side. Dimzy and Suzuku are keeping him away. They have surrendered that mid control along the way. Milkrio, especially now, kept towards that middle lane. Moya Goku really gets to reign supreme on the left side. As long as he can keep Milkrio at range, he'll be able to easily dodge out some of those curveballs and get another super, which he'll go for on the ten side most likely. Shitdamp on the right side could get pushed really hard. This is on low health. Suzuku pops a speed, grabs a couple of gems, and okay, remain in the lead. This has been such an even matchup, but now a real opportunity here for Crazy Raccoon. There's the spawn Ooh. trap we were talking about, a takedown on the max as well. The biggest one of this game so far, Moya Goku applying that pressure. Satampo playing these angles so well, a big wow. pick up on the right-hand side. Tensai going to hold on to all these gyms and a super as well. Dominant lead now for Crazy Raccoon. Have to applaud the footwork by Shetampo on the right side. And even when he got kind of close to death, Tensai's ready with a heal. Suzuku, Demzi, Milkrio, the whole nine yards are all the way backed up. And Suzuku tries to break the mold, push forward, but he's immediately punished. And now Tensai only needs one more gym. Shetampo still is hanging on, but he does get taken down. Another gadget forward. Moya Goku's here to lay down the law. However, Demzi has a super that he can use to silence up Tensai, but it's only going to be a minute way of moving up. And they have so much distance. Crazy Raccoon all the way backed up in the corner. And only Milk Rio and Suzuku to stir things up. Some spins out here. No pins in the air just yet. But it is a victory for Crazy Raccoon as they finish off set number one. I will say, okay, with an absolute insane performance there, too. It's always wild to me how in Brawl Stars, and it's one of the things I love most about it, we get the same composition, the same map, and the same team, three straight games, and all were completely differently played out. It's insane. I mean, Team 1 comes away with a nice victory, Team 2 comes away with a nice victory, and then it's just this back-and-forth affair until finally Crazy Raccoon were able to push them back, claim that mid-area, and hold on to all those gyms. I liked it. Again, I I'll say it again. It wasn't my favorite draft from them, but... But again, their mechanics are so good. They played it well in the footwork, like you said, from Satampo to claim that lane on the right-hand side multiple times. Difficult for anybody in the world to overcome. Pretty much. And if we want to talk footwork here, I mean, I think that's really just Shitampo having really great dodges and good jukes as well. Because if you roll back the clock and watch Dimzy on this lane, you see Shitampo is just bobbing and weaving in. He's dodging a lot of damage, and that's able to give him the upper hand. Suzuku also at mid was doing quite a good job on the max, but Tensai was able to overwhelm him in the end, especially when he didn't have anyone on that right lane to help him with. If you're able to consistently diff a lane, then your team is practically always fighting a 3v2. It's a great advantage to have and so much is owed to every single member of the Crazy Raccoon roster. However, we did see some good plays here and there by OK, especially if we talked the first game. It was a little unexpected to see them take that first game, especially versus a team like Crazy Raccoon, but I'm all here for it, especially when a lot of people here, at least 80% at least, think that this is a Crazy Raccoon victory. Yeah, I mean, I understand why, too. They've got such named players and accomplished players on their side. And Moya Goku may have gone a little bit under the radar <laughs> to me. Did not realize he had 12 kills there. I mean, I know he's an insane player, but that's a lot of pickups there. More and equal, excuse me, equal to the entire other team. That's a crazy feat in it itself. It absolutely is. I mean, of course, Colonel Ruffs is a mainstay in this region, and sometimes it's just not what you have your eyes on. But in hindsight, I absolutely should have been paying a little bit more attention to the Colonel Ruffs, doing such a good job of using the wall to bounce those projectiles just a little bit further and get a range advantage. That plus the sandbags, just a massive asset to have at your side. Will we see him on pit stop? I'd say there's a possibility and some other brawlers that we've seen already could be making appearances but pit stop in particular one of the first brawlers that comes to mind for me is nita and she's not banned out and here she's the first pick i love it already i uh, i love crazy raccoon and their approach to this it's not just because they're playing nita yeah, we got a little bit of a hint there that the penny was coming in. You can see a sparkle of her hair. And now the bull going in as well. This is a really interesting one to play out. Again, this is going to be pit stop here. Nita can do really well into bull. So picking bull directly into Nita, she's got Bruce the bear to assist her. So for a shotgun brawler that can only focus one person at a time, really, that's going to be a difficult matchup to overcome. Not to mention the amount of damage that Nita and her Bruce the bear can do on that high safe. Well, here comes the Carl as well. And yes, let's talk Nita for a little bit longer because look at what Crazy Raccoon have banned out. They've gotten rid of BB, 
Primo and Buzz. Now, we've seen OK already go for the bull. That's just one tank that's good on this map that has not been banned out just yet. Keep in mind, this is Pit Stop, not Crystal Arcade. But Nita is going to be most um, useful into those tanks. Surge is the final selection from OK. Mm. I definitely like it. You're able to compete at the same range-ish as Nita and as Tensai on that max. And Moya Goku on the Carl can play range versus Surge. But I think it's kind of an inevitability that Suzuku's going to be getting a super here. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons they end up picking this surge. It's somebody that shows on this map a decent bit because of all the tanks that show up, and especially Carl, too. For a long time, surge has been a great answer into Carl. A little bit easier to charge up that super. Suzuku going to be one to watch, though, especially if he ends up playing this surge and they don't switch off it. He's a star player, and he's a key factor every time. If you can't get past that tier one surge, makes it very difficult for yourself. So this start here is going to be a really a big factor for OK. And of course, we're jumping into set number two, zero, zero, a clean slate here for both these teams. Shitampo making a beeline for the safe, trying to get some damage on Suzuku in the same go. He's not opting to smack the pickaxe against the wall for some bonus damage. Suzuku, though, is gradually weaving his way in. Tensai now here at the flank for a little bit of speed, trying to keep their distance from Suzuku still. Meanwhile, some damage flying in on Crazy Raccoon, safe Shitampo and Tensai now parting ways. Going for a bit of defense. Milkrio, he's popped down the Salty Barrel for bonus damage, which is definitely a prudent decision, but he's getting completely ignored. The base race is in full force, especially uh -oh. as Moe Goku pops down the bear. And here's the Hyper Bear. More damage in Suzuku trying to do his best, but he's still taken down. I'm not sure they're going to be able to overcome this. It's a little bit of a base race, but two brawlers standing on that high save for Crazy Raccoon, and it's going to lead to an easy pickup of a game there for them. Look, Surge really couldn't get to that tier two, and we see the Satampo playing on the Carl. That's one of his most iconic and memorable brawlers that comes to mind for him. He's so good at some of these aggressive brawlers. He's going to give a lot of trouble over the Surge, even though Surge is traditionally a counter. Well, let's see if he plans on countering things on the right side, because he will be playing versus Shetampo once again, but he's lurking in the bushes, not revealing his position just yet. He could get impatient and decide to reveal his position. Here he comes, especially up the right side. They know Shetampo's here, so he's going to be lurking on that area. Meanwhile, on the left, Moya Goku pretty much ignored, but Moya Goku has to enter the brawl. A good takedown into Demzy, but no shots really for Moya Goku, whose main goal is to charge up the super and then throw it on the safe, or at least block up some shots. Still, though, Demzy is forced to take this lane. Here's a Speed. Moya Goku gets some speed as well. Now trying to take on Dempsey, but he rushes immediately towards the enemy side. And Crazy Raccoon has to follow in the pursuit. Yeah, here comes the defense as well. Moya now trying to assist on this. A cleanup from Tensai here. Satampo tries to continue this mid-pressure. Mokreo inching up this right-hand side where Max will take over. Moya doesn't deal a ton of damage on this high save. One key to look out for is if Nita doesn't have Bruce as an assistant, she really can't deal that much damage. It's almost worth leaving her on that high save alone. But in this case, Carl, he dishes out a ton of damage. Surge finally hitting that tier 2 Sage, and a better defense is here for it. Suzuki's just at level two, though. Level three is really going to be the end game for him, but Shetampo is being very, very stingy. He's not letting him get any hits, but here comes Dimsy rushing in, and really all that time that Crazy Raccoon is wasting is starting to catch up with him as Dimsy is going to be able to consistently charge up those supers and rush towards the enemy side. Crazy Raccoon, they're also trying to get a super for Nita. Moya Goku now with the speed rushes up the right side, and they're also going to have to deal with that trigger. Here's Moya Goku, super in. Dimsy, it's his responsibility. Shetampo is trying to defend. He just gets himself locked in the right side. Dimsy, some free supercharge for him as he now has it right to go on the enemy side. And Tensai being the lone defender on the left side is going to be big value for OK as they continue to march forward. Excellent conversion there for CR. I mean, what a good trade there. They now get themselves a small lead, 30 seconds to go roughly. OK, certainly have a chance here, but they're going to have to hold on for dear life. Dempsey breaking down the walls now, looking for the shotgun brawler. A bunch of 3K plus shots raining in. There's some extra damage coming in from Suzuku too, but they need to be careful here. Satampo now has a super in hand and might go for the safe. There it is, the flying hook through, but the defense coming in from Dempsey. It's going to be a tough one here, but Moya now gets Bruce the Bear as an assistant, and now all the damage pouring into that high safe. A clean up there. Crazy Raccoon now with a two to zero lead. Beautiful stuff for Crazy Raccoon. I love the ending right there. It all came to a head, and I was actually quite surprised when I saw Shetampo use a gadget and then go in with a super because he's not running protective pirouette. He's in fact using power throw to get a bit faster swing back time on that pickaxe. He fully intended to engage Surge for the entire time. If you were paying attention to Brawl Esports uh, just six months ago, then you're already well acquainted with the Surge into the Carl meta, but seems like Crazy Raccoon, they haven't quite left it behind and they're still making it work just as well. 
but you can't shrug off okay. They played really, really well in that second game, and they almost had it towards the end, just a moment of having their weakness exposed to let Crazy Raccoon take it back in the last few seconds. Yeah, I think overall, another impressive set for them, right? I think a lot of people expected, you know, the previous world champions to kind of walk in here, do some damage, come away with a clean victory. And it is two sets to zero. I mean, credit where credit is due. But I think OK are, are also kind of holding their own here. You know, you don't see it as much on the paper here with all the kills, but it just wasn't a lot of kills in general. I mean, three, four, three on that right hand side, not nearly as much as we saw in something like a gym grab earlier. So I think they're holding their own. I'm still feeling pretty confident in our CR pick here, of course but I definitely want to give credit to OK for how they've played so far. I think it's going to be very difficult to come back from this, a reverse sweep, something that is very difficult to do at a professional level. But so far, so good. Tensai, Satampo, Moyagoku getting the job done. Look, I'll tell you this much. I mean, keeping your own is a challenge enough. It's a huge, huge ask versus the players that comprise Crazy Raccoon. And OK are doing a fantastic job. I'll join you in congratulating on their performance so far. But I think they're sort of holding back on giving any kudos or you know stickers to themselves until they've taken a set victory, which is still quite possible. But it's just like you said. You have to get a complete reverse sweep from this point on. Even one game for Crazy Raccoon puts them at a massive advantage with only one game separating them from closing out the match. We're headed into Dueling Beatles for set number three where some usual suspects should arrive as well. I'm definitely looking at Sprout for a last pick if anything slips through the draft. But of course, that's all speculation. We'll have to leave it to the players to make it work. I like it. Some other common brawlers that show up here too. Max, of course, known in this region as one of the most common brawlers, one of the most apparent in the meta across the world as well. That's more of an international pick as well. But Stu shows up quite a bit here. It's an older strategy that people used to play, but the uh -oh. speed zone often used for him. And this is the first time we've seen Gray make a breakaway from that band stage. Excited to see what the mime can do here. Yeah, I'm excited when I see Crazy Raccoon pick up this brawler because not only is he just that good, he's basically the best brawler in the game right now. He also offers some interesting mechanics with the teleport. You could potentially do some cheesy stuff like we've seen in the past, get that teleport in and consistently rush those high health brawlers towards mid. Doesn't seem to be the approach that Crazy Raccoon are adopting here. Tensai on the Crow and Moyogoku on the Bonnie. It's also worth noting that, okay, with the B pickup, they've countered out one of the more popular picks on this map and one that Crazy Raccoon have utilized already, which is Poco. Also, B, she's just going to be good on pretty much every lane here. So I like the approaches from both teams so far, but it's time to see a hard counter. If B doesn't hard counter uh, Bonnie already, maybe Gus has something to say. Yeah, it's a really interesting lineup. I mean, Gray oftentimes associated with some of those tankier brawlers out there. Of course, you can activate the teleport, which is a super bring your entire teammates over there and just really bombard the opposing side with a lot of offense. But to be honest with you, I think this is just two pretty safe compositions, I want to say. I mean, pretty diverse stuff. You have Gus, who's more of a utility brawler. B, like you mentioned, very consistent across the board, has that honey molasses pot, which can dish out some damage, a good mid, a good lane, kind of whatever you need. Jan, of course, very versatile, can take to the skies. On the other side, you got Crow, traditionally good in hot zone gray just that guy in the meta right now i mean you call it how it is and bonnie really tanky very solid brawler as well very interesting to see how this will interact hey from my perspective it's precisely what you're saying just two safe compositions here but it doesn't necessarily look like hard counters uh parallels drawn between any two of these brawlers maybe uh, from my eyes the bonnie onto the b which are gonna find each other on the same lane and dimsy is already making some big moves shoving at Tampo back not really giving him much supercharge along the way still tries to block the shot with the honey molasses also we see a slow at mid tensai solo slowing suzuku who's not going to be pushed away from mid just yet but he is on very low health this region i think we especially saw at the world finals they like to play brawlers that they're comfortable on and that they're good at and they achieve really high skill cap on those particular brawlers we saw it especially from zeta one and zeta zero with some main players of those now comprising crazy raccoon let's see if they adopt a similar approach Nice pickup there from Dempsey, though. Now a little kooky popper on this left-hand side to push Moya Goku away. One interesting thing, too, I've talked about it a lot, but spawn trapping is a very real thing. They can apply pressure with the honey molasses, with the drop the base, and, of course, with no wall break outside of maybe a gray gadget here, whichever one he ends up selecting. It's going to be very tough, and right now all the pressure being applied. OK doing a great job as they're going to pick up Tensai once again, 40% in climbing here. OK with a very sizable lead. 
Huge stuff for OK so far, but we have yet to see Crazy Raccoon make any really big plays, especially Shtetampo, but he does have that super now, and he could make use of it. Another takedown onto Tensai at mid. Suzuku and Milkrio get to walk all over this area. Crazy Raccoon still kind of silence on that northern front. Just no supers in just yet. Tensai can go for the jump. Here it is on Dimzy. Dimzy now pops a super. A little bit of damage in. Gets a takedown, but goes down himself. Suzuku now takes his skies as well. Bit of damage onto Shtetampo. Just one more will seal the deal. But Tensai still moving in once again. Shtetampo back to the back lines. Crazy Raccoon, they're threatening to meet OK at 61% very soon. Here. This could be an awesome opportunity for a comeback here. There's that gadget that teleport away, and this is where the shenanigans begin. He's a circus act, but now he's putting on a show for us right here. It's going to be 64% all tied up, a back and forth affair. Tensai gets a shot in, but once again, Suzuku doing a good job. Satampo, the king himself, diving in now. Still a lead, though, despite the kills going to the size of Crazy Raccoon. They have to regain this control. They're pushing Suzuku back. Dempsey all the way back in his spawn, but a clutch kill there. It's so close right now. Well, you want to talk circus, this could be a hat trick right here. Crazy Raccoon now coming back from the brink of defeat, 85% and counting. But OK, oh. take them down, Shetampo even with the teleport in. Moya Goku, really the last survivor left to defend this, could go for a teleport in, a little bit of healing along the way. Another teleport as well to try and heal up, but it's not enough. OK, counting up to 100% in no Seagar for Crazy Raccoon. No 100% for you and no match point in coming either. It's good to see, honestly, OK take one here. I feel like they deserved it for the way they played. And that last one, they really had to earn it. What an interesting game we had there. Again, Gray is so good in this meta right now. If you give it to a professional player, his shots aren't always the easiest hit for casuals like myself, but he's really good. I mean, the teleport goes a long way towards helping pro players out. Love this coming in from them and good to see OK showing up on the leaderboard. No doubt, and they're still showing up here once again because they are all over mid. Here comes a hook. It's only going to pull a turret popped by Suzuku just in the nick of time. Oyagoku not getting any value off of that. Tensai also just barely staying alive, but he is being shut back. Shitetampo also much the same. Here comes drop the base. It's forcing everyone away, but it wasn't popped behind a wall, which means it's easily taken down by Moya. Tensai also taken down by the high power B from Dimzy, but he's not done yet. He's still trying to engage Shitetampo on the right side. Crazy Raccoon, they're at a high risk of being pinched back here. The wall is broken, but Dempsey is not yanked back. Tensai falls once again. Kuki Popper on the back lines keeps Moya back. Shetampo falls, and okay, they're on a warpath. They're threatening to take down this game in a complete sweep. Yeah, and Moya again trying to utilize those gadgets to open up this map a little bit, give them a little space to work with, but they've just been dropping perfect gadgets to block those out. The pressure still continues, but Tensai finally moving up this map a little bit. It's going to be very difficult to come back, though. McCrail with the Kooky Popper on the left-hand side. Tensai dang, diving in, deleted immediately, though, and this one is going to be conceded over. It's going to be okay picking up a set here, and maybe they still got some magic left in them. It's certainly not over yet. This is true. I mean, look, the, the, circus, the circus funds are real, real fun. We can talk hat tricks all day, but OK are seriously tapping into something that we have not seen out of them just yet because it goes beyond just being scrappy and just giving it their all and being good players all around. They've gotten a game victory in every single set so far, and they finally closed one out. This time, though, in a 2-0, which is just crazy versus crazy raccoon, who honestly, on the pick phase, it is probably what they're comfortable with, and it's a good assortment of brawlers, it's a good handful, but if I had to point fingers at one brawler from OK that made all the difference, it's gotta be B. Every single matchup that Dempsey was willing to engage on seemed to be an absolute W for the guy. Yeah, it's been something they've been great with, like you mentioned, several games, and finally they pick up a set for themselves. I love seeing the competition rise here in Brawl Stars. Every year, it feels like everybody gets better and better, including these guys over on Crazy Raccoon, of course, who have accomplished the highest of heights, but they're definitely facing a challenge right now, one to two. Not impossible, but certainly a tall task here. Be a wild thing to see a reverse sweep happen, but it's going to have to be against some talented, talented players. The kill's lining up for that left-hand side. Six, five, and three going against Tensai, who unfortunately couldn't pick one up in that set. This is unfortunate, but you're playing Crow, you know, it's to be expected. You fulfill more of a support role on that brawler. You can sometimes get kill confirmation, and to Tensai's credit, he definitely did try to take those opportunities, but it seemed like he was dead on arrival. Every single time he went for that super, I've never seen a Crow die so fast after jumping in, but that's not even Tensai's fault. It's really just good team play and callouts from OK, even if it is a little funny to watch sometimes. I know that it's painful, and it's not a 
the desired outcome for Crazy Raccoon. They're going to be coming back in the next set with an absolute resolve to close this one out. Last, they let OK fire up some momentum and roll them over to set five. Yeah, we're going to be hopping in to Pinhole Punt here. A little Brawl Ball action. One of my favorite game modes, just because it's so high paced. There's so many different things that can show up here. And of course, as a big sports fan myself, I just love seeing that interaction in Brawl Stars. Always a fun one to watch. Of course, we saw this in the quarter finals. If you watched a couple weeks ago, my good friend, Mr. Pandacast actually showed this a little bit ago. Carl, Ims, Max, all common ones here on this map. We're going to see that Crow ban once again. And there she is. It's an East Asia brawler, but also just such a good one in the meta right now. Now, well, let's see if you're a real mind reader here, because we've seen the Max already. Carl and Ims could be on the way. We don't see them in the bands just yet, except on Crazy Raccoon. They have gotten rid of Carl. And Ims, you know, can't hate her. She's a really popular pick on this map. It looks like you really are magic here, Kenny, because that is the Ims. We'll see how they follow it up. Of course, they can't combine it with the Max, and she's going to be good at getting some control, but if she's out range, she can be a pretty tough brawler to play. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just a brawler that shows up way more in this region, I've noticed, than other regions. M's always kind of been a solid brawler, right? But especially with how tanky of a meta it is right now, it might just be a safer pick. Synergize as well with Max as well, so it might be just kind of taking away from the other side as well, just giving them one less possible combination that they can rock and roll with. It's something that's been tried and true in Brawl Stars for a long time. And of course, Colonel Ruff's a very versatile pick as well. So much utility. Fulfills kind of that offensive role if you need him with the bounce shots off the walls. He's got sandbags. he got the rocket rain for two really solid gadgets and of course can power up teammates all the way through the squeak though always a fun one to watch yeah and squeak is going to have that shot that can take down colonel ref's sandbags all in just one or two shots so i think that's a great brawler to be picking here another brawler that can do pretty much the same thing is otis which is still completely up for grabs but crazy raccoon probably trying to keep a good amount of diversity in what their comp is capable of facing as okay does have that final pick here comes the spike as a last selection we've seen the spike so far didn't blow me away, but still just a good brawler, especially with the introduction of that gear just a couple months ago that slows people down a lot more when you have stick around active. And seeing as Poco is banned out, you're not going to be able to negate that effect by the use of a gadget. You're just going to have to stick around right inside of that super if you end up getting caught in the spikes. Yeah, I think this is another opportunity for Spike to kind of run into M's here, take a favorable matchup in the sense of that extra range, high DPS, can really do a good job in general against the M's, should win that matchup more times than not. But BB, not one I expected. Look, tanks are everywhere right now. And you see BB every once in a while in the scrim, but this is, you know, semifinals, monthly finals action, and they're down two sets to one. This is a bold pick ready. It is, absolutely is, and I actually really do like the BB here because she's able to pump out so much damage in close range. You don't have to be point-blank like Bull to get a good juicy 2k damage locked in with a single swing. She also has that bubble that offers good utility, plus with a shield active and more than likely uh, that vitamin booster at the ready as well. It's going to be a very tanky brawler. Here comes the gadget pop, and they're just running this forward. Sidzuku's looking for an opening, and he's counting on Dempsey big time to clear things out, but no kills just yet, and they're both on their last leg. Stick around, active, and Suzuku falls, Milkery on the left side also trying to keep this corridor blocked up as Shitampo almost opened things up for a goal to slide in. Crazy Raccoon, they fall back for the mid control. Shitampo has a super. Could see slow incoming. Milkery now tagged up. This is a good opening for Crazy Raccoon to try and score a goal. Yeah, it's a tough situation. BB is a lone goalkeeper. Not going to be the best, but dribbling this ball right now down the left-hand side, trying to buy time for the teammates. Does an excellent job with it, too. That very easily could have been a crazy raccoon goal if they don't find a way to get rid of that ball, but they space the floor just enough. Dump that ball up at the top, and now it's going to pave the way for Dempsey Milkreo to come back here, and it's a full team playing defense. At a glance, it looks like Moya Goku is going to have to focus on throwing that super onto wherever Suzuku is planning on going, but he does throw it down. Now Suzuku knows it's drive time, but the speed from Tensai is enough to keep them away and safe. Milkrio also trying to block things up with the goal. He's a lone defender. Dimsy now at the ready to defend on the right side. And we see, once again, pushing up the right side. Shetampo with a super in, a slow on to Dimsy. Looks good. Milkrio still trying to slow things down. Tensai with a gadget away, but Suzuku's on the case, popping that last vitamin booster to try and stay up here so that Dimsy and Milkrio can kind of put the pieces back together on defense. Begin pushing that ball forward for a potential goal. Oh, and Dempsey gets caught in the super, can't move his feet, and now once again, it's just Suzuku here, three brawlers standing for Crazy Raccoon, a pass forward, an assist, and a goal, the first one of the set, Crazy Raccoon with a lead here. And it's a good thing for Crazy Raccoon too, just 40 seconds to defend, and they have some great defending brawlers, but they cannot succumb to the effects of Suzuku, there's the actual last 
gadget popped, and Milkrio also is benefiting a whole lot from the tankiness at mid. He's trying to take on Shitampo, also break open some walls. Not the one right in front of the goal, because it would be a big benefit to keep some people back there and have Dimsy get them all in one go. Crazy Raccoon is very hesitant to fall into this position, but they might have to. Tensai gets caught up in the mayhem. Dimsy with the whip super. That's not good. A pass over to Milkrio, maybe up to Suzuku. They're going to have to have a lot of tankiness. Suzuku is going to go for it, tries to make it work. There it is! And okay, are bringing it into overtime. Oh my goodness, now they made it to overtime, but this is where things get difficult, right? You're a BB, you're not meant to play these long-range battles. A super raining down from Mokreo, 3v2 situation. CR have been here before, Suzuku not going to be able to do much here. The kick forward, and Tensai with the goal! Nicely played there, and now it's going to be a match point. Impressive stuff here, a lot of fireworks going down in that game. Can we have, like, a best of seven set here in Brawl Ball? That, that absolutely <laughs> blew me away. This is exactly what I showed up here for, is amazing plays and the clutch stuff right at the end. It was great team play and uh, just good game sense from Suzuku to walk that one in towards the end. And Crazy Raccoon, I mean, the jukes were phenomenal. Suzuku, you saw, he was trying to do his best Ooh. and was also waiting for that knockback to come back, but it came back just a split second too late. And OK are not going to let this one go down so easy. Crazy Raccoon, they're at match point. One game for Crazy Raccoon means that this match is over and they're going to the grand finals and they might end it off a little bit more quickly. Here comes a stick around Milk Rio at the goal line, but it goes down an easy slot in for Moya and Crazy Raccoon find themselves one goal away from ending off this match. Difficult situation as now the energy drink's gonna be popped. The speed coming through. Moya Goku Sutampo gonna be able to move a little bit quicker now. Milkreo getting tagged up pretty well here. There's the super kick forward. They were looking for a flashy goal. They couldn't quite get it. Now it's Suzuku marching up this map, trying to take on Tensai and Sutampo. Picks up the first, a power up as well. He's gonna need some insane dodges here, relying on that shield, staying up a face shift forward, backs him up though, and somehow comes out of that alive. Love that 1v1 interaction right there. Okay doing a phenomenal job of holding their own, but Crazy Raccoon still, they've just got to defend for a minute 20 longer or put the goal in fast and simple. With Suzuku out of the picture, it's going to be a lot easier. Moya Goku has a super at the ready, and the goal is blocked up. Dempsey manages to clear out of the way, and Milkrio is still alive on the right side, so they still got hope, and they absolutely will be able to push out of here. Now that Suzuku's at the ready, but Moya Goku's waiting for him to appear. Even though Dempsey is getting focused down on 1v2, he's still able to stay alive. Milkrio on the right side, blocked up by the residue. Dempsey continues trying to push forward. Big stick around onto Suzuku but he's so tanky, not with a bunch more damage contributed by Shitetampo, though he's really just the scapegoat for all of this. Big play for Tensai. <gasps> Milker is still able to snag it, but he walks back into the goal. Tensai snaps it up, and Crazy Raccoon, they win the first semifinal, and they're going on to the grand finals. Wow, what a tough way to go down there. I don't know if it was a matter of being out of shots, a little bit of just fumbling the ball, trying to get out of that goal side, but they did pick up that ball a couple times, maybe with an opportunity to kick it away, but I think it would have been a very difficult thing to overcome. Crazy Raccoon, though, living up to expectation. It's a different name for these players this year, but still a large organization that has some phenomenal players. A semifinals is not the expectation for them. Heck, maybe even making Worlds isn't enough. I think this is a team that has their mindset on one goal, and that's going all the way to worlds and it starts here mission accomplished at least for this first one we'll get to see them later down the line though awesome stuff from okay though i think overall you know it was 3-1 i think there were times where crazy raccoon showed their mechanical prowess but to be honest with you okay played really well all things considered i think especially when i've been watching some of these scrims seeing how they've lined up you know crazy raccoons come away with a lot of set wins and this was an instance where okay really showed what they have i think a strong showing and something they can be proud of Hey, look, I would expect as much from the duo of Milkrio and Dimsey and Suzuku, I think, really, really impressed me with some of those great plays, especially on the BB. Sort of being a lone wolf at times, but hey, that's what the brawler asks for. You play BB, you're going to have to make some of those plays by yourself sometimes. And just being a great contributor to this team and a great new player to add to the roster, I'm very, very optimistic for what OK has in store for us this year. But Crazy Raccoon, you really cannot debate with greatness and especially historical greatness. Look at Shetampo walking away with 11 kills over the course of this set. Whew, that's a big number coming in from Satampo. That's just <laughs> Satampo stuff, to be honest with you. I mean, these guys are incredible. I know we've been gassing them up all night, but it's just because they're so darn good. I think an MVP call here is pretty tough considering the names on that right-hand side, but the people have spoken. Y'all are rolling with Satampo. I think a great choice, too, Ready? I had an excellent four sets there, especially after that one that they go down on. They managed to pick themselves right back up, and, of course, due to some strong Satampo play, they're able to come away with it.
Absolutely. I mean, really, Shitampo is sort of the star of this last match, too, but also Tensai, Moe, Goku, star players in their own right, being excellent teammates and excellent stars when the time calls for it, but you simply can't debate with the numbers. 11 kills, that's a great statistic to have on your hands, and it's a great confidence boost headed into those grand finals because as competitive as this last game was, it's only one of the stepping stones towards the ultimate goal today of winning the grand finals, but we have to find an appropriate opponent for them, and they might be just as furious as the two we saw just moments ago. Guts and Chasmac Gaming EA comprise the next semifinal for tonight. And I think when you look alongside all the matches today, this is going to be one of the tougher ones to predict, right? We've had a lot of really good head-to-head -head matchups, but this is one when I'm kind of looking at this that I really don't know what to think. Guts and Chasmic Gaming EA, of course, Chasmic Gaming having several rosters last year, now shipping it over to the APAC region to pick up three phenomenal players in this team. I think Guts got a star-studded roster as well. Of course, Crazy Raccoon's going to get all the talking, but this second spot in the region, at least on paper, it's going to come down to probably one of the these two teams of course crazy raccoons still have to prove themselves for 2023 but the way too early preseason rankings kind of show these guys contending for that second or even a world final spot absolutely i mean really if you look at the history of these players as well i'm sure all of you uh, avid brawl stars esports fans have done your research on these two especially going into your predictions because you can never forfeit the opportunity to get some awesome pins to uh, flex on your teammates however guts and chasmet gaming ea they both got some pretty great rosters guts i think in summary this is really a choppy and the two brawlers or two players that he's selected to be at his side it's levi and minmi at his flank chasmac east asia that's kenji and kuru as well as Melty. And we've seen Melty do some good things over the course of the last year, uh, getting four monthly finals appearances in that year. But Kenji and Kuru, both on opposite sides of the arena at the World Finals last year in the Grand final stage. Just great players on both sides of the arena. It's tough to make a choice, but I think all of us do at some point. Predictions, I think, Kenny. Yeah, it's a tough one. I ended up rolling with Guts and, you know, Achape, Levi, Menmi, all very strong players, but Achape kind of going out on a limb here on his own, diverting from the Zeta Division roster that he was with last year. I mean, he's won two world championships with a row, and I think this is a year where it's a legacy maker for him. If he can prove it and do it again with a completely different set of players that haven't quite been to that same level, say, as a Tempo, Moya Goku, Tensai, Kuru, Kenji, you know, they're some of the best of the best in the game. If he can do it here and prove himself, especially against some former rivals and teammates even, I think it would be a strong showing for him. I'm really excited to see what he can do alongside these guys today. Hey, look, all these things that we've said before and that are just well-known around the globe, Achapi, just a very decorated player, world champion, two years in a row, now seeking his third. And also, of course, with two new players at his side, might be able to do it with the former World Finals champions, or rather reigning World Finals champions, but we roll back the clock to 2021. All three of the players making up that roster, they've all finally split ways by now onto different rosters. So if one of those teams wins the World Finals this year, there will only be one three-time running world champion, which would be a fantastic storyline. And honestly, this is a long play for a choppy in the crew. Well, of course, we've talked about these former world champions, but the rest of them are going to be on this other side here. It's going to be a Chasmic Gaming EA formed by Kenji, Kuru, and Melty. Of course, Kenji and Kuru, if you were a fan last year, are going to be very familiar. But if you watched our East Asia region, Melty had some strong performances here, too. This is also a very strong set of three and could definitely come away with this one. This is absolutely true. Melty... Uh course a brawler that we should not uh, be sneezing at despite not appearing in the world finals like many others in the semi uh, semi-final stage here in east asia because this is an extremely competitive region we've seen melty pull off some great stuff there of course at his side kenji kuru both appearing on zeta division one and zeta division zero respectively and getting some great plays and honestly completely uh, deserve their spots at number one and number two in the world finals last year. I have high expectations for this roster. I think really the biggest question for me is how is Melty going to mesh with this roster?
Yeah, I think that's a very fair point, too. You know, there's a little shape up here. Kenji and Kuru are very familiar with each other, of course. They've had great success in their own right in the past. Even outside of Zeta Division last year, right? Kenji was a phenomenal player even before that. I think there's a lot of good stuff here, and Chasmic Gaming could really make a name for themselves, just like Guts. I mean, again, it is a clean slate. We've talked all this hype about Crazy Raccoon since they announced that they're going to be playing together even before the signing of that organization. But these are two teams that could absolutely put in some work here and make it out of this one alive. A world's final spot on the line, of course, for this region. Region, and these are two teams very worthy of it. But first, it's going to start off on that super beach. I think this map is so interesting, Ready? The drafts always play out a ton. And that sixth pick, a very important one on this map. Absolutely. I mean, this is a map where the draft can be incredibly unpredictable. And, of course, if you saw just a moment ago the predictions, they didn't look so good for Guts. Chazmek gaining EA with 83% of the vote. Here's the Barley first pick. And this is exactly what you and I are talking about, Kenny. This draft can be very unpredictable at times but i think it is actually quite well known among the professional community and just the esports fans in general that barley completely dominates on this map as a first pick though i definitely am left scratching my head a little bit because there are options for breaking down walls and dealing with barley quite effectively and i think guts absolutely have that in mind and playing to counter it out going forward looks like chasmat gaming ea have kind of not leaned into that though they've gone with the crow and the penny both brawlers that don't have a good time versus barley yeah, this is blowing my mind a little bit. Barley, of course, a very common sixth pick here. He's kind of the one, if you can get away with him, you absolutely do it, especially when there's no wall break on the map. But it looks like Chasma Gaming aren't feeding into that. They could go with a tankier brawler to try and counter him out. Maybe a little nervous just with tank counters available on the board. But this is a very curious way of going about this. I mean, Barley first pick, I would say, is a very bold play coming in from them. Anytime you take a squishy thrower like that, very easy to counter it out. They even managed to get Otis out of this interaction, too. I mean, I think Otis is still one of the strongest brawlers in the meta right Right now that helps them out with these tanking matchups too if they elect to go for that especially kind of covering for the weaknesses of barley here very interesting draft this is just definitely not one i was expecting here's what i'm thinking now after a bit of time to sort of meditate on this is that they wanted to go with barley pretty much from the outset and they didn't want to face it as a last pick but they also wanted to have their next couple of picks first otis and then one coming in just a few seconds to react to Chazmat Gaming's picks and not have to waste one on Barley. Here's going to come the M's as well. And this is a reaction to the Crow and the Penny, if my math works out correctly. But now Chazmat Gaming EA have a final pick to think about how they're actually going to deal with this Barley. If they choose not to, in my opinion, would be a big mistake. But I'm just a professional opinion haver as a caster. I'm not a pro player. <laughs> I'm going to leave Chazmat Gaming EA to really lay down the law and show us what's what. Hey, that makes two of us, brother. And I really think you have to kind of look at a wall break here, right? I mean, we've got Barley on the map. We've got Ims on the map. Ims with some good mid range. And what is going on, bro? <laughs> what is happening? We get a cult final pick. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be an awesome set. I mean, this is a crazy draft. If you're new to Brawl Esports, great one to start you off with. This is definitely untraditional, though. It's completely untraditional. I mean, typically in this situation, I'd say, oh, this is a Colonel Ruffs for sure. You know, you can power up your teammates. It's a great thing to have. Uh, throw down some sandbags. Of course, when you're facing Ims and Otis, you'd obviously not be running the sandbags. You'd be running the second gadget instead. But the most important thing is, yeah, you break down walls and you can also get some ricocheted shots around the side. It's also just a favorite of this region. But the Colt, uh, I'm here for the spectacle, if anything. And so far, Guts, they're marching up the field. Kenji, he hasn't broken up any walls so far. Here comes the first, and he's going to be taking down all of those ones on the left side, just great precision with which he's able to do that and really laying into Minmi. Here's the next one as well. Perfect destruction on the walls. And honestly, now I'm starting to see why the Colt was selected. Yeah, it's a risky pick, but I mean, it kind of plays the role that we wanted it to, right? We were looking for wall break, maybe some range to play into that Ims or Otis and Barley. Once these walls come down, Barley is really going to struggle here in area control brawler. Typically, there's the super going off. No connection there. Little healing syrup going down, trying to power up his teammates and Levi marching up this map. A choppy with a fat splatter. There goes the jump in too, but the pass goes through. Levi might have an opportunity here if he can get a kill or a gadget off. Going to be a tough situation. Minmi trying to claw his way there. Three brawlers standing for guts and it's just one lone melty in the way levi though dumps it off into the goal early bucket here for guts one zero good stuff for them so far and they're already claiming their territory on the left side kenji forced away from some of these uh barrels but it doesn't look like that's really where he wanted to be anyway prefer to be out in the open where he can use those jukes to his advantage and keep good range for his enemies here's a lane switch as well as kenji now opts to take that mid sort of match but he has a super in hand as well which he can use to break open walls might even go for a goal scoring combo here it is onto a choppy and the walls are broken down now we're really starting to feel the effects of what an opened up super 
uh, Beach can achieve for Chazmat Gaming EA. But Minmi, he's still just fine being hunkered down on the right side, but is seriously limiting in terms of where he can move. Still trying to keep that Guru Kenji also getting some serious damage locked in, but Minmi safe. And Ooh. Kenji goes down. It's now time for Guts to price up the field once again. Yeah, I'm sure they were hoping to get that multi super to be on offense, but instead they're going to have to use it for defense. They do pick up the kill, but Levi going down here. Three brawlers now for Chasmic Gaming and Opportunity. Kuru hovering over that super button, going to elect to use it to apply a little pressure here on the goal side. Kenji raining shots down on the left. Levi outranged, outgunned right now. And once again, it's going to be Guts forcing themselves to play a little defense. It's going to take a big super from Kenji to have any chance of throwing this one into overtime. Otherwise, Guts, they get to hunker down. Even the ball is cornered on the left side, and Levi is the personal bridge toll keeper of that left side. Choppy also standing by. Big connection onto Kenji as he gets pinched super hard. Only a few seconds left. Melty might be forced to jump in here, and even then, it won't be enough to get him home safe. Guru can try, but Minmi's blocked it up. Some spins, too, and the wind's headed over the way of Guts, but it's just the first one of this set, and we've already seen with the last match just how pivotal it can be that time to think, sit back, sort of analyze and take a deep breath from game one to game number two, especially in the first set. But from what Guts had to offer, it looks so, so dominant. And even the draft looked way more consistent from Guts too. It's one of the coolest parts of competitive brawl. Anything can happen on all three games, despite the same map and the same brawlers. But so far, so good for Guts here. Kenji connecting quite a few shots. There's the wall break. A nice dodge from Mimi, though, and they actually get the pick up there, too. 3v2 situation. Levi stepping it up as well. Has an opportunity. Shoots the ball forward. Kuru with the interception, though. Going to kick it off to the right-hand side. Kenji trying to play as much defense as he can. Gets the double as well. It's just a lone Minmi now as Kenji pops off there to clutch up for Chasmic Gaming. One, two, maybe three, but he's abandoning that left side to let Kuru take it instead. A double kill certainly looks flashy for Kenji, and it's quite telling. But we can expect from the Colt once all these walls are broken down, and especially when he has a super in hand, he's going to have to work for it very, very hard, especially with Levi biding his time, waiting on the right side. He has fed a super in the meantime. But on the left side, Minmi, he's also making the best use of his range. Despite not having walls, Kuru's gradually moving in range, taking some damage along the way. On the right side, Kenji almost able to diff the lane versus Levi, who now runs for some non-existent uh, barrels could be taken down at long range. Just no goal scored quite yet. Chazmet Gaming EA, they're in a good position to start pushing things forward, but no big moves have been made. It's going to come down to who gets that first kill in this interaction. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Whoever lands up against Kenji, obviously a phenomenal player, but a tough matchup for anybody with the range that he's bringing. Now a slowdown coming in as well. A free pickup there, a super shot through, but doesn't connect. Huge opportunity. Kenji, though, with a breakaway goal, a dive in for Melty for extra measure. 1-0. Chasmic Gaming taking their first goal. Chasmat Gaming EA trying to play defense now is really that's their ticket towards winning this game. That or score a goal with how consistently and confidently Gus is pushing up. It's going to be quite difficult to do so. Minmi now with a slow spike uh -oh. and pass up here. Jump in for Melty. Open goal for Levi. And Guts managed to tie it up one to one. 30 seconds on the, on the scoreboard so far. But Chasmat Gaming EA headed off of one goal and then immediately getting scored on. It's not an optimistic outlook. Yeah, I don't love this overtime situation for Guts, so I think going for a goal here might be important. They might lean into a little bit more aggression. The area control coming in from the Barley Super 15 seconds ago. A choppy just dumping this ball off here. They pick up a kill into Ken G and Levi trading out his life there. Memmi low health can't get away with this one. Should be a successful CMG defense, but barely Kuru going to hold on and going to walk them towards the overtime. Walls are going to come down here. In the absence of walls, this could be a good look for Ken G. Guts are definitely switching on the jukes and dodges switches is that's going to be their main way of dealing with this brawler but kenji still trying to lock in that damage a choppy could be his next target levi also lined up right next to him kuru getting big damage as well minmi trying to hold his own but with no walls it's just not a good look for guts this could be it kuru trying to lock things in on the left side but minmi's able to pass it away a choppy still trying to hold things down a super up to the right side it's got to be melty right into the clutches of levi unfortunate it's gonna have to take another takedown from chasmet gaming ea to bring this one back with a ball Locked in the back right corner. Minmi can defend this so, so well. Might fall to the poison from Kuru, but he's still healing up thanks to the use of the star power. Taken down, 15 second countdown active. But Chazmet Gaming EA doesn't look like they'll be able to move into this back right corner. 
What a missed opportunity there as Guts, I think, are going to be able to hold on to this. Five seconds ago, a Crow jump in. That would need something crazy, though. Not quite enough time on the clock. Look, I think they had an easy walk-in bucket there. I think they just kind of overthought it a little bit. Maybe a little too flashy, too many passes, whatever it was. They had a real opportunity there. I think this could really have been a 1-1, one -one, but it's going to end up being a draw. I think your Guts, that's a win in your heart. But at Chasmic Gaming, I feel like you're a little disappointed after that one. An early goal for themselves. Guts make the comeback. You get it to overtime. You have the more favorable composition in overtime, and they just couldn't come away with the goal. I think any way you look at it, this is an absolute win for Guts because that should be almost unwinnable for them in OT with Minmi on that Barley. Not that the player makes any difference, but Barley without any walls is just asking it for failure. And Levi's going to be closing out this right side. Minmi gets to walk it in. Barley marches all the way to the enemy side for a little touchdown in just 28 seconds. It's all it takes for Guts to score a goal here, y'all. Chazmat Gaming EA are in for a very, very fierce fight. Whiffing a couple of opportunities in that last game to score a goal is costing them big time because this could be it. Levi, he's got an open lane for a victory, and there it is. Guts, they close out that game so, so fast. Yeah, that was just a clinic right there in game number three. Of course, a, a redo of game number two, if you will, but 2-0 going to be the score there. Again, I think Chasmic Gaming, look at themselves. They could have really claimed that second game, but honestly, Guts stepped it right back up in the next one. After a reset, they earned that one. I think the early game, of course, so important in that interaction. You have Colt, who's going to tear down all those walls, make it really difficult to kind of match that range if you're the Barley or the M's, but they played really well into it. I think overall, very impressive stuff, because again, that's not an easy one to fare against. Not at all. Just good stuff for Guts. Chazmat Gaming EA got very, very confident, and they were able to pop off some pretty flashy stuff, particularly Ken G on the Colt. Not only was that the boldest pick that we've seen, I think, in this region so far, but it's also one that really impressed me when it came to mechanics, but it was moments like these where things got so disjointed from the team. Melty and Ken G both being overextended, where Guts had two members right in front of the goal, ready for a ball to be passed up and slap it up into the goal. This is, I think, Chazmat Gaming EA a uh, being a powerhouse roster for sure but getting a bit ahead of themselves and guts they're absolutely punishing it yeah, this is a huge play right here, too, and one to remember as well. We'll be looking back on that one, I'm sure, at the end of the day. But Levi with a nice bucket after the heroic effort there of Barley using the gadget to stay alive just a little bit longer. Pops that super and a nice bucket there, too. But, I mean, when you look at it on paper, you wouldn't know any different. I mean, it would have looked like a pretty close matchup. But at the end of the day, you see Kuru with 10 kills. You see Kenji with 7. Melty with a nice little 5-piece there, too. I think a lot of people, if you just looked at this, would have thought, hey, Chasma Gaming might have won that set 2-0. But instead, it's a choppy Levi and Menmi coming away with this one. Guts. The free agent roster, of course, coming away with their first set victory. Now hopping over to open zone. This one is a real interesting one to break down in drafts ready. Certainly is. And also, if we backpedaled a little bit and looked at the stats, I mean, I think we can expect after the outcome of this set right here that the stats could lean in either direction, no matter the outcome. Point being, you just got to get bodies on the point in order to get capture. You can keep on dying, but it doesn't matter if the enemy never steps on that point. Poco first pick from Chazmat Gaming EA. And Guts, they haven't banned B, so I'm highly anticipating a B selection from Guts. They also should be thinking about things that are good combos with Poco, because if you start to let that Poco ball get rolling, it could be absolute bad business. We already see the max ban, so they have that on the table so far. They've got a couple more selections that they can roll with, just not Crow, because... Well, they've already banned that out, too. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're looking at Mega B here. I think those are two really good options. You shouted out the B, of course. That range can keep up with Poco. Looks like we're a couple Wizards, but Meg, somebody that does so darn well in Hot Zone, of course, the only way to really deal with her is some high DPS. She shows up on this map and a lot of the other Hot Zone maps quite a bit. Once she's in that mech form, she can hold on to that Hot Zone and do so well into applying some offense onto the other team. We'll see what they end up selecting. I wouldn't blame them for a few different directions here. This is a wide open map. Of course, the Poco going to be quite good for bringing the heals to the teammates not necessarily the range that some of these sharpshooters will have but nonetheless can do quite well in this map too absolutely we'll have to see what gus decide to go for here colette is their selection now and personally not exactly my favorite but it kind of doesn't matter because in east asia the players play what they want to play and even if it's not the hardest counter ever they'll still be able to pop off on a certain brawler i think this is just sort of the prediction that 
Chasmic Gaming EA are looking to pick up something kind of tanky here, and Levi's here to deal with it. You just gotta note also that Poco can seriously mess things up for Colette, because of course, Colette, it's all about getting those combos together. You can kill any brawler with just two normal attacks and the super together, but if Poco starts healing things up with Decapo, then that goes right out the window. Do I think Poco's gonna be running Decapo? Eh, not exactly, but it's still an option on the table. And it's something Guts should be thinking about when they go for their last brawler because they got to be going for something that can deal with Poco a little bit more effectively than B because he can't stick all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, it should be interesting here. I think the Colette's a, a, a good one to kind of look at here because if you entertain the idea of Meg here, once she's in that mech, Colette, of course, can shred through that with the decaying shots coming through, kind of daring them to take that pick, I think. But I think they were kind of equipped with that when they went with Colette. I think Guts could have an answer here. B can def deal out a hefty amount of damage too. I, I don't mind them skipping on this, but I think a good pickup for Chasmic Gaming at the same time. Love the Meg pick. Let's see how Guts react, because this can be quite difficult to face, as Meg, if she gets damage boosted, she can stay on the field for a very long time, especially after she pops out of the mech, she's going to have a shield active, give her a little bit more health, and that gets way, way stronger. And then, of course, with Poco able to heal things, it's going to be an absolute menace. There's the Penny. She'll be able to get some good area control once she throws down the turret, but sometimes on maps open like this one, you can pretty much just walk away from wherever that turret's firing down and not uh, have to deal with it at all. The other consideration is that if Meg managed to march pretty far forward, she can one-tap that turret with the use of her super as long as she's in the mech. But even then, it's probably going to be quite a bit of a struggle if Minmi is effective on this B at holding down the fort. There's not really a doubt in my mind that Crew's going to be running the sandbags despite facing Penny, who's able to eliminate a lot of them in just one go. So we'll have to see how exactly this one pans out. Chazmat Gaming A still trying to hold their own at mid, doing quite a good job despite facing under the B. Levi, he's taking the left lane so far. Melty getting slowed down. Big connections from Levi, but here are the sandbags that we need to see from Kenji blocking things off. On the right side, Minmi taken down, and Levi still able to take the upper hand here at mid. Slow coming in, no connections just yet. Melty still taken down. Levi on top. A choppy doing his best to also regain some of this territory here, but Kenji has a supply drop. It's a good look for both teams, but for now, Guts will be taking the upper hand. Yeah, it's a strong start for them here. Three brawlers contending it for this mid area. A small lead here too, as Melty's gonna get shredded for a few shots. Minmi now in a dangerous situation. The dive in from Achapi though, gets a couple tags there, but Kuru the one to watch the swing through, trying to get that batting stance up, and can't quite make the connection here. Gonna be a small lead now. The Penny turret applying some pressure, and Levi picking up a kill. Now Kenji going down too. Very precarious situation if you're for Shazman Gaming. Minmi has a turret in hand ready to go at a moment's notice. Kuru on the left side also. Back in the mech has a lot of health to work with and Melty is ready at his side with a super of his own. Minmi still has that super in hand on the right side. Could use some uh, bit of damage blocking to deal with Kenji. But for now, Guts are staying pretty confidently on this point despite Chazmek's best efforts. Kenji still though, getting some damage locked down. And Minmi is using that turret to body block a little bit. He's going to have to work hard for the next one, though, because Melty and Kenji are looking super, super strong as this do on the right side. And they're dodging out so many of Levi's shots as well. It just looks like they're dodging out every single one. Levi can't connect a shot, but Guts are still in the lead. Last set of sandbags from Kenji as well on the left side of Choppy trying to deal with Kuru. He finally gets the upper hand, healing up in the process. And a little spin as well is a fun interaction. But Guts still have a real contender here. As Choppy circles back, tries to take down Melty. Great combo, and they could close it out. That's a brave play from Machapi. I don't think I could spin on him like that, especially when he's as good of a player as he knows. But now Kuru powering up 93% and climbing. They get the first takedown that they need. Melty being popped away. Kuru still standing, though. Close call, but a team wipe here. And Guts going to take this first game. Very, very close interaction right there. It was absolutely all over the place. And I got to commend Chazmat Gaming EA for their performance here because I think as far as the composition, this one absolutely goes to guts, especially because they have that B. But you saw how consistently Chazmat Gaming EA are dodging those shots from B. There's some big projectiles. It takes some serious juking to get out of the way. But Melty is going to get tapped up just a little bit and Levi's here locking in even more damage. Minmi getting great damage as well. Guts, they're all over this point. And crew on the right side still continuing to get backed up. A choppy and Levi working together to get rid of them. A fantastic pinch by Guts, and they retain a huge lead with 0% conceded to Chazmat Gaming EA so far.
And the team wipe. This is going to where things get really difficult. The spawn trap coming through. A choppy just continuing to put in work on this right-hand side. Kuru trying to climb his way out of this. Melty even giving him the extra heals to go alongside it. Choppy already with another super, though. And Colonel Ruffs, where's he to go? Difficult situation for him as they've got 0% finally dipping their toes into this one. Just trying to break into double digits at this point. So far, so good for Guts, but Chazman Gaming EA, they still threaten to push back in. Melty's taking serious damage. Great connection from Machapi on the right side. Kenji goes down. Ooh. Another one onto Melty. Kuru is the last man standing, and Levi is blocking up the damage with the use of his gadget. Slow into Kuru. Big stuff as Mimi takes him down on the right side of Choppy with an Elim on a Kenji, and Melty's really the last hope, but he's just trying to retain this position and get a good jumping off point for the rest of his team. Unfortunately, lost in 3v1. Kenji goes down on the right, and Guts, they're sweeping through. It's not just one set it's two it's not just one game to victory it's two they're sweeping <laughs> through set number two right into set number three this is not the result I expected. I, I really came into this thinking it would be more of a back and forth affair. You know, I, I looked at this and I, the scrims that they've even had together have been neck and neck. I mean, very even score lines throughout this week and Guts really putting on a show here. I'm impressed. Again, for me this year, for a choppy, especially going the way that he's going, he likes to leave any of the previous teammates that he's had and just kind of start anew. He can really prove himself here and, you know, still got to come away with another set victory here. It's not out of the woods yet, but I just, I'm really impressed. I think this is a storyline that I'm really interested to see how it works out. They come away with a very close game one, but game two, my goodness, Guts just ran away with it. It was a runaway victory for Guts, too. I mean, look at this. They got to about 50% before Chazmet Gaming EA got their first chance to step on that point. That says a lot, especially with Chazmet Gaming EA coming into this one as a total front runner. You saw the percentage points, everyone. 83% banking on Chazmet Gaming EA to take the W here, and it's going the complete opposite way. Fantastic plays for Guts, just flashy stuff, and especially a choppy on the Colette. Camping things in the back left, despite there being a healing pad, even dipping things in the right side side too. The numbers, I think, really tell a pretty painted picture as well. Guts with fantastic stats, especially a choppy and Levi. Chessman Gaming EA really left with a 1-2-3. Not precisely what they came out here looking for, but they can still find some kind of recourse in set number three, but you get the reverse sweep. That's a super difficult challenge. Yeah, it is. I mean, Chasma Gaming certainly equipped with the players they've got to try and do that. But, you know, I know Hot Zone isn't all about those kills, but when it's that big of a deficit, I, I think it really does go to show just how in control Guts were for the most part. Of course, that game number one, a real one to watch. But game two, I, I mean, you could see it there. Two players for the side of Guts have more kills than Kenji, Kuru, and Melty combined. I think that's a statement that Guts made in that second set. Now they need to walk away with just one more here. Impressive stuff, each trying to kind of create create their own new monarchy as we will to go along kind of what we alluded to during the world finals zetas were kind of dominating they both made those semifinals plenty of players here that did it now they're gonna have to do it separately this time safe zone gonna be our next map two to zero here is chasmic gaming are gonna have to claw their way out of this one yeah, I'm pretty tempted to call that last one a comp diff, and we'll see if the same goes for this set right here and now. Guts, they pick up the Colette immediately, and yeah, that has to be a choppy, especially after how well he played in the last game. With Chasmat Gaming banning out 8-bit, though, I think it's going to find a bit less value than it typically would, considering that Colette can be a pretty difficult counter for 8-bit to play into. That said, though, it's going to be a good, consistent brawler and can lock in a lot of damage on the safe. See how Chasmic Gaming EA responds because good brawlers are sure to come, especially when you can block out some shots from Colette pretty easily if you go for something like Ruffs, really the tip of my tongue, and seems to be the exact same thought from Chasmic Gaming EA. You'll also be able to open up walls that can make long range brawlers that much more viable on this. Yeah, an interesting one. You get that dynamic of opening up the walls, which I feel like is so important on this map. It's going to be that four-pronged wall on that right-hand side there of your screen that teams are going to be looking for. It gives them a little more space to work with instead of just being kind of two-dimensional. They now open it up to that traditional mid, left, and right-hand lane, but Piper is as classic a brawler as it gets, not only for this map, but just for Brawl Stars in general. A lot of nostalgia when I see this brawler, a lot of fun memories of some crazy plays, and I hope Melty can do that here. Yeah, same deal here. I mean, love to see the Piper every now and then because it does bring me back to the good old days where this was the go-to sniper, and especially on Safe Zone, love playing the Brawler here. However, it's going to be a difficult one to play 
if you don't break down some of those walls, especially Guts, I think, are keeping this in the back of their heads, is once Piper and Colonel Refs has broken down a lot of the walls, they're going to have to have something appropriate to react with. Here's a selection of Bell, and this definitely makes sense. She's not the strongest brawler these days. She's pretty middle of the road, but she also does have the range to get the job done, and she can get that super onto an enemy to tap them a little bit faster for a kill. Final selection for Guts, though. What will they go with? They gotta be going for something that can deal with the Piper and or the Ruffs, which is gonna be a pretty difficult challenge, but keep in mind that Chazmet Gaming EA so far not selected something that goes in the right lane. There's Griff, the wall breaker, and he'll be probably going for that left side, at least from our perspective, for Guts. Chazmet Gaming EA, we gotta have to think of a brawler for their immediate wall break. And seeing as we saw Ken G go for the Colt earlier, it could be a consideration. Yeah, the more, you know, kind of this draft develops, the more I really love this Piper pick. Piper, the long distance brawler that can deal out a hefty amount of damage onto somebody like Colette, who doesn't necessarily have that same capability. Of course, a Bell versus Piper 1v1 matchup. Traditionally, if they're equal players, we would favor the Piper because that extra distance, the higher shot, the faster reload speed from Piper all adds up, makes it a little more difficult for that Bell. So that's two very favorable matchups, I think, for Piper here, especially uh, assuming that she's going to take the mid here. Somebody like Bell or Colette are going to have to do that. Otis, just as good of a brawler as it gets they don't have a free wall break per se on the side of Chaz mega gaming ea they have to earn at least a colonel rough super but it's at least a tangible thing that they can attain and i think something that opening up the map here will certainly help piper out and this is also kind of where I would like to backtrack and maybe rescind what I said, because Chazmet Gaming EA, now with the selection of Otis, can probably take on that left lane without too many issues. Ken G on the right side, likely facing versus a Choppy. It'll be a fantastic go for him, but Choppy now on the right side, Ken G ready to take him on. Now on the left side, Colonel Reps trying to get that good range versus Levi. He has some options for bouncing the projectile, which is what he's likely going to be using to take things on. So far, so good, I think, on the matchups for Chazmet Gaming EA. Good elimination for Melty as well as he looks to move through. Levi could be out of his depth, but now with a brawler approaching Minmi looking for the assist could be a good turnout for Chazmat Gaming EA. Just 8% knocked off so far and not too much action so far. And pretty much a stalemate on this right hand side. Finally, a pickup there as Melty's going to assist with that. I didn't even mention the gadget that adds another dimension to Piper to follow up on free kills here. This time, going to be stepping into that, opening up the map a little bit, though. It's going to allow for Levi to have a little extra range, but at the same time, Piper gets that free one, too. Another shot landing there, and Melty refuses to miss. Three brawlers for CMG now marching down this field, and they'll have an opportunity here for some real high safe damage. Could be. Chazmet Gaming Air playing very, very cautiously, though. Kuri's all powered up on the left, looking for the bounce shots versus a choppy, but here comes the explosion. Still one more block for Kuri to use to his advantage. Minmi's also chiming in to try and deal some damage. Levi also locking in some damage on the opposing safe, but they're still behind by just 1%. Levi can get 10% if he makes a connection. There it is, 72% remains. Chazmet Gaming EA safe, but Levi gets completely shot down. Here's a supply drop for Melty. Zef definitely going to need it as he is marked up as well. Choppy on the left side with good damage too. Minmi still looking to ricochet some shots on the enemies. Levi on the right side now rejoins the battle too. And Guts are in a dominant position, continuing to hammer away on the enemy safe. And they got optimal lane interactions, 10% more with Levi charging in. And it's a great outlook. Yeah, this is such a huge momentum swing here, but the silent seabed putting him to rest for now. It's going to be Memmi continuing to hammer away at this high safe. The nice thing about Bell is, though, those bounce shots do connect to other players, too. They can ricochet off of that high safe, connect to somebody like Piper, especially with the damage amplifier. That adds up very quickly. It's getting really difficult now. Almost down to 20%. Now a choppy with a super in hand, too. Could end it right here, right now. The dive in from Levi, 81% to zero. They really hammered away at that high safe, and now it's going to lead to a match point here. Things are starting to get crazy, ready? It's starting to really heat up, especially once again. I mean, I think we've said it a million times that we expected Chazmat Gaming EA to be the front runner here, and it's the complete opposite. Guts, they're threatening to sweep through this opponent in just three sets. In fact, they're only one game away. And Chazmat Gaming EA seem to have a pretty rock-solid strategy, but it's simply not working out for them. They don't seem to have those damage dealers for the safe, with the exception of Kenji, and it's costing them big time. A little reset here. Melty... Feeling the pressure right now. Guts have really been able to extend themselves out of this one. That piggy bank, of course, allowing a choppy to step forward, which is something that the side of Chasmic Gaming doesn't have the luxury of. Melty needs to be careful here. If they give up a brawler, it's going to lead to some free shots on that high safe. Bell already doing some work now as they get the finish on the Melty as well. It's not going to deal a ton of damage from Bell, but Colette Griff can certainly do that for her. 
Chesmet Gaming EA now trying to bounce back from all this pressure that Guts had to offer. Kenji's having to sit back and sort of recover from this. In the meantime, Levi is able to get some good shots in. There's the wall break. And this is going to be the single biggest thing that helps Chesmet Gaming EA push back because they do boast a range advantage, especially with Melty on the battlefield. A choppy taking big damage. Kenji gets the upper hand too. And now he turns his sights to Minmi, trying to get this pinch. But Kuru is the foremost brawl on the left side and ends up falling down in the huge scrap. Big super in, Kenji silencing up Minmi. This could be Melty's moment, but he's gonna go right into one of those gadgets unless he treads carefully. Here it is, he baits it out. He doesn't have to pay much of a price in return. Still though, just one shot from going down, and it is actually quite a big deal with just a minute on the clock. Chazmat Gaming A, they still have not touched Guts' safe. The nest eggs are such a nice defensive protocol here. And now Levi diving in as well. 10% every time Colette does that at a bare minimum. That doesn't even include anything like damage gears. Melty getting a nice 3,000 shot there, but it's not enough to contend with what Guts are doing right now. Griff still on the other side. Still doesn't quite connect either. And it's going to rain in with a few extra shots. Melty clawing his way up this map. Still has an opportunity to try and play some defense, but a choppy just putting in work. It's almost like they're conceding in this moment. I'm not sure what they're going to do here, but a choppy drops the piggy bank. Only a few percentage points left. Levi for the final shot, specs out the safe. Good stuff. There it is, the final blow and the final game victory for Guts as they tear through this opponent, clawing their way to victory in three sets consecutively. Only one game going to the side of Chazmat Gaming EA. What a showing from this team that is absolutely remarkable, absolutely unexpected, and precisely what competitive Brawl Stars is all about. Congratulations to a choppy in the squad. What a showing today. Excellent work overall. I mean, it's hard to argue that that wasn't close to a perfect outcome for them. And look, they've got a tough opponent ahead of them, but this was the one that I expected to be the closest of the entire day. We've got two grand finals about to be our third here momentarily. And I thought the semifinal matchup would be two teams that would fare really close to each other. Maybe it's just a tough day for Chasm and Gaming. I really do think there are better days ahead for these guys, but guts, man, what a show they put on today. What an absolute showing. I mean, really, really intense stuff from Guts, especially in this last set. I mean, what a way to take down Chazmat Gaming EA. I think really Chazmat Gaming EA 100%, 110% even had their game faces on in this set. It looked really comp-wise also, the most confident among all of them, but Guts still managed to pull out a great showing. Fantastic stuff. I mean, there's really not much more to say besides congratulations, Guts. You did it, despite what everyone thought. Yeah, when you look at this too, this is a really interesting metric. Again, all the kills really favoring the side of Chasmic Gaming in this instance. But again, heist, the objective is not necessarily kills. That's not the whole story. It's just a nice number to kind of fit into the puzzle of what really happened here. Minmi, of course, with five, doing some great work for his team. Levi still with some high DPS numbers there in a choppy with a three piece of his own. Overall, I I'm so impressed with what Guts have done. I, I thought this was going to be a really close one. And again, I still think better days ahead for Chasmic Gaming. This is somebody that could still claim an LCQ, a world type spot anything like that i certainly think they have that potential but really impressive stuff for a choppy who parted his ways wanted to play with minmi and levi and well here we are now he's in the grand finals in his opening month well i mean should they continue down this path i mean he could find himself the one three time world finals winner we'll have to ask you guys though who was the mvp in a choppy look i could not agree more two time world champion now looking for his third now with Levi and Minmi at either side. And it seems to be a recipe for success so far, taking down Chazmet Gaming EA, the far majority favorites in a 3-0 victory. But of course, the final boss of the region now awaiting them in the grand finals. And that is gonna be a serious challenge of its own grade. Well, Choppy, a well-deserved MVP, and I'm not sure that Uber, you were expecting something like this. What did you think about these semifinals, brother? Uh, I mean, okay, I have to, I have to make a confession. So before the the show started, we made our predictions, and I made my predictions for everything. So like, assuming the, <laughs> the winner of these two semis, I, I think I said that I thought that Chasmac would win the entire thing. So <laughs> you know, obviously that was that was pretty off base. But what I thought was quite interesting is that you know, you guys, the discussion a lot of the time is around maybe Chasmac having an off day or whatever. Uh, but I think in setting up a matchup between Guts and Crazy Raccoon, I just want to put it out to you, ready? Is it possible that Guts are just a little bit better than we gave them credit for? I think that's absolutely the situation here. I mean, 
East Asia, every single one of these players that show up to the Brawl are the pinnacle of greatness in Brawl esports, especially mechanically. And I think that owes itself a lot to sort of the compositions that we see. They don't revolve around squeaking around just a little advantage over the enemy side by picking the best counter pick to play. It's also about, do I feel comfortable playing this Brawler? And have I maxed out my skill points on this particular Brawler? Yeah, look, I think, you know, we, we saw Chasback really try and play some power comps, especially on Ring of Fire, right? Try and make that make Poco work, and it didn't. Kenny, talk me through this bracket so far again, and, and uh, it sort of reset us here as we jump into this grand final now between Crazy Raccoon and Guts. Yeah, I mean, those quarterfinals played out, and for the most part, I mean, smooth sailing for a lot of these semifinalist teams, but it really surprised me that Crazy Raccoon were the ones that dropped the set. Again, we expected Chaz Gaming to come in here and really contend with Guts, but clearly Guts were the better team here today and might be a really strong opposition here for Crazy Raccoon if they can do it against somebody like Chaz Gaming EA, who a lot of people at home, you know, I kind of stood alongside a few of these people and said, Guts, I think, can do this, and they ended up doing so. I definitely was not expecting that outcome, though. It's going to be a clean reset here for our grand final. I still favor Crazy Raccoon in this situation, but Guts have certainly been one to watch and have really impressed me here today. All right, let's talk predictions, boys. Uh, I've had a chance, uh, call it Sweet Serendipity, to change my grand final selection given that uh, the team <laughs> that I had were not even going to be in that game. So obviously both of us had, you know, Chasmac EA sort of triumphing in that second semifinal. Uh, not the case. So... Really? Uh, you know, Kenny is looking pretty good. Makes that sort of guts pick here. And again, if you look at the roster, if you look at the names, I think it's, you know, it's a pretty safe pick here. But the two of you have still gone crazy raccoon. So let's direct the attention away from my pick, shall we? But let's talk about why you guys seem so certain, even after seeing such a dominant game from guts, that crazy raccoon would be the stronger team and would come out winning. Let's start with you, uh, ready, set. Sell me here. I mean, it's too late. I mean, I've already sold. I've already bought the other team. But sell me on crazy raccoon here and why you think that <laughs> they're still going to be a dominant force. I mean, I could tell you about each component individually. I mean, Tensai, Shetampo, Moya Goku, all insanely talented players. But I mean, versus their former teammate, Achapi, on the side of Guts, I, I still think that while it might be quite close, I'm putting my faith in Crazy Raccoon. You're taking the two all-time greats of this region and sticking them on one team. It's not just about how many World Finals victories you've racked up. It's about Tensai and Shetampo booting the star player of those respective rosters that they were on. Uh, Kenny, I mean, we've seen in East Asia, like, not just two teams sort of rule the roost. Last year, obviously, it was the two Zeta Division teams, but there were definitely, uh, there's a lot of depth in the scene right behind that. Just how far ahead do you think Crazy Raccoon are now that we've seen them and their potential opponents compete in their semis? You know, it's a fresh year. They've got plenty of accolades. I mean, Ready Set's touched on it. We've talked about them all broadcast, but for me, this is a real opportunity for them to show that they might be the best three players in the world as individuals, and now they're coming together and forming a super team. This is a big moment for them, and I, I don't know. I just feel like this is a real showing. I think they have an argument to be just the best individuals and now kind of forming the all-star team. I, I just think they're favorites when doing scouting reports for scrims. To be quite honest with you, they have dominated the scoreboards. There's been very few teams that have contended. Even taking a set off them has been something that's been hard to do for a lot of these guys. It's really tough, but on monthly finals day, these teams can always bring it. Upsets happen. It's one of the reasons we love Brawl Esports. I could expect some craziness, but I think on paper, Crazy Raccoon look like a pretty solid favorite. A lot of history on this team. Tensai, obviously, on Jupiter back in 2020. Stutampo and Moya. I mean, their names are synonymous with excellence in Brawl Stars, and they're here to run it back once more and start their 2023 campaign uh, in a strong position. Uh, you know, Moya Goku, I, I get some of that, you know, I, especially Kenny, you really like to talk up. I feel like he gets overlooked a little bit here. It's tough, obviously, to stand out on a team of stars. A Charpy, of course, and many of names you will be very familiar with if you followed it along with the story of Zeta Division. Let's talk about guts here, uh, ready, set, and tell me, you know, do you feel like they really exceeded your expectations here, or are you going to stick to this kind of idea that Chaz might look a bit weaker today? Well, I'll tell you what, they have absolutely exceeded my expectations. However, you can't really go wrong with a Choppy and Levi and Minmi. Levi and Minmi, this is the duo, and a Choppy has selected them as his teammates. It would seem, right? But if we talk in perspective to Crazy Raccoon, I still think that these guys are a phenomenal team. They are just not, you know, the two MVPs of the two greatest teams of the entire last year. However, a Choppy was a vital component of the team that ended up winning the entire World Finals.
And we haven't gotten to split up those teams in any sort of scenario ever before. So has it just been that a choppy is the secret brains of every single team that he's been on it is the recipe for success i think really we should start to get our answer tonight with guts in their performance versus crazy raccoon you know i've seen levi the only player not previously on a zeta division roster last year but we did see him compete quite extensively throughout 2022 in five monthly finals two of them with a team known as winter i feel like that was where i definitely he definitely sort of caught my eye he also played uh, on a roster called fluffy as well uh i think a choppy's great he's always got a cheeky smile on his face uh, it was a lot of fun obviously to see these guys in person uh in paris and yeah i mean yeah you've broken down the super team but you've given the opportunity for players like levi to now to, to step up into a top roster and to really start to contest some of these monthly finals here so the grand final is just moments away, of course. Probably the, I mean, arguably, inarguably, the best region in the Brawl Stars world now. Kind of splitting uh, their eggs a little bit and uh, now fighting on multiple fronts here. But the reality is it can be only one winner here in this first monthly final. And that's always a statement. It's always something you remember. It's always something the casters like to draw back to as well. I'm like, remember that first monthly final? This really sets the pace, not only for this region, but also like we've talked about. This region is the one that births uh, a lot of medics. So they, they tend to get across different approaches and styles to the game first. So that's what we're looking at to see. Now, before we jump into the map, very quickly before we say goodbye to you, Kenny, bridge too far. We've seen it a couple of times today already. It's on all the grand finals. Um, you know, what do you think is your like your, your pick to watch out for from these two teams coming onto that map? Something that'll be either hotly contested through the bands or try to be picked up early. Yeah, I mean, in terms of play rate, Bell shows up a lot here, especially into 8-bit. We've seen it banned a few times now, but one we haven't seen yet, maybe not as much in this region, but I want to point out the Grom has not shown up on this map, and he is lethal as a high safe damage dealer and surprisingly can contend with quite a few long-range brawlers. Could be a sneaky pick here. Love that. Love to have something to look for here in the pick and ban. Thanks so much for joining us so far. Kenny, we'll catch up with you on the other side. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to jump into Bridge Too Far. That's right. Heist is up first in this grand final between Guts and Crazy Raccoon. Of course, I've got Ready Set here in the booth with me, man. It's time to put an end to the finals here in the East Asian region. I am pumped. I'm super pumped too. I mean, it's time for the conclusion we've all been waiting for, but of course, I'm waiting on an expected conclusion. I put all my chips on Crazy Raccoon to take this one, but it looks like 40% of you guys watching put your chips on Guts instead. And to that, I say awesome. Love to see the diversity opinions here, especially when Tensai and Shitetampo get a whole lot of credit in this scene. We'll see what they're able to do here as they have selected Brock as the first pick. We'll make note of the bands as well. They've gotten rid of Colette. And to me, that sort of points out that they're thinking of some tanky ideas here. Could very much see the 8-bit being pulled out here. And this is precisely what Kenny was starting to talk about. Bell and 8, but the interaction is extremely important here. And there it is. Crazy Raccoon, they're still going to go for it. Despite facing a Bell on the enemy side, don't seem to be too concerned. So dangerous, right? You get tagged up by that bell and uh, she she's able to mark you with her super. Then you basically just disintegrate as soon as an 8-bit looks at you. Uh, obviously, Tensai uh, on the other side of the map from a bell this time around. But there's going to be a lot of range available here to Crazy Raccoon. I think that's obviously going to be important. Uh, Tensai, you know, we saw earlier on, I think it was uh, Southeast Asian uh, region where, uh, uh, you know, we saw like an 8-bit push all the way up the map. And from that point on, it was, it was pretty much over here. So... Gonna have Nani locked in here at the end. And of course, Colt makes a reappearance again. So not the first time we've seen him uh, in East Asia here. This time, of course, on Heist. Yeah, we've seen Guts play this brawler before. So we'll see if it's the exact same player going with the Colt this time. But of course, it's still gonna be a valuable brawler to have in your arsenal. You can get a ton of damage on that enemy safe. The only struggle is it's really tough to win lane as this brawler. I would anticipate Guts decide to run this on the lane that's a bit thinner. We'll see if it appears on the left side. And here it is, yeah. Note that the terrain is just a little bit different for Moya here. Not only is he slow, but he only has three tiles to walk back and forth upon. It's going to make it difficult for him to dodge versus Minmi, but he's still doing a good job. On the right side, a Chompy takes down Shitampo to boot. And he's already going for that safe. Moya's trying to circle over, but make an attempt at defending. Tensai also falls, but does get some inaugural damage on the enemy safe. It's 94 to 94. Yeah, it's, yeah again, the Otis on that side lane, pretty crucial here. Going to... Give Levi some pause for thought now as Tensai wants to collapse on the left-hand side. They lose to Tampa as a result here, and a Charpy's already gets back in the mix. Love that response from Guts, but they take a ton of safe damage. 
They certainly have, and they're trying to just sort of collect all of their senses at the time being. Tensai getting good dodges versus Levi on the right side, and here comes the peep in. Maybe teleporting behind, could be going for Tensai. There it is, trying to kill two birds with one stone, but no kills at all and no stones either as Tensai still managed to survive that matchup. But going over the side of Guts, Moya, he's done precisely what we saw before, making it all the way to the enemy side as the 8-bit, getting tons of damage as a result, but it's a big risk as Guts continue to do more and more damage to Crazy Raccoon's backlines, especially if Nanny's able to get another super out here. All it takes is a super and a teleport in to clear things up. They need an answer for Levi right now. I don't know if they're going to have one. Shitapa with the body block some of that damage. He is super going to be thrown out into Menmi. He gets silenced for the time being. Menmi just trying to dodge, but his life is going to tick away, or at least you'd think so. Gadget popped in. He's able to burn Shitapa down. This is huge. If only Menmi was able to maintain position there, but here comes the peep. Might be just the, okay, just the detonation. The Sharpie not going to follow that up, but it takes Shitampo very oh. low and guts come up with the goods there. They start with like a pretty distinct uh, sort of, they trail by a large margin at the start of that round there, but it's about the mid round. They really start to break things open. I say, this is going to be a volatile series, I think, if that game was anything to go by. I absolutely agree. I mean, this is pretty much the early game central for Ra Crazy Raccoon. It's going to be difficult for them to win the early game, especially as we break down the left lane. I pointed out already, Moya doesn't have too much area to dodge back and forth upon, but Min's still taking serious damage, especially as Tenside chimes in for a bit of damage from mid. Levi's actually been putting in the work this time as well. He's getting ricochets off of whatever enemy he targets onto the safe too, and it's gotten some good damage trickled in, but we do say the left lane a success for Moya Goku as he continues to push up. Shetampo on the right also bending off a choppy. So far, it's just a marginal advantage for Guts, but Crazy Raccoon was sort of winning in the territory game. A choppy struggling in the weak lane. Uh, obviously, as he's playing the more narrow part of the map here, so obviously we have some symmetry. Shetampo really doing a good job of just forcing him away there. Gacha pop by Shitampo, make it harder for a Chappie to step forward. A lot of map control here in Tensai. Gonna rocket rain down on towards this safe now. Pretty elementary play here so far. It's just incremental advantages in these lanes and map control being taken by Crazy Raccoon. Damage booster up for Moya here. This might be a complete mirror image of the previous round. Well, yeah, forget what you said about incremental too, because once Moya gets that super down, it's just absolute hellfire raining down. And Menmi makes the same happen without the use of a super on the right side. Shtetampo goes down. Menmi tries to pinch Tensai up, but it's going to take more than just one player to pinch him in there. Tensai, he returns from battle without too much damage done and a mark on his face, and he gets taken down by Bell to follow. Crazy Raccoon are holding their own quite well. They only need 19% left to take the upper hand here. The Guts are not finished yet, especially Choppy as he goes for that super in. No teleport onto Moya, interestingly enough. Managed to back him up quite a bit. Tensai also falls. Guts, they're defending furiously. 40 seconds remain. Crazy Raccoon, they get one good push in from Moya on the left side, and it could be it. Chappie's not finding a lane in which he can win right now. This Nani pick is actually getting clobbered. Whether it's up against an 8-bit or an Otis, Chappie cannot find any advantages regardless. And there was a swap there. I mean, they tried to put him in a, a position where he could get a little bit more done there, but it wasn't going to be enough. And that's how the round really started to backslide at the beginning, right? He's getting forced out of lane by the Otis, and the Otis gets a ton of free damage, man. It's going to be a uh, one apiece here now, and the set hangs in the balance. Certainly does see who takes the upper hand, especially off the beginning, because we know just how vital that can be. Less than ideal lane matchup for Crazy Raccoon off the outset, but still Moya and Levi manage to stand their ground. On the right side, Shetampo takes a there lot of damage. A choppy gets the upper hand, take down, and a super coming in. Tensai takes a lot of damage, but no cigar for a choppy as he remains alive. But he does get the lane switch. Or Almost seemed like he was going to before Shtetampo showed up and took that left lane right back. Still, though, good look for Guts as Minmi gets a takedown on mid. He might be able to sneak in and get some damage locked in on the safe. And Chappie's able to play out of the choke on that right-hand side now. Gives him a little bit more flexibility to dodge this damage, but Moya's hitting very hard on top of the damage booster. And again, they're not going to fall down here. Moya opts to leave the safe haven of that damage booster now, heading towards a position where he can start to pressure this safe down. Losing Menmi in mid doesn't uh, help things either now, and you got two players under damage boost whittling away, and that saves health. Yikes, and already just 60% taken down in a matter of seconds. Guts are trying to respond, teleport in from a choppy. Tensai responds, and Shetampo's there for the assist. And Menmi fires right back with a super of his own. Crazy Raccoon, despite having a big advantage, Hang on. are super, super struggling on the defense. Menmi and Levi got some good stuff in on there. Menmi will have to pay for 
Price with his life. A choppy still trying to maintain his position. Moy on the right side creeping in. Another super looks to position itself on the enemy side. Shtetampo not going to get taken down. I find it quite interesting that a choppy opts to use these for damage rather than teleports in, but he is able to win the lane as a result. And it's certainly a big benefit for Minmi as he can't start firing away, but he's really dedicated to defending Moy on the right side. Okay, so actually some good trades going in favor of Guts there, but they're, they're not actually able to do anything about it. Tensar returns back to his lane too early, and it looked like Menmi wasn't in a position to push up at all, so Guts really, they make it very close, right? As soon as the cult starts wailing on the safe, the damage discrepancy, uh, you know, drops very quickly, but you've got to hand it a crazy raccoon there. They really keep a cool head there. And again, towards the end, it's like a 10, 15% difference. They just managed to squeeze out incremental advantage and close out the set. I mean, very, very well done by Crazy Raccoon, but Guts, I think we got to say the same thing across the way because they had such a dominating first game and had some good moments. We just saw the pace sort of start to pick up for Crazy Raccoon and whether it was a consequence or its own individual thing, the two maybe mutually exclusive Guts, they start to slow down, especially if we look at a Choppy who's consistently getting those teleports in on the safe and then he opted to start using them for lane victories, probably to help out his teammates, to not leave them behind to fight a 2v3. But in the end, I mean, that could just be a symptom of a larger issue for Guts, because still, we saw pretty close games, just Crazy Raccoon dipping them in the end. Yeah, there's one point we saw a Charpy actually, yeah, you know, use his gadget to try and all-in Tensai in the middle of the map, which Tatampo sees this coming and basically lines up a shot, waiting for a Charpy to warp there, and he's ready for him straight away. I mean, talk about lane disadvantage or otherwise here you can see the, the damage numbers are very flattering for guts <laughs> you know what i mean I, they are going up against i guess some extra durability going against the 8 bit but what's interesting is that they're not able to convert this dps lead right across the board almost into that safe damage and that, that speaks more to like the, the macro uh, strategy than the micro the mechanics because obviously guts have that in spades but just taking their foot off the gas at the wrong time Precisely. This is something that I love to touch on in Brawl Esports is that we can check out the stats and usually, just usually, do the stats really reflect who won in this game? Because we all know that Crazy Raccoon it took the W here, but look at the stats for Guts. A lot more damage, a lot more kills. And really for Crazy Raccoon, it's about consistently throwing those bodies at the safe and getting the damage from there. Yes, you're a lot more spongy when you have 8-bit on the squad, but you just keep on trying and trying and trying and those maybe three opportunities across the entire game where you get 8-bit connecting on that safe, make it all worth it. He gets so, so much damage and the response from Guts simply was not enough to contend it. But you have to say, you can see why Guts deserve their spot in this grand final. They, when they're able to start well and actually transition these early advantages or even just like lopsided lane matchups into safe progress, they look really good. Feels like they're not too far away. They're right there. Hot zone, of course, is coming up next. It's going to be Ring of Fire. As you will notice, normally, you know, we don't sort of have multiple regions grand finals in the same show. It's kind of a, a unique thing we have this year. So it's the same map set. So it's a great opportunity to observe these different sub regions of Asia Pacific and how they draft coming into maps like this. You know, in the previous series, we saw, like I mentioned, uh, like a Meg Poco pick come out. That's banned straight away from Crazy Raccoon. They don't want to see that. Yeah, and I would probably ban that too, even though, you know, I'm probably like Mythic in my Power League games, but here comes the Poco, and here it's to lay down the law too. But I think the response from Gus could once again just be that B. And it's sort of a toss-up, what you'll hear from the pros, what they say about B versus the Max. One slows things down, one speeds things up. Do they really balance out? Couldn't really tell you. You'd have to listen to the pros on that one, but it is quite 50-50. Guts, this is a prime brawler for them to pick. They go with Alola for now, but they still have one more pick on their side to deal with before Crazy Raccoon gets a chance to react. Yeah, it doesn't really give too much away about lane assignments, I suppose. Uh, we've seen a lot of Lola through mid at times here. Uh, on the other side, of course, you know, well, there's a max in place, so we have a decent idea of what Shitampa is going to try and make happen there. Uh, Crow band here, so like a lot of that all in potential, also Janet off the table. So a lot of the brawlers that we saw be really prevalent in other regions are actually just banned immediately. Both teams don't want to see Crow. They don't want to deal with the volatility there. The slowing toxin is also really scary. Oh man, we get this. <laughs> we get this pick of Lou sometimes on Ring of Fire, and it's uh, it's cheeky to be sure. But I mean, as far as zone control is concerned, you can't do much better than this. Pretty much. I mean, really, the counter to to the counter to Lou is pretty much 
don't get hit, which is something that mm. every professional player loves to hear when they ask for feedback, am I right? But see, Carl also going to be a fairly good selection for Crazy Raccoon. It's still going to be one of those that struggles supremely in Tulu. Strategy for Crazy Raccoon is pretty much what I already said. Don't get hit. And it's inevitable. I mean, they were planning on getting hit as they have the Poco. Here's the benefit of having Poco, though. They'll probably be switching to that second gadget that allows them to clear any status effects, which includes freezing, which Minmi will be pumping out consistently. Yeah. But since they're relying on their health a lot, Minmi's going to be having a great time as long as he's connecting those shots onto the enemies getting up in his face. Once he gets those shots connected, it is one super cycled after another for Guts, and I think it's a recipe for success. Here's the speed zone here. So it makes it a little bit harder for Tensai to connect onto Levi. A Chappie as well. Going to be pretty fleet of foot here. A little bit frozen up here. We see a lot of lose go for like the super cool cryo syrup combo, right? As soon as you sort of walk into a super, you're just frozen solid without really any opportunity to do much about it. But again, the, the, the raw upfront damage, I think that, you know, Tensai and Moya are able to provide, plus that healing makes it really hard to shift. And you can see it's happening now. We saw the super from Tensai and Moya. He, he's on a mission. Well, Choppy finally has his first super. Moya, mission success on the left side. The mission success as well for a Choppy at mid, though he's got to fend off Moya. See, he's shooting in those bushes. He don't, doesn't know exactly where he is. Now Levi's on the case, but Moya has a super at his disposal. Meanwhile, Tensai, he's still all over this mid area. Choppy's focusing on that left lane, and Levi has to switch on to the mid. Shetapo now with the super in. The gadget combo is a recipe for success. Here's a big uh, big freeze as well onto Moya. The Crazy Raccoon, they still retain control of mid. Yeah, so both of those loose supers have come out and they've forced Crazy Raccoon off the hot zone for a time, but Guts have not been able to use that to get there themselves. They're still at 3% now. Menmi, he sees an opportunity to try and pressure Tensai down, but the max is so slippery. Face Shifter gets Tensai out of trouble for at least the time being and allows Shitampo to get in behind enemy lines. He and Moya now converge to Tampo with Tailspin available. This could get nasty. Menmi actually has to back away with that super, but another loose super comes down. It's a double freeze, but it don't matter because those bodies are still on the point. Brilliant stuff. I think Crazy Raccoon, they absolutely put into force sort of what I was touching on, which is that they didn't get hit by those Lu shots and didn't feed a Lu super too fast. And I think perfect evidence of that is who got a super first, Max or Lu, right? It was Max. Tensai had that speed popped off and Moya got to rain down on the back lines. Only off of that was a Choppy able to get a super. But Gutsy did sort of start to find their footing towards the end of the game. A Choppy's public enemy number one since he's the one getting most control of mid. He's the first to fall, then Levi. Minmi left alone on the right side, but he goes for the back lines. Tensai tries to peel him off of that, but Minmi's still going to be able to sneak back there. Tensai, however, little do you know, he has a super. Choppy's still trying to do some work, forces him, and freeze him. And he will be able to get that freeze in the end, but it doesn't even matter when there's a complete team wipe. Moya just 1v1. I think it was Levi there. Levi or Choppy. It was disgusting. I mean, the fact... Protective tunes and Decapo is extremely powerful because not only is your ally invulnerable for that brief window, you're healing them at the same time. They're getting topped up and they can't take damage. So it means that healing is extra effective. You can really bring them back close to full health. And that's the main reason why, as you said, Tensai is getting these supers early because he gets to just keep standing around and firing cleverly, uh, avoiding the damage from a Charpy as to not be frozen, but Guts finally get onto the hot zone behind this loose super. Well, Moya going aggro once again. Going to be careful not to get separated from Tensai this time because he's one of the main things allowing him to play so aggro. There is this uh, heal as well on the Tensai. Shetampo now going for the back lines. Big oh, kills man. as well. It's a team wipe too. And the spins are out. Moya Goku knows what's up. Crazy Raccoon. They really just have to defend for a little bit longer, but doesn't even look like Guts are going to try. Tensai, he's having a little fun on the back lines. That's game number two in set number two. Both going to Crazy Raccoon. Look, I mean, we're starting to see now why you guys were so adamant. Even seeing Guts have such a dominant showing up against Chasmag, you guys are like, uh, we, we, in our little channel here, we're just sort of discussing a, a text chat alongside a broadcast. Neither of you were really uh, tempted to change your prediction at all. And that to me speaks volumes about just how much better Crazy Raccoon is. It's a question I asked and actually rephrased to you guys before the show to give us a bit of an idea. And now we're seeing it in action, right? Now we're seeing Crazy Raccoon just, I mean, it's a walkover. You have speed zone. You have the loo pressure. You also have a lot of flexibility from the stew in general. And it's just not even remotely enough. You're losing to the most classic of classic compositions. It's a Carl, it's a Poco, it's a Max, and they are beating your head in. 
It's what we've seen from these players in particular all last year, especially if we were to roll back the clock and look at the World Finals, because we saw them pretty consistently pick the same brawlers over and over, especially Stetampo on the Carl. It's what I'm talking about. You max out your skill points on a just small group of brawlers and pick them consistently. It just kind of blows my mind that they're able to get away with it so often. Like you'd expect at some point there's going to be the Carl ban. And honestly, set three might be the time for Guts to start pulling that out. But even then, you can only ban out three brawlers and you can only pick three brawlers as well. Crazy Raccoon, they got more in the arsenal than just that. So good luck. But Guts, they're still bringing the heat um, in their own respect. Just here on Hot Zone, not quite so much. I think the stats really tell the full picture. Yeah, look, I think the stats tell you that this is a game in which Poco exists. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> it's not Screeching Solid, it's Decapo Poco. So the guy is constantly dishing out healing. So yeah, a lot of damage being done here, but that's not enough, right? Yeah, you, you need burst damage, you need ways to shut down the healing, you need ways to isolate teammates from, from Poco, constantly keeping them up. And uh, that wasn't possible there as well. So uh, uh, credit where it's due. I think a great composition there for Crazy Raccoon. One that Guts simply could not break apart. Is here we are. This is last chance saloon right now for Guts. It's already two to zero here. And this is where they need to come alive to stay alive in this series. Well, do we see the Carl ban? There it is from Crazy Raccoon, but they do have the first pick. They just didn't feel like doing it this time. It is absolutely go time for both teams here. Crazy Raccoon are so close to a victory and closing it out now for the grand final. And Guts are at the brink of defeat. They're already having a face versus a Janet, so they'll have to pick carefully. Keep in mind, Janet, she's likely to be running that gadget. Drop the base, it throws down a turret. Gets you great area control until it's taken down. And Guts are probably going to be thinking of a way to deal with that. Otis could be the solution down the line, but Gene is their first selection. I like the Gene selection. You're able to counter out a lot of stuff. However, there are also a lot of things that counter out Gene. The Crazy Raccoon can go with. Another selection for Guts. It's got to be something that combos well with Gene. I'm pretty surprised to see uh, Gene sneak through the bands, but if you have a look at what the bands were, you kind of start to understand that. I mean, Crazy Raccoon, they ban a lot of the generalists that you often see on, on Bounty, right? Get rid of Carl, because we don't want to first pick Carl here. Uh, Poker, obviously, off the table once more. If Crazy Raccoon don't want to play him, they ban him pretty much straight away. Uh, and no shock to see the tick band here. So uh, we're going to get a bit of a different flavor here. So yes, we have the, the Gene, of course. The Gene pool is you know, a, a big part of uh, Bounty, and it obviously provides a real crescendo towards the end of the round if it's going to be a close game. Wow, okay, Janet and uh, Squeak getting picked up here by Crazy Raccoon. Ruffs will round out the composition. This is an interesting strategy from Crazy Raccoon. It's not like really anything I've seen before, but it completely makes sense. I mean, these are all brawlers that the respective members of this team are comfortable on. Love the Sprout last pick. I think that this is absolutely brilliant. However, uh, there's one important thing you're missing a choppy, which is that Moya, he gets the wall break and Shetampo can land right on top of you. Tensai, yeah, I can hit you through walls, but he's kind of the least of your worries. I still think that Sprout is going to be a, you know, good brawler utility wise. As far as, you know, locking on those kills, also a great selection, but Crazy Raccoon have two ways to deal with this already. And I do question it just a little bit. I think that Guts went into this set already wanting to pick that Sprout and the last pick is just where they decided to place it. It wasn't really a reactive thing, but this is also sort of a theme for this region at times. They play what they want to play and then make it work at times. For Mimi though, it's gotta be careful about not giving those supers to Moya or to Tensai, lest he wants to be landed upon or have his walls broken down. Photosynthesis keeping Memmi in the fight a little bit longer than it otherwise would have, but he's taking a lot of incidental, a lot of poke damage here from Stutampo and Moya. Tensai has to back yes. away here, but Levi falls right into the trap and Moya Causes him to disintegrate. That's the start the Crazy Raccoon we're looking for. Three stars, blue star of course, being picked up by Tensai earlier on. Now let's see how they ease into the mid round. I'm not sure whether I should be surprised that Levi decided to go for that play there because he knows that Moya is going to be running those sandbags, but Moya, he was being so patient with placing them down that it almost appeared in an illusory sort of way that he was open and ready for Levi to take him down, but it was the complete opposite. And Levi could find himself in dangerous path once again, take down, but Tensai also falls in turn. Minmi is barely alive and Shitampo's trying to close things in. That hedge from Sprout is still blocking things off for a little bit longer. We'll be engaging the left side for now, but Minmi is still sensing a prime opportunity to farm up yet another super, maybe block up mid just like he did last time. The hedge from Minmi may be pretty 
annoying here to deal with. This crazy raccoon don't have any throwers. So yeah, they have some wall break like you mentioned, but if when, when those abilities are exhausted, there's actually no way to, to get over it or get around it. So Memmi can create a safe zone for themselves while doing exactly this, like just pressuring down a lot of this damage over the walls. Nice couple shots from Shitampo though, forces Memmi back, but the you can see the trap is starting to close. Guts are circling. They know they need two stars here to get the win. We've got 15 seconds left in the round. Will Acharpy's magic hand be the difference maker? It has to be. Here it is. Ten size nine, but it'll react in time. Clock ticking down. Guts, they're in the lead. But Minmi is left all alone on the right side. Tensai flying out of spawn, trying to make it there. Will he land in time? Damage flying in. No, not quite enough. A bomb. It wasn't enough to seal the deal. And that's a victory for Guts. They're not going to match point just yet. Yeah, I love that. Uh, uh, we saw Tensai try to drop a base booster to sort of, ex sort of anticipate the magic hand coming in. Uh, and I love it because uh, we just saw uh, the, the gene player hold onto it, hold onto it, and then throw it out after the base booster was destroyed. So lovely stuff from a Charpy there. Really brilliant. Someone who's had some really difficult lane matchups in this series so far and has, has been hurting uh, going up against some stronger brawlers now gets to really show his stuff. And this is what happened when you let gene through. Absolutely, and especially if you don't have that turret at the ready, and even then, Guts, they're going to be ready with a lot of damage following that super, just in case a turret gets thrown up as a reaction. And it was a fantastic mind game played there by a choppy. This time, Guts, they have the upper hand. Not only have they gotten the blue star, they've gotten the first kill of the game. Levi, he's also breaking open some of the walls. Not entirely sure. It looks like he sensed the ability to go for a kill. But it also means that Mimi's going to be lacking some walls going forward. Not the biggest issue either, though, as Mimi has a lot of range to use here. Stetampo on super low health. Levi's going to go for it and not even taken down from the final shot from Tensai. A choppy on the right side also has a super. Here it comes. Tensai pulled yanked forward in seven star lead for guts yeah i really feel like this is one and lost heavily in the draft right uh you know getting the the, the sprout last pick here is pretty sick against a non-thrower team and you know being able to get gene that comes in through the the band phase is awesome crazy raccoon here feels like they have a lot of options now the map's opened up a little bit right so Stitampo will be able to find more purchase with a lot more of these shots but 34 seconds remaining they need to box crazy raccoon up here and they can sneak a lead but it's going to be clean so far, they've succeeded a little bit. Left side looked good for Tensai. They got a boxman a bit more, though. Achapi has a super. Tensai, does he have a gadget? Yes, he does, but he's got to react in time. And Achapi continues to chip him down. Has it super at the ready. He's got to pull towards Levi because Mimi's not the greatest in close range. Oh, he's got to get someone on low health as well. He's completely cornered on the left side. Guts, they still are in the lead, but Achapi could fall. A few seconds left. Tensai now flying away, looking for the kill on Mimi. He's on very low health. Mimi's got to bounce some of these shots. Here's another use of the hedge as he recycles it in Guts. They managed to do it. They take a set back. And we're going into set four. Not quite a game victory for Crazy Raccoon like a lot of us might have been expecting. Yeah, I mean, I I love the pick and ban uh, from Guts. I already touched on it a little bit there as well. We can see how important the Magic Hand is. It doesn't really matter how good you are at Brawl Stars. Uh, that is still a huge threat, especially late in the game uh, on a heist map. If it gets through the bans and you can snatch it up first, you see a lot of teams really value that very, very highly. And again, like, what do you really do when Mimi throws a hedge in front of you and just starts lobbing space carrots over it? I mean, you're up there. <laughs> I know they're swords, but they look like space carrots to me. Come on, come on sprout, I, you know what I mean? Vegetarian theme. They're, 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 I think they could be space carrots. I mean, it's not exactly Lunar Sprout, the little... The, the one that actually is rabbit themed, but it might as well be. I mean, that's the kind of analysis that this eSport needs is the cosmetics, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's what they call me up. They, they dragged me out of the outback and said, listen, Mitch, uh, we, got the, we got the lads here. They're great, obviously, but you know, they just don't quite have that, that pizzazz. And here I come talking about space carrots and all of a sudden all is, all is right with the world. Uh, again, you know, I, I, the sprout looked really good there and it's been touched on tonight. Like when we see it's like last pick pretty much only because it's so counterable. But we've seen situations on this broadcast where it's been really effective as that six pick and sometimes where it's not. We've seen it built around uh, in some compositions pretty heavily there. But you had a lot of power with your setup and, uh, you know, the Janna is powerful. She is. She's such a great all-rounder. At the end of that last round there, you see uh, Crazy Raccoon try and equalize. But the Janna's up in the sky. She's dropping a couple bombs. She's going to be very low health when she drops down. They just don't have enough time to really equalize around. I don't think they really had... Uh, a panic button or an ace uh, up their sleeve in order to really try and swing things in their favor. They just started from too far behind and didn't have the comp to rest that advantage back. 
I think that's a great way of putting it, too. I mean, we saw uh, Shtetampo try and make it work there right towards the end. Two games in a row, uh, both of the games lost that went to the side of Guts. He tried in the end to use a super all the way to the enemy side and pick up a kill, which works a good consistent bit of the time, but Guts, they were there ready for the reaction. And also, I'm sure the nerves were a, a huge factor for Crazy Raccoon as well, because that strategy, it, it fell flat on its face twice in a row. And I think this is going to be a big thing that Crazy Raccoon keep in their heads when they decide, are we going to go with Janet as a reaction to some of these brawlers or as a, you know, prospective counter to some future picks in the pick phase in the following sets? Yeah, obviously, we're still looking down the barrel of match point here for Crazy Raccoon. They start with uh, such a big lead here, but, uh, you know, sometimes the further, the bigger a lead you have to start with, the more frustrating it can be when that starts to get clawed back here. That's just a general uh, thing that we've observed a lot of the time in, in esports competition. And we're going to Sneaky Fields uh, for the next map here as well, which is always volatile. It's always super interesting. And we know that both of these teams like to throw caution to the wind and make some, some pretty crazy picks here. So keep an eye on the bands. Keep an eye on what gets through those bands crucially because we know uh, some of these brawlers can really wreak havoc if they get snapped up nice and early. And Guts are on the lookout for a lot of these power brawlers. They're ready to pivot to strategies that involve them if they get to sneak on through here. So we're getting much more of a game, but you know, there's a question of like, okay, if Crazy Raccoon doesn't get absolutely beat black and blue in the pick and ban, what does that map look like? We'll never know, but that's something we're going to be on the lookout heading into the next draft phase. Pretty much. And, you know, I wonder how much of a pivot we will see if we see too much of a pivot either, because some of the brawlers that have been selected so far, not only do these players like to select the same brawlers from one set to the next with a little bit of variation, a little bit of spice as well, uh, depending on the mode, but also uh, we see some of these brawlers repeatedly make waves on Sneaky Fields in particular. My attention immediately goes to Squeak as one of those brawlers, but likely showing up a bit later in the draft uh, is one that I highly, highly anticipate. One that we've seen both of these teams play as well in previous matches is also M's, which I think is going to be a huge consideration here. But we haven't seen a whole lot of tanks with the exception of Carl. So I wonder if we'll see that potentially appear in this upcoming game. Now, a quickly, a, a quick aside as well, those that are tuning in here to East Asia, uh, I mean, this is obviously our first monthly finals of the entire year. So these guys are the first guys to step up on stage. They're the first teams to really show what they're made of. Uh, and what we're seeing here might really sort of set the pace for not only the EMEA broadcast, just a little bit later on. That, man, that region was crazy. That monthly finals made no <laughs> sense to me. Uh, but also other regions looking on saying, okay, what are, the, what, are the pro, what are the best players in the world sort of doing? What are they valuing here, especially through pick and ban? And, I mean, okay. Uh, so this pick <laughs> and ban looks, it is identical to the previous map. So we'll, we'll have to find out if that's just a, a run through and um, might just be placeholder here. Once we get a chance to jump into the game, we'll know that for sure. But this is identical down to the down to the specific bands. So I'm a bit dubious about this one. Yeah, this is true. I mean, at first I was really excited. I was like, no shot. Like my, my call is correct. We get to see the squeak. But then I was like, wait a minute. The this, this sprout, I'm not quite sure about that one. Scratch my head a little bit. If this draft were actually uh, one selected on Sneaky Fields, I'd probably be complaining a little bit, even though I am just, you know, talking head in the at the commentator's desk. Still, though, I mean, some of these brawlers would still anticipate to reappear. Moya Goku playing the Ruffs and Tensai playing the Squeak are a couple of selections that I think could be quite strong here, but ones that I wouldn't necessarily expect are probably the Sprout, not exactly the strongest on this map, where... Uh, large priority is having a bunch of health and having a bunch of mobility to sneak over to the enemy side and slot in the goal. I'm going to hand it to you. You, you basically just unironically casted a what we believe is a placeholder pick and ban there. So, <laughs> uh, tell you what, this guy's this guy's uh, got, got it all up here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, ready to roll out uh, for your listening <laughs> pleasure uh, at a moment's notice. So before we jump in, of course, a quick teaser on the EMEA February monthly finals coming up after this broadcast. Um, that region is. Definitely in flux right now, right? Obviously, a lot of your household names, Na'Vi, Reply Totem, Zeta Division, Team Kazo, they've made it through to the quarterfinals, but we saw a lot of really big names, uh, like Fubalist, I guess, is a, is a team with FC, some really known quantities, SK Gaming, a lot of those teams don't make it through. So that's going to be crazy to check that out later on and see what the heck is going on in EMEA, but we are now into game. And uh, yeah, it's not, the, it's not the picks and bands that we saw here. So it's going to be, we actually have Leon, we have M's here as well for Crazy Raccoon. I like that. Levi, the first casualty. 
And thankfully not the draft that we saw just a few moments ago, but still just as wacky in a few departments, especially with Moya Goku on that Leon Lee base trying to defend, but he didn't have the DPS ready to go. And Moya is able to run this one through. Great stuff for Crazy Raccoon, but now they have to hunker down and deal with the speed coming in from Minmi. Levi tried to make moves at the right side, but now he needs to back away thanks to Shitampo moving forward. Tried to get some damage on him, but the friend zone is just too much to deal with. And Moya Goku has the invisibility around the back side. Minmi is trying also his best, but Moya Goku stabs him in the back. He's ready to go for a goal, but he's having to deal with Levi and Choppy first on either side of the goal. Now, Menmi reappearing, but Crazy Raccoon have the supreme position to deal with it. And Levi, tough for him to get involved here up against the composition. It's very slippery, right? Plus friend zone, which makes it, even if you get to your target, this happens to you. Just get bounced back and uh, get sent home packing there. Very convincing stuff from Crazy Raccoon here. Looked like a much more powerful draft this time around. Uh, even, yeah, the home run star power there for, for Levi, really not remotely enough. Trying to you know, use the cover of those bushes to sneak up and get some big hits here, but uh, that looked absolutely terrifying to try and play into this composition. No doubt. I mean, look, Guts here with a whole lot of speed, but Crazy Raccoon at that times two. Tensai zooming all over the place. Shetampo is ready at the left flank, now coming in to try and take down a Choppy. Thankfully, Minmi spawns just in time to defend this Moya Goku now up the right side. Wow! And a great use of the phase shifter by Minmi to clutch up this goal. And here's the speed once again. Just like you said, home run rushing up the left side. But Tensai is ready to defend as he has so much movement. He can go offensive he could go defensive as long as he's able to cycle out that super repeatedly he's in a great spot yeah frustrating there for bb to try and deal with Stu, who can basically sidestep your expected swing arc there and uh end up behind you all of a sudden and not much you can do once you wind up the swing you're sort of stuck with whatever direction that was facing at the time and yeah caught inside the caustic charisma uh is going to be the bb falling once more and this has been pretty darn one-sided so far crazy raccoon now are uh, uh, they're on the cusp, man. That was uh, absolutely dominant performance from them. Pretty much, I mean, already first goal in this game. They're just one goal away from bringing it home, but Minmi, he's looking for an opening. He doesn't want to be the last one to go down, but he does. Guts, they're going to be responding without him. And they got to defend versus this entire team. Should they decide to push in? They're going to try and bait that super out of Patchy, to, or rather a Choppy to start with on the left side. It's going to be a bit of a struggle because he's being quite stingy with it. There's a silence on Amoya. Oh, he's flashing no, his super, over. trying to pop it just in time. A full team takedown, and they're taking their time. Savor the moment. Crazy Raccoon, they're taking it. They are your champions of East Asia for this first month of BSC 2023. Look, I guess it was just a stumble in that th first set there, right? Uh, you know, Crazy Raccoon. Yeah, for a moment, they looked like they got pretty hard drafted, but as soon as we hit the ground and Sneaky Fields, it looked like a completely different team, or rather the same team we saw in those first couple of sets. Very much justified now your predictions, you know, to see them go all the way this month. They are looking like the dominant force in this region. And it's, it's, it's interesting. There's quite a gap here. I have to wonder if we're going to end up with this sort of this binary setup where we have these two Zeta Division teams trading finals, or if these super teams splitting up has just resulted in one giga team, one mega Ultron combination of players here, because it definitely seems like Crazy Raccoon are the, the most unscathed team coming out of roster breakups and players splitting up here. And I think they're showing that, right? The time playing together, uh, a lot of that experience, uh, you know, at huge events and just, I mean, we're talking about players that come from 2020, 2021 here. Uh, I mean, it really showed there. That was the most, probably one of the most one-sided maps we've seen tonight. That Sneaky Fields was just a non-game, it felt like. I'm certainly learning or leaning towards the perspective that Crazy Raccoon are just the super team of this region. And for every other team, it's pretty much going to be like, wow, I really hope I don't get on the same side of the bracket as them so that I can get some points to qualify for the world finals. That plus also they have some pretty good teams on their heels as well. We've seen them face OK. We've seen them face Guts as well. Both seem to have that sort of potential to take them down. And I'm seriously looking at OK for that one. But Guts seriously put forth their best foot. Problem is that Crazy Raccoon, I mean, the Leon, you just never, ever see this anymore. And they still manage to take a victory with it. Yeah, tell us about that. I mean, why do you think they're selecting the Leon here? It's quite interesting. I think really the idea here is let's get in close range of some enemies, maybe have a bit of invis, some heal to make it through the enemy's clutches. And besides that, it could just be Crazy Raccoon flexing how much better they are at this game. It's no secret that in this region, the mechanical skill is off the charts. And by comparison to every other region, 
it's simply the best. It's why they can get away with playing the same brawler repeatedly, set across set, mode across mode. They're just that good at this darn game. And Leon is a perfect example of them using that to their advantage and getting some showmanship out there too. I mean, no matter how bad a day you're having, you're not having a day nearly as bad as someone who has to play BB against Stu and M's at the same time. Very, very difficult to make that strategy work. We know obviously that, uh, you know, Super is very, very powerful on maps that feature a lot of walls. There are a lot of angles that are really effective ways to set that up. And of course, it's pretty scary if the enemy team is sort of grouped up and you're getting some multi-hits knocking people back. Yes, but it absolutely did not work here. You gotta love the composition from Crazy Raccoon. Yes, they have all-in potential, but for the most part, they can keep Guts at arm's length. They can pressure them down with a ton of damage and then slowly walk their way up to Tampo here. Uh, probably one of the most, probably the most famous Brawl Stars player in the world. Uh, legions of adoring fans. No surprise to see him take the MVP away here, but absolutely deserved. Again, we have three champions of, of, of Brawl Stars here on this same roster. Shitapu continues to shine brighter than the rest. What a showing from Crazy Raccoon. And again, looks like we're starting this year in much the same way as we started the last one. The dominance of these monolithic super teams continues in East Asia. And I think it also goes further than that because we started off last year with the super team, the Zeta Division, splitting up into Zeta Division 1 and Zeta Division 0. And now pretty much the prime members of those teams have reconverged onto Crazy Raccoon and now Moya at their side. When we talk about Guts, though, I mean, this is yet another one of the all-time greats of this region making waves as this roster. And I think it's absolutely deserved. A choppy with Levi Nimi at his side have done such a great job so far. I anticipate Guts and OK are going to make pretty much their main goal to be the team to take down Crazy Raccoon. And I don't think it's too far off. They've each managed to take a single set off the team so far today in the semifinals and the grand finals. And you know Crazy Raccoon are giving 110% there. So they have fierce competition every step of the way but there's no doubt, Crazy Raccoon, they're the final boss. No doubt about it. We have to bring back in, uh, obviously, someone who's very pleased, I think, with how his predictions have panned out so far. Kenny, welcome back, man. Uh, pretty dominant showing here from Crazy Raccoon, showing us that there's a bit of a gulf here between one and two, potentially, in this region. Uh, with Chasmac having what we sort of thought might have been a bit of an off day, but then Guts looking so good in that match and then getting absolutely flattened here as well. Does this line up with expectations? Does this line up with the uh, the scouting of scrims and such you've had over the last week or so? Yeah, honestly, it does. I think Crazy Raccoon have just shown that they're a step above the rest of them. And I think this is just kind of a statement for the rest of the world, too. There's many pro players out there anticipating that these guys will absolutely make worlds and even maybe one step further be a preseason favorite to win it all. But Guts really showed that they might be the number two. Coming into today, I kind of expected a number one of Crazy Raccoon and then kind of those two other teams being Guts and Chasmic Gaming at an even level. That's not what we got at all. Guts showing that they own them right now. It's only month one, though still plenty of months left and of course two lcq spots in this region i believe so plenty of opportunity for this team to step it up next month and really show what they've got yeah another layer of competition right with those lcq spots on the line and required of course to advance to world finals let's talk about our leaderboard here as well this is how things shake out after the first week of course crazy raccoon come out on top here and uh look to you know start another campaign of dominance but again it's that top three we're excited about okay you also looked really uh you know decent at times in that match obviously being able to win that set was pretty important a lot of free agent teams in this region so any orgs looking on sort of wanting to try and lock down some of the best talent in the best region should be looking right at this leaderboard right at these rosters and uh waiting for things to unfold in our march monthly finals in east asia it's always a great way to to start off the brawl stars championship campaign uh obviously over at east asia Really, really pleased to see what uh, Crazy Raccoon are able to put on display today. We've seen them, of course, many of these players in the past, their household names in Brawl Stars. Great to see them back. Great to see them continue to play that same trade. EMEA is coming up next. I'm plugging it again because that region is kind of... I didn't have a chance to talk to you about it, Kenny, but like, what happened to those monthly finals, man? What should we expect uh, <laughs> heading into our EMEA broadcast? If anybody tuned into the qualifiers, it was absolutely nuts to watch. I mean, some certainly some dark horse teams making appearance here, but some familiar faces too, I think Reply Totem for me, gonna be a favorite going in there, but EMEA monthly finals are always crazy. It's never a free prediction for that one. So anybody that gets a perfect bracket today, good luck to you to our other three co-casters coming up later down the day. It's always gonna be a fun one. So you guys are definitely gonna wanna check that out.
I already said, I'm a bit of a Dre fanboy, so a little bit sad uh, <laughs> coming into these EMEA monthly finals as uh, things kind of went sideways for a couple of those top teams. But who are we looking out for in EMEA? Who are we excited to see a take to the field soon? Well, I'll tell you first and foremost, you know, I feel half of that pain because once upon a time, I got to be a duo with him. Dre G set, I think, still lives on in some regard. But while we won't be seeing him, I'm siding with Kenny here, actually. Coincidentally, Reply Totem is kind of my team to watch. I'm a big Joker fan as well, so I'm excited to see those guys get into the action. Yeah, some incredible names, of course, ready to take to the field in about 40 minutes' time over in our EMEA February monthly finals, of course, with a whole host of new casters jumping in to take the reins and to take you on a spin through one of the wackiest regions and one of the most dominant regions of course in global brawl stars hey it's been great to have you on the show here for our apac broadcast we've got to see uh, east asia we saw india of course uh you know really really exciting i think that um we've got a real good taste of what this region has to show uh you know i love that we also got to see uh, what sca have to to show us this year Expectations are higher, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm not going to lie, but I'm sure EMEA is going to deliver. So stick around for that. 40 minutes time. EMEA kicks off for the month of February. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Uber here with Ready, Set, and Kenny. We love you. We'll see you next time. Hello. Hello. Yo. Yeah, it sounds like All they right. lost comms with us, but oh, yeah, glad we got through it. Good stuff, boys. GG's, guys.